hostility between these two guys is real. Tonight. My objective is putting a beating on Caleb Plant. Knockout artist and two-time title holder David Benavidez takes on the smooth technician and former champ Caleb Plant. I need to teach him a life lesson. And no one's backing down. I'm gonna beat the living out of you. You're not gonna do nothing. David Benavidez versus Caleb Plant tonight, live on pay per view. This Showtime Boxing Special Edition presented by Premier Boxing Champions. It is for the vacant WBC Super Middleweight Championship. For the introduction of the fighters, we go once more to the center of the ring and our ring announcer, Ralph Velez. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you again to the joint at Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Premier Boxing Champions Showtime Special Edition. Brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, Samson Boxing, Corona La Cerveza Mas Fina, Hard Rock Las Vegas, and Showtime. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBC Super Middleweight Championship of the World. This bout sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Executive Director Bob Bennett, Chairman Anthony Marnell III, WBC President Mauricio Suleiman, Supervisor in attendance, Alberto Guerra. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout will be Adelaide Bird, Dave Moretti, and Glenn Trowbridge. And in the ring, the man laying the law when the bell sounds, referee Jay Nady. And now, for the people in attendance, to the many more joining us around the world live on Showtime. Let's leave the talk behind Las Vegas. It's time to shine. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing black, trimmed with gold. He went in officially at 166 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, 18 victories, one defeat, 14 of his victories coming by way of KO. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Baku, Romania, presenting the WBC number six ranked contender in the world, Ronald. The Thrill Gavril! And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing red and snakeskin trunks. He went in officially at 167 and one half pounds. His professional record, 18 victories, no defeats. 17 of his victories coming by way of KO, fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, presenting the WBA number one and WBC number four ranked contender in the world, El Bandera Roja, David Benavides. Once again, referee Jay Nady for instructions. Back. 12 rounds, obeying my commands. I want to see your ball back, if I pull it down. Good luck, touch gloves, let's go to work. Okay, boy. Once again, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super. The uh, Taylor's tape, the older Gavriel, uh, the reach advantage hey. for David Benavides. Will he use it or go inside? Rules are the same as they have been. Our first two fights, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight. This next rule came into play in the last round. Fighter can't be saved with the bell in any round. And of course, the fight becomes official after four rounds. That's what happened in our last fight. Set to go, our main event for the World Championship. 
and I think Raul's right. We saw a lot of boxing so far in this uh, card. Not so much in this fight. Now, both these guys like to come ahead. Benvenides prides himself in being an excellent body puncher. What strikes me about him, too, even though he's 20 years old. He Just seems a puppy. To have, he has savvy way <laughs> beyond his years, though. Boy, is he ever. You know, he wants to use the jab, and he thinks he can, if Rill can come in and make a mistake, that he will count, will be able to take advantage of. But right away, Benavides started with that jab. Well, Gabriel cannot be a stationary target. He's got to give him some headroom on the waist. And like I said, he's got to keep turning and keep circling around him to keep him off balance. And we can't land, uh, you know, big power shots. You stand right in front of him, you square up, that's when you're in danger with uh, La Bandera Roja, Benavides. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, the legendary light heavyweight champion who trains Gavil, said he wants him to get inside and turn, use angles when he gets in there. So far, he hasn't been able to get in. You saw Benavidez just throw that right hand. It was a short right hand. He really throws it with a 10, and he gets a lot of snap on that shot. The other thing they want from Gavriel is to jab his way in, not just walk in. Gabriel, Gabriel is in, very close to being right in Benavidez's wheelhouse. But yeah. what I like about Gabriel, he's still keeping a tight, nice frame defense. You know, his gloves are up, elbows are in. You know, that protects you a lot yeah. from a, a lot of the big shots that Benavidez is throwing. And if you're going to be in the pocket, you need to be there. Yes. Now, Benavidez, he needs to throw... He's try to hit him anywhere. Try to hit him on the elbow, on the arms, the elbows, the gloves. Try to open up that guard. Go up the middle to open up and create space to land a shot. Gavriel, you can see him trying to pinpoint the body. They're both excellent body punches. Yeah, and that could be a real key in this fight. More tactical round one than we anticipated. Huh? Yes, absolutely. Benavides has nine first round KOs and he's usually a blazing starter, but this has been more tactical. I think he's changed a little bit as he stepped up in terms of class of opponent. Both fighters showing some pretty good defense in the first round. Yes, that's a very good point. Two sluggers, but they're defending well. We're doing really great. How do you feel? Look spectacular. Maintain your distance. How do you feel? Good? Yes, a little bit slow, but don't get confident. I told you he was nothing. Keep backing him up with that good jab. Double, triple jab. Hard jab to the body. He's nothing. I tell you, he was nothing. Keep that hard jab. Bring them hands back up like you do. No problem. Good work, baby. Good work. Let's go. Well, both corners saying their, their man did exactly what they wanted him to do. So here's a fascinating show stat from round one. 101 punches combined thrown by the two men. 78 were jabs. Isn't interesting. that interesting? Yeah, yeah, with these two. Uh, you'd think we would have seen something different, but they're trying to establish the jab. Gavriel to jab the body, hard jab to the body. You hear that in Mustafa Muhammad in his corner. So this guy's not so tough. Yeah, I agree. And I think Gavriel needs to go more, besides the jab, go with hard shots to the body. I don't think Benavides has ever been tested to the body. You know, try, try to throw some hard shots there. Try to let them steam out. You know, he's a, he's a big, young kid, and he's powerful. Well, I think that's their, that's their game plan, Raul. They think, yes. you know, he... 
he's used to knocking people out with the body, and, and Gavriel, that's one of his strengths. Very well fought fight so far. Both guys having their moments. Good body shot from Gavriel. You just can feel somebody's gonna land something big. Yeah, yeah. so far the fight has been done in the center of the ring, and I, to me it looks like whoever comes forward more is gonna do the more damage and more impact and probably win the fight. And who's gonna back up who yes. first? Yeah. Nice combination by Gavriel. Yes, it was. And now yeah. here comes Benavides. When Benavides punches in combination, he is special. He's yeah, I, fun to watch. I agree with you, Al. I mean, I yeah. think he's one of the better combination punchers that I've seen in a while. I mean, he That's really, he's creative with the combinations. He puts them well together. And he, like, again, you know, he's only 20 years old, so he's got a lot of time to still get better and even learn. And, and when you're watching, you never think of him as a 20-year-old. You know, the real landed a nice left hook downstairs. He's committed to that, but the question is, can he get enough of those in? Counter left hand from Benavides is caught in the gloves of Gabriel. There's a combination from Benavides and back Gabriel up for a moment. But Gabriel right back. Again, Gabriel, you know, he's staying in there too yeah. long. He's got to yes. have a little bit of, like the five second rule. Yeah. Be in there, have a little bit of success, and then get out or turn him. Yeah, he's, he's got to keep turning them at angles. He's not using the angles as much as, as they wanted him to, even though he's having some success. Benavides tried that uppercut a moment ago that we talked about before the fight. Nice. Shot from Benavides. That's that left. Well, that was a right hook to the liver. He's also got a nice okay, left. I mean, uh, left hook to the liver. That's the one I'm looking for. And yet, Gabriel has had his moments. Yeah. Very good round. How do you feel? Just don't, don't stand too much in front of him. No te quedes mucho enfrente, okay? Don't stay too much in front of him. Take a deep breath, how do you feel? Get, 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 take a deep breath, how do you feel? You're doing great. Just do not get in front of him. Okay? Give me a little bit more. Oh, you said it. Head movement. Block, block, block. Defense. Get air, get air, get air. A little bit more movement on your head. Benavides throwing some combinations, and several of those punches got home, and that's the point of combinations. You might not land everything, but you can get some of them in. And as you said, yet Gabriel had his moments in that round. I'm not sure it was enough to win the round, but he had his moments. This is round three. Benavides' dad, who trains him, has said the most important thing for my son, because he's got all the other tools, is to work on his jab and his defense, because he has all the rest. I'd say that's a pretty fair statement. Yeah. What else? The other thing he has is attitude. He's, he doesn't get his head turned from things outside the ring, as his brother did, to be quite frank. He's gotten away from his native Phoenix. He moved originally to Long Beach, now lives in Lake Oswego, Oregon. <laughs> yes, it's pretty a sub, far away. It's a suburb of Portland. <laughs> nice left hook by Gravilla a moment yeah. ago. Yeah, he's, he put some good combinations together there. But again, that, that's the mistake. He, he cannot make that mistake. You know, like I said, he's got to have that success in there for a little bit and get back out. But I just have a feeling that sooner or later he's going to get lured into a toe-to-toe -to -toe match. And, I don't want to see Gavril do that because that's not his fight. The power punch is a demonstration at the slight edge for Benavides and a bunch of them thrown by Berkman. Benavides starting to throw more hooks. And there's two body shots and two hooks returned from Benavides. Gavril is, com Gavril is committed to that body work. He hasn't, you like the fact that he knows that's part of his plan. He's not going to stop it. That left hook was good, but when he does that, Benavides is countering to the head uh, several times. Yeah. This is a professional boxing match, and two guys that are doing a very good job. Absolutely, in that. absolutely. You know, it's for a world title, so they should be, but they are. And they're both fighting for the world title for the first time. So yeah. they're, yep. A lot of, like I said, a lot of emotions, and, and they want to win the world title. A lot of pressure for both fighters, you know. TMT show, Floyd Mayweather's ringside. 
Brazil is putting his punches together now, Ben. Yeah, much better. This is a really good round for yeah. him. Yep. He's a hard worker, and he is dogged. And if you're in front of him, Gavril can make things happen. Elvin Ayala beat him with movement. Three nice shots, and then he missed an uppercut from Benavides. Benavides another hook. Gavril ducks out of the way. Now Benavides right on top of him. And Gavril just continuing doing what he's done. Elvin the right Elvin. hand of Benavides, the, the, the kind of wide right hand, is getting it over the left hand of Gavril. Yeah. There it is again, but that time it went over the back of the head. This was a Gavriel round before, but Benavides has come back in the last minute. Let's we'll see if it's in Oh, there goes that. Another one. Body shot, I think, hurt Gavriel. Yes. And Gavriel against the ropes takes a deep breath. First time we've seen that. But he's being smart. He's still ah. giving him some kind of movement, Barry. Very close round. Yeah. yeah. Water. Listen, you gotta keep backing him up like you're doing, man. Keep backing him up like you're doing, but every more of the jazz. All right? He's getting tired now, man. All right? He's getting tired. Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. The body shots are tiring him out. But bring your hands back up because he's looking at the counter with your left hook. All right? Go right back on him with the good jab and keep digging to the body. He's getting tired. The body shots and the jab are working perfect. There you go. Come on. We got a full gas tank, right? Let's go, baby. So we come to round four. And in Gabriel's corner, Eddie Mustafa Mohammed saying the body shots are slowing him down. Keep doing the body shots. And yet, I thought the single best body shot was thrown by Benavides. Yeah, I think we're in the fourth round, right? Yeah, I think Gabriel needs to hurt this kid with some big shots. Put some hurt in him to try to get some kind of respect. If not, La Bandera Roja is going to keep coming. A little blood from the nose of Gabriel now. And... Uh, Benavides in the last minute of the last round, according to show stats, land, outlanded Gavriel 9 to 2. He may have stolen that round back. But there's Gavriel going downstairs again, and so he's listening to what Eddie Mustafa Muhammad is telling him to do. And he's getting there with those yeah. shots. Now, I haven't seen Benavides take a backward step, but cumulatively, that could have an effect. Yeah, they're hoping for that. The one issue, I think, has been Gavriel staying right in the pocket, not taking a step to the left or the right as much as they right. wanted him to. Don't you think? Yes. Like I said, he's got to keep turning him. Throw his combinations and turn, turn, and turn. a three-punch combination from Benavides and an uppercut. See, he's standing there too long. And again, That's what a combination happens. drives Gavriel into the ropes. And now Benavides right on top of this with the right hand, left hand of the body, and a good one. And lift up to the liver. Stop! It's brutal. Stop! Stop! You see Gabriel oh, holding on. He fought Watch. that lift hook. It's the first time he's held like that. Comes right back to the body. Now Benavides is just trying to walk no, him down, no. blocking the nose of Gabriel. Gabriel's still throwing combinations. He is in there contesting every second of this fight. But the power of Benavides, I think, is having some impact on him. Yeah, Benavides is just like a brick wall. He just, yeah. I mean, you hit him, can't hurt him, and he keeps coming forward. Good right hand again from Benavides, and that gets Gavriel to back against the ropes. That right hand is a little short, and Gavriel fights off the ropes. Ronald Gavriel wants to join Alicia Butte, Adrian Diacono, Leo Dorn, and Michael Lowe as the other Romanian world champions. It's his dream. Benavides keeps going back to that uppercut. He hasn't really gotten there with it that one time that I can recall, but that could be a question of time. Nice steady jab by Benavides. He's changing up, it up now. Picked up the tempo in this round, too, I think. It is telling Gabriel to come. Time, time! With a 
tough fight. Yeah. Down and relax. Now he's tired as hell. All right, he's tired as hell, right? Water, water. He's tired as hell. You keep digging to that body. Fast punching. Fast punching. Bring him to the body. Bye bye. Like you're doing. All right? Stop. Got him on the rope. him up right He don't like that. Take a look at the end of the round where. Gavriel taking advantage of Benavides saying, come forward. Now, not everything's landing, but the body work was there. And that's what happened right there to Eddie Mustafa Muhammad is a sign that he says he's getting tired because he's landing. Might have just been a ploy by Benavides, and Eddie Mustafa Muhammad might just be, you know, trying to motivate his fighter. Well, that, that's his job, to motivate that, his exactly. fighter. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. that's where Eddie got that point from, I think. I haven't seen anything that would indicate to me that Benavides is tired. No, no, I, I, tend, to, I no. tend to agree, but I think that's where Eddie was trying to extrapolate from. You gotta keep your fighter motivated no matter what. That's for sure. Even if he's got a big wall in front of him that keeps coming, he hits him with everything. He can't hurt Benavides so far. We see Benavides' punches are being more effective, putting more hurt. On Gabber, look at his face. Look at Benavides' face. Look at his expressions. Benavides' body shots, even though they've been far fewer than Gabriel's. They've gotten his attention on a couple of occasions. Now the punch output, it's fascinating that Benavides actually has thrown more punches than Gabriel. Um, in general, you would have thought Gabriel would have to be a little more, have a little more volume to win this fight. And again, right back to the body goes Gabriel. Doing a lot of fainting. He did get there with the right hand. Gabriel gets out of harm's way. He spins off the ropes. It's an overhand right from Benavides that did get there. It's like a loop in, like a. Yeah. He wings it. Yeah. And fast. Now, this fight is a little bit different than the Porky Medina fight. Yes, Benavides is probably winning virtually all these rounds. He's not dominating, in, in, even though Porky Medina came back on him and he was, you know, uh, certainly competitive. I think he's dominating this less than the Medina fight. Well, the reason why is because Gabriel is more of a technician fighter. Yes. You know, he's a lot That's more right. technical. Yep. He had a, a big amateur background. Good point. He's keeping his hands up. He's tight with his defense. And you, know, he's, you know, he's got to open up that defense. He's got to open yeah. up that, that guard. One thing, too, referring back to what Eddie Mustafa Muhammad was saying, that Benavidez might be tired. He is breathing through his mouth here in this round. I think they're both are, Barry. I think, look at Gavro. He's got his yeah. mouth open, too. This yeah, is you're right. Benavidez got, yeah. does have his mouth open. This has been a slog in this fight. Both men have made it hard on the other man. Even, Absolutely. Even though Benavidez is clearly winning, or it seems so to us. Of course, that's what we said about Han, too. Yes, yeah. that's true. <laughs> Not as much body work from Gabriel in this round. Mary tried to do that when he came upstairs, was calling the gloves of Benavidez. Two jabs and a looping right hand from Benavidez. Get some air, get some air. Give me some water, give me some water. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Just be a little bit more aggressive now. Let's put Unas some batteries on. More combinations, more jabs. David, no te me David. Del jab. Aquí no don't forget about the jab. How do you feel good? Don't be afraid to play with your left hand style. He doesn't have no answers for that, okay? Let's have fun in there. This is what round is this, bus? Six. Six. Oh, look at the body punches landed, and Gabriel has done more. Or that was, uh, you know, he, he landed uh, uh, more uh, overall than uh, Benavides, and he's been punching better. 
never thought that number would have been higher than 18. Hey, me too, yeah, in terms of what was landed, but, you know. This is round six. And it's interesting, at least on my card, I have it as a kind of a lopsided fight. I mean, it's a very lopsided fight, and yet, it hasn't really been that lopsided, even though, in my opinion, Benavidez won all the rounds. Yes, as a, as a good way to put it, because Gavriel has made these competitive and interesting rounds, even though, in most cases, you would think Benavides would get the nod. Well, it, it's odd, isn't it, yeah. that the 31-year-old is convinced taking the 20-year-old into deep water and hitting him with body shots will end up winning him this fight. Yeah. Fascinating. Whether it's true or not is another story, but they believe that. Benavidez is not as active in this no. round. No. Oh, Gabriel with a combination. Pins Benavidez against the ropes. Paws with two punches to the head, comes right back to the body. And Benavidez says, yeah, nothing. But you know what? Benavidez isn't punching that much. No, he's not. You know, his father wanted him to be, you know, put the batteries on and be a, a lot more busier in this round, put more pressure. He's doing the opposite. He's not going to be too happy in the corner. I wouldn't take any chances like that, putting his hands down. He's switching there. He's taking a run off. Combination from Gabriel gets Benavides against the ropes, comes upstairs with the left hand. And the right hand from Gabriel. Benavides misses a right hand. That was caught on the gloves. Been a pretty good round for Gabriel. Yes, yeah, it has. Is. When Benavides comes forward and makes Gabriel go back, he's effective. Again, a combination from Gabriel drives Benavides into the ropes and gets there with a pretty good right hand. For the first time, we saw Gabriel kind of stay the step to his left too, where he did use the angle that. Yes. Eddie Mustafa with Muhammad Wants. And again, a left hand, left hand of the body by Gabriel before Benavides fights off the ropes. Being very effective there. He's, you know, he, he went in, threw some combinations, came back out. Now he goes back in, circle him. There's oh. that uppercut. He's been looking for that all night. Stop! Box, box, box! I'm sure that they will tell Benavidez in the corner, stop clowning around. We'll take a look at the punch numbers, the show stats. Benavidez still more uh, active overall and uh, landing more punches than Gavriel, though Gavriel narrowed the margin in that last round. And let's take a look back at this fight in microcosm. It has been a, a pitched battle from the beginning in round two, some of the combination punching of Benavides, but there's the body work of Gerville, which has been his highlight during the course of this fight. And in these early rounds, we thought Benavides was winning most of them, but when Gavriel was able to get him against the ropes, he was able to do some damage. And a slight shift in this fight a little bit as we moved into the the fifth and sixth rounds, where Gerville was, even though Benavides still landing big punches, Gerville was able to get some work done. But when Benavides comes forward like that, Rips those uppercuts, he was very, very effective. So we start the second half of this fight. Round number seven, we're going 12. It's for the Bank and WBC Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Gonna be this in the red, Gabriel in the black and gold. Gabriel had a good last round. He needs to keep that momentum going. I don't know if it was because Benavides took a round off or you know, he was playing around too. It looked to me like he was playing around too much. I mean, it is a world title fight. They didn't have time to play, Barry. Uh, I'm not going to live and die with this one, folks. But I had the fifth round even, and I thought Benavides came back in the sixth with enough to win it. I'm not sure that's the case, but you can score it either way. 
I gave that last round to Gabriel. Yeah, so I, did I. And so I, did I totally I. understand that. And I was headed in that direction, but then the Benavides rally sidetracked me. It's, it's okay, Al, if you disagree with us. I mean, Steve does it all the time. Yeah, I know. He's, he's uh, <laughs> contrarian. <laughs> He's just more, he, he's just more, uh, um, you know, more confident in his, uh, his work. <laughs> his nose more. Yeah, exactly, apparently, yeah. <laughs> All right, you don't have to phrase it that way. <laughs> now, there's Benavides going downstairs. It's an interesting point. You know, Benavides has kind of got... Oh, there, there goes yeah. that left hook to the body. Exactly. I've, I've been looking for it. I've been waiting for it. <laughs> he's gotten away from that a little bit in the last couple of rounds. I do think Benavidez is a little bit tired. Well, neither man has been 12 rounds in their career. They, they both have been 10 once, and they're 1-0. So when they get near that 10th round and pass it, they're going to be in no man's land. That's overhand right right there by uh, Gabriel Cop. Benavidez on the chin. Had his chin up in the air. He better tuck that chin down. Fight's high. And now Gabriel in the corner. He gets out of there. Gabriel staying busy. A good right hand right there. And a left hand, a right hand of the body by Gabriel. And right back comes Benavides. Missed the uppercut. Got there with the right hand earlier. And missed the left hand. Ronald Gabriel has taken the big power punches of Benavides and not folded. And we're going to find out the, how this young man deals with that when it happens as we head into these later rounds. Because he had hurt Medina several times during their fight. Gavriel hasn't been stunned badly in this fight. So we come to round eight of this 12-round fight. Here's a pretty telling statistic from show stats. Benavides in his previous six fights has landed 50% of his power punches, and the power punch is anything but a jab. Tonight, he's landing at 27%. So Yeah, it tells you a lot. It does, and that's why even if, this, even if Benavides is ahead in this fight, uh, which he may well be, uh, it, it has not been a walk in the park for him. Not at all. Not at all. He's ma uh, Gabriel's making him work. Yep. He's not making it easy for him. Gabriel's bringing the fight. Yeah, he's bringing yep. the fight. He's taking his biggest shots, and he still keeps coming forward. And, and you know, he's having problems dealing with Gabriel's defense, too. You know, he keep, keeps saying this. He keeps his hands straight up, you know, to frame defense. That's what I call frame defense, real tight and close defense. Doesn't allow every shot to get in. Benavidez pushing a lot of punches. He's trying to set up the one shot, it looks like. He's blocking a lot of punches, though, Benavidez. That's he very effective. But Gavril has been uh, more active in this round. I'll tell you what, in the fight, I mean, Benavidez, from uh, the way, he, you know, he sounded really confident. I don't think he expected this, you know, because he said, this guy's looking at me as, a, you know, I'm 20 years old. Yep. You know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna run over him, but I think he's surprised that Gavril is giving him a way better fight. Yeah. Well, he, yeah. he said flat out, I'm yeah. going to win by knockout. Because you yes. asked him, can you go 12? And he said, yeah, but don't I'm, worry, I'm exactly. not gonna go 12. Right. Yeah. That's right. Benavidez missing a lot more. A lot of the shots been caught in the gloves. There's a right hand and a left hand behind it by Benavidez. Stop! Wait! And Gabriel comes right back. Ronald Gavriel is a blue collar worker. Let me tell you, he, he comes with his lunch pail and he said, I'm going to keep battling in every fight. That's what, again, his punches yes. still have a lot of crispness and they're getting there. And he's throwing some very good body punches. And some to the head. 
You can make a strong case for Gavriel in this round. Oh, yes. And again, a right hand left behind it by Gavriel. And Venus comes right back with a combination. But again, I thought very good round for Gavriel. Good work, good work. Sit down. Water. Open it up. He's, he's tired. Now, Ronnie, you got to step it up. I got your water right here. You all right now? Ronnie, he's dead tired. Step to him. Let your hands go. And bring them hands back up when you let them go. You took his best shot. He don't got nothing left. He don't got nothing left. You go right to him and let your hands go, right? Come on, baby. He don't got nothing left. Come on, man. He got nothing left. Hands up. Go right to him. Let your hands up. Deep breath. Well, Deep really breath. Likes what he's looking at. Yeah, he does. Keep going to the body. I'm not sure he's wrong. Oh, give it a mouth, please. problem here at the desk next to us but you know Graville sparred with Jose Uskatagi who I mentioned in the top 10 list who was a fantastic fighter who had that fight with Andre Drow where he got disqualified and they said that was a gift from heaven because we fought one of the toughest 168 pounders in sparring and he showed us how tough our guy was that tough sparring is helping real right now. Most, most definitely. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Now, are you buying what Eddie Mustafa Muhammad said that he's he's got nothing left? I, I no, I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't. Either. <laughs> no. Well, but I mean, I am buying that he. I mean, he already took his t the hardest yeah. shot. Yes. That's true. Yes. Well, Gavriel's working harder in these last couple yeah. rounds. And this is the first fighter Benavides has fought who has not been hurt by him. Porky Medina was hurt by him, but yes. ultimately knocked out. Knocked out. Doesn't mean he won't hurt him yet, but so far, his big punches have not sent Gavriel in, into a, a bad situation. I, I have to say, I've given Gavriel the last three rounds. I gave him the last two for sure, so, yeah. Gonna be this. Everything being caught in the gloves right now. It seems like Gavin is fine with a bigger sense of urgency. Like you know, he's, he's showing that he look, look at him. He's got him on the ropes. He's working him out the ropes, and his and his he wants to win this fight. His punches are getting yeah. there, and Benavides is, are being caught in the gloves. Like that one. Now uh, Benavides got there with an uppercut. Gabriel comes right back with the right hand. You know, it's interesting. That if this does wind up in the hands of the judges, if they really are Box. taking a real close look at what's going on inside. Yeah, it's going to be. It's 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 not the easiest fight to judge in some ways uh, because of it's been a lot of back and forth. But you know, it's. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad is right. I, I think he's done. I mean, Benavides might have ran out of gas. Could be. He's still landing. He's still landing, but not but the same. Not, not the same. Not the power. same. No. Not being as effective. I, I he's beat him. Gavriel's beating him to the punch. Yeah. I, think, I think a lot of Benavides punches are being caught in the gloves of Gavriel. Close round. Yeah, it is. A lot of activity, but not much going on for Benavides. And there's a right hand from Gabriel. Sit down. Sit down. Good. Hey, keep the pressure on him. Close your mouth and breathe. I got your water. On where? Right here? All right. Keep the pressure on him like you're doing. 
Keep the pressure on him like you're doing. And give me some jab. Double, triple the jab. Though. I need some more jab. You looking real good. This round, go to the body, all power shots to the body. To the body, nothing but the body. Get some air, get some air, vamos, let's go. Very tight, very tight defense. To the body. This is round 10. Now let's see if Benavides heeds his corner. There's a little tap to the body. Here's an oddity. Goes on left foot. A little bit low. The only man to go the distance with Benavides has been Azamat Umazardo, who had a 2-11 and 2 record. Wow. And he went the distance wow. with Benavides. So Gavril's looking like he wants to do that. Gavril could win this next three rounds. Yeah. No, yeah. He he's going to make it a close fight. Oh, yeah. Or he might even win the fight. Yeah. Uh, it, it's conceivable this yes. fight is there to be taken. Gavril holds on. Gavril right back on top of Benavides. Two shots to the body. Benavides, you know, just showing his immaturity because he's really not listening to his corner. If that's it, I just want you to throw nothing but body shots. Go to the body. He really hasn't got on the body that much in this round. That's what they asked him for. I got some body shots. This punch is right. I'm telling you, caught on the arms, on the elbows. That was the best left hook Gavriel has thrown in this fight. It landed perfectly. It did not hurt Benavides, but it landed very well. Benavides trying to work the jab a little bit. Well, those are arm punches by Benavides, absolutely, I have to say. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think, I think Benavides is doing more in this round, but I don't yeah. think he's being the least bit effective. Nice jab, triple jab there by Gabber. Look at him, keep touching and keep... That was an uppercut that did get in. By Benavides. Gabber keeps working the jab. Well, this fight, as we thought it would be, is very competitive. Yes. It is, and, and, and to my surprise, I didn't, I didn't think it would go 10 rounds. No, I, 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 did. I, I don't think none of us did. No, we, I, one way or the other. Still I got two more to go. Yeah, got two, two more to go. Was that left hook to never again? Yeah, that was a good shot. Up on top. Gavriel's yeah, done a good job here. Now, and man. now he's going backward. And yeah. Benavidez starting to press the action a little bit here. And they, get have, there they have heard him. There was that uppercut. Gabriel again back to the ropes, extricates himself. Benavides chases him. Gabriel throws a right hand that got there. Benavides misses a left and a right. Left in the nose against it again on Gabriel. All those were caught in the gloves. So was that. But and ben a right hand by Gabriel. And Gabriel now dishing out the punishment. Another combination. Gabriel was hurt in this round, though, I think. Hey, baby. Sit down. Water, water, water. That's how you show him like you're a man. Good work, Wild. Good fucking work, baby. I need you to keep rolling inside. When he punches, you got to roll inside. Okay, don't pull back. Well, the last round, while Gerville had had an excellent round, there was a right hand that kind of pushed him back. That's where he held. And they, I believe that. There were some other shots in there that may have hurt him. And there's a gripping uppercut by Benavides in a round that, for the first two thirds of it, belonged to Graville. And so did the end of it. Yeah, to, to some degree, yeah. Let me see that jab pumping. So we go to the 11th round. Neither man has been this far before. I'll tell you what, Gavril, if anybody's in better shape, I think it's Gavril. He's the more well-conditioned fighter because he took some heavy shots early in the fight. 
and I think he's coming back in the second half of the fight. I, I got this fight 96-94 for uh, Benavides. I scored that last <laughs> round even. I never scored, I never scored <laughs> round even. I think it's Al. He got me. All right. Well, <laughs> hey, I've got a little bit. You know, I went for that 10th round for Benavides. My score is very similar to uh, Raul's. It's just one point difference. And listen, you could you could take a couple rounds there yeah. and switch yeah. this. So, so don't go to the bank on that it's, by any stretch. I have it the same as you. Have. But yeah. interesting enough, I got there a different way than you Yeah, did. yeah, which is intriguing. Again, the body work of Gavriel, and he's gotten off to a very good start here in this round, as he did in the last round. And again, as you pointed out, they've never been to this place. It, one of the things that is intriguing, when you look at a fight, you look at it round by round, this is show stats on what they believe has landed by round. And you can see that there have been some that have been dramatically big for one fighter, and some very close, like the last couple. Benavidez starting to open up and get there against Gavriel. There's a three-punch combination, drives Gavriel into the ropes. Two left hands and another left hand and a crashing right hand. Best shot of the fight from Benavidez and that gets Gavriel to try to hold on. Benavidez won't let him. Another uppercut, a left hand of the body and a straight right hand and Gavriel still fights back. Benavidez's power did not leave him apparently in this fight even though he slowed down a bit. He gets there with wild punches sometimes. Yeah. Well, he's, he's awkward. Yeah, that looping overhand and that sneaky left foot to the body maybe threw a lot of uppercuts too with the will, left hand. Yeah. Will Benavides punch himself out in the first part of this round? We'll see. Be interesting. Got there with another uppercut. Now Gabriel comes right back with the right, right hand. Another right hand, tapping right hand from Gabriel. Combination for Benavides and they tie each other up. This is the kind of action we thought we were going to see in this fight and we're seeing it right now in this round. These are two tough customers in there. Been a heck of a fight. Beyond yeah. tough. Yeah. Oh. Little body shot with the left hand. Backs Gabriel up against the ropes once more. Benavides right on top of him near the end of this round. Yeah, we're trying to hold on. Again, Benavides, two shots. Backs Gabriel up at the bell. Uh, oh. Big round for Benavides. Yep. Well, David Benavides found his power punches here in the 11th round, landing a variety of punches, which he's known for. He's got a wide array of punches, left hooks, uppercuts, right hands, and kept after Ronald Gavriel, after Gavriel tried to hold. And uh, so Benavides showing us power and energy. One more round, you're world champion. Take a drink. Let's go. Let's go. We come to the last three minutes of this fight. It's been a war. It's been a terrific fight. And in the last round, according to show stats, Benavides threw and landed the most for the fight. 92 thrown, 33 landed. Those are highs for him in the fight. Amazing. The two tired warriors here. Benavidez walking up to him and throwing some yep. big yeah, power shots. Is. Did he find that second win? Yeah. I mean, he threw a lot of punches that last round. He's still coming with that intensity. David Benavides believes in himself, and he believes he can hurt people. And ultimately, he did finally stun Ronald Graville, but Graville has stayed upright. Oh, yeah. And it's, oh. Graville has fought a really t tough fight against a really tough fight. No losers here. And for David Benavides, what a valuable experience if he goes on to win this fight, that he was tested like this. Absolutely. Benavides still working the body. Now he gets there with a couple of other shots to the head. There's a right hand, a little short. 
Left hand would get slipped in. Uppercut, left hand, right hand. Gabbert has, uppercut. Yeah. Gabbert has taken some big shot. Any other fighter would have never taken this kind of shot, no. this kind of punishment. The last couple of rounds. Yeah. Well, all Benvenido. David, David Benavides told us the truth. He was ready to go 12 rounds because these <laughs> last couple of rounds, he's been a came man. back. Yeah. He came yeah. back. Strong. Four punch, five punch combination from Benavides with his back to the ropes. And there's oh. a left hand from Gabriel, and it drops Benavides. Seven, come back over there. Come back in the corner. Eight. Out of the blue. Nine, you wow. Okay? Box. He got, got careless in there. He got. Confident, he got, he got hit, he got hit again. And now Gabriel has 30 seconds to try to seal the deal. Try to right hand, got there, but didn't have a lot on it. Benavides does not appear to be hurt. Double jab from Gabriel, time ticking down. It's in the favor of Benavides. 12, 11, 10 seconds remaining in this fight. Gabriel trying to close the deal. Took a right hand from Benavides. Comes right back. Gets on top of Benavides. Three shots in the body and an uppercut at the bell. What a fight. That was absolutely as advertised and much more. Wow. So it is in the hands of the judges. I know you won. You had to win. And I mean, both these guys <laughs> earned it. Yeah, they sure did, but on both sides. And, and I think that Gavin's corner think they, they, they won the world title, and the other guys think they won the world title too. Hey, man, this is stuff for grabs. Let's take another look at it. It was no fluke, it was a sharp left hand. Got lazy in there. Oh, nice guy. Oh, he just ran, he ran right into right it. Right into ran it. Ran right into it. Let's we'll see it again. See the way Gabriel was blocking, blocking. He was watching. He was watching and saw his putting. There he goes again. Boom. It's like a jab, like a jab. He ran right into the jab. I was just going to say, he yeah. didn't really set down on that right. much. That was Benavides squaring himself up and creating the balance issue. But yeah. he made it fascinating with that knockdown. Yeah, he did, yeah. So we'll see now. I mean, that did change the complexion of the last and, round. And the issue is, round. well, I, I personally, I don't think so, because I thought Benavides won. I'm going to disagree with you, just like Steve Farhart might have yeah. been here. I thought it was a 10-9 round for Gavriel because Benavides had dominated virtually all of that round, but we'll I, see. I, I, agree, I agree with you, but I've never seen judges that really go by that. Most times a not. knockdown, it's 10-8. Now, there you see the, I agree. the ending numbers in which Gavriel and uh, Benavides both were very, very active, which is why this was an exciting and interesting fight with the ultimate edge for uh, Benavides. The second half of this fight was Fascinating to say the least. Gavriel had found his his sea legs and was landing good body punches and working hard. And in the tenth round, a round that was the longest they had gone, Gavriel kept working, working, working. They both landed good punches, but once we hit round 11, David Benavides took control. At least he did for almost all of the last two rounds. In round. 11, he landed 33 punches, but in round 12, while he was dominating and completely dominating, he did go down from that left hand. I don't really think Benavidez was ever hurt by that much, no. but as you said, he was squared up. It's It certainly thickened the plot. It definitely did that. Yes. Definitely did that. So it is in the hands of the judges, and uh, we will await this decision to see who is the new WBC super middleweight champion. It's the title that was vacated by Badu Jack, who you saw earlier is here in attendance watching this fight. 
really an entertaining fight. Yes, I mean, it was back and forth. Uh, I'll tell you what, I got, I got a 114-113 for Benavides, but it could go the other way or even a draw. I've got a 115-113 for Benavides. For Benavides. But, as you said, it, it was Gabriel who forced the fight. He was bringing the fight. I, I think Benavides probably won, at least on my card, won all of the early rounds. Yeah, but the first half of the fight, most of it was Benavides, but then, you know, he lost, he lost a lot of the middle, you know, the second half of the fight, then that knockdown. Like, again, you know, some people might score 10-9 like Al, but I scored a 10-8. A knockdown is a dot down, even though, you know, Benavides might have been winning the round, but he got dropped, flush. He went down, got back up. It's a knockdown. It comes a knockdown. It's a 10-8. Well, we want to remind you that coming up on October 14th, Showtime Championship Boxing presents a triple header. It'll be Heard with his first defense, and he faces a former champion. And three great fights on that card. It's coming your way on Showtime Championship Boxing on Saturday, October 14th. Jamal Charlo and Lubin will be in our middle fight, and the fight... Uh, We'll get underway, the card, I should say, will get underway with uh, Eris Landi Lara and Terrell Gaucher. Gaucher, of course, the American Olympian, but boy, he's got a load to deal with in Eris Landi Lara. Yeah, it is not all that, I mean, he's one of the most avoided defensive fighters in, in boxing right now because, you know, the Cuban school of boxing, he's a hard guy to, uh, to fight and to beat. You know, gave a lot of uh, competitions, you know, he gave a lot of good, tough fights against. The, Different fighters, uh, Barry. All right, so yeah. who wins the WBC's version of the super middleweight champion? Let's go to the center of the ring right now, and we will find out. Ladies and gentlemen, before I read the scorecards, a round of applause for both warriors, please. After 12 rounds of championship action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Adelaide Bird scores the contest. 116-111 for Benavides. Judge Glenn Trowbridge scores it. 116-111 for Gavril. And Judge Dave Moretti scores the contest. 117 111 for your winner by split decision. From Phoenix, Arizona, El Bandera Roja, David Benavides. So David Benavides is the winner by split decision. Two judges seeing it rather lopsided. One way, they both had it 116-111, but one judge had it for Benavides and the other had it for Gavriel and the deciding judge 117-111 for the new champion, David Benavides. And I will tell you, Ronald Gavriel has to walk out of here with his head high. And I'm sure we're gonna see him again and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him get another shot somewhere down the road. In the meantime, a coming of age fight for David Benavides. He's only 20 years old. He is now the youngest champion in any division currently holding a world title. Today's the day. Order my fight against Caleb Plant on Showtime Papers now. Dave is Plant who likes, sees himself as a stylish boxer. He focuses on visualization and he says he's seen this movie a hundred times in his head and it's him taking the title away from Jose Who's Scottagy? <laughs> there you go. All right, we'll call him Jose the rest of the way. Jose. <laughs> Caleb Plant, who comes in with an impressive 17-0 record. Here in the ring, here is Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Microsoft Theater here in Los Angeles, California. Premier Boxing Champions now features the main event of the evening. 12 rounds for the IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the IBF. Your three judges scoring this contest at ringside will be Max DeLuca, Dr. Lou Moretz, and Zachary Young. 
and your referee in charge when the bell sounds. The third man inside the squared circle is Jerry Condu. I'm Caleb Sweethands. Plan has some of the quickest hands you'll see. There is no plan B. I think he's ready for that title shot. Tonight is my night. This is my moment. There's a right hand from Plant. The moment I become a champion. He's got all the tools to be for a great champion. I'm taking that belt. Introducing first the challenger. He comes in wearing the black trim with the gold, weighing in officially at 166 pounds. He enters tonight's bout undefeated. 17 wins. 10 of those coming by way of a knockout. Fighting and representing Nashville, Tennessee. Ranked number one by the IBF. Tonight, he goes after a world title for the first time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated Caleb Sweethands Plant. I'm the champion, Jose, Jose Uzcategui. What a win! Powerful performance by Uzcategui. Tonight, everyone will remember Bolivita. This belt is mine. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the blue and the green, weighing in officially at a ready 165 pounds. His record impressive, 28 wins, 23 of those coming by way of knockout against two blemishes. Originally from Venezuela, now fighting out of Tijuana, Baja, California, Mexico. He is the reigning and defending IBF super middleweight champion of the world. Tonight, making the first defense of his crown, ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros presentando the champion, el campeón, Jose Bolivita Uzcategui. And your referee in charge here to give instructions is Jerry Cantu. Chief second in boxing, mouthpiece in. Jose, nicknamed Bolivita, and the background on that when he was a kid, his father, the currency in Venezuela, his home country, would offer him some cash to go fight people, and he turned it into a career, an intense stare from the challenger Caleb Plant, coming off his longest inactive period of his career. Remember, he broke his left hand, suffered in training for the original match against Jose, or Bolivita, as we'll call him. So. Plant said he's healed, he's healthy, he's ready to go. We'll be working under the unified rules. Scheduled for 12 and a championship is on the line. Let's check in with Heidi Andraw. Thank you very much, Chris. I was backstage watching these two just before they made their ring walk and Caleb Plant was pounding the bags as opposed to Uzgadegui, who was very calm and loose. So not sure exactly what that means. Ray, Anthony, what are your thoughts? Well, that shows that Scott, you know, Jose is, you know, he's, look, he's controlled. You could see it. He's, he's determined and controlled. Caleb Plant, he's, he's all wired up, man. He, this is a shot. I get that. So he's got to keep he's got to keep his emotions in control and just box his, you know, fight his fight. But I like I like Jose. I like his demeanor. I like it. A little jab, a little left from Plant. Stocks with the right, pawing with the left. Well defensed is Balavita, the champ, in the blue gloves, trunks with the green trim. And he's got Caleb into the corner and a response for a plant. Well, that's what Caleb Platt's going to have to do to win this fight. Dante, you know what I'm saying. You've got to come there. You've got you to you fight the guy eventually. You're going to have to you know, move him, do, fight your fight, but you're going to have to stand there and throw punches with him, and, and eventually you're going to have to fight That's him. what he's doing right now. He's not even running. He's standing there and fighting the guy. Uh, clinch. Now, Plant. Jose said about Plant, I don't respect Caleb Plant. He talks too much. I will punish him, beat him up, and then knock him out. But he may leave himself open too much with those big swings for a knockout. Definitely. He, when, if you're looking for the knockout and the guy knows that, he can sit back and wait on you to make that mistake and, and catch you. A couple of jabs that didn't connect from Jose. Ooh, good, body some, good body work by Caleb Plant. Yeah, there's some delivered punches to the body by Plant. 
look, right, this is not a big ring. And, and right now, they're close to each other, and, and, and uh, Jose is not letting his jab go. He's not he's creating a distance for himself, and he's letting Caleb Blank get too close to land them shots. And how about the styles here? As you see, Jose's more defensive to start here. Plant. And I thought it would be vice versa. I yeah. thought Caleb Plant would be more defensive than uh, who's Kataki coming forward and getting him. Plant looks like he's measuring yeah, here. Yeah, he's not throwing that jab out. He's sticking his palm with it. You got to stick it out there. <laughs> Let him know it's there. But this could be part of his plan, too, just to walk him down. Let us to walk him down. Keep him moving. Yeah, there it is. He stabbed that. Uh, another clinch and an inside body shot and a warning from our referee to plant. I think if the ref wanted to get in, he got to get in there and break him up and not just say break. Inside of 15 seconds in the opening round of this title fight live from Los Angeles. And a little bit of a flurry that misses. Where's the bell? There it is, and a stare from Caleb Plant. What was that all about? The champion speaks ill of his challenger who's undefeated, who comes in focus. We're through round one here on FS1. There is the champ, Jose Buscadegui, nicknamed Balabitu. Just said that was good, right, to his corner. Okay. Maybe not, because Caleb Plant had that flurry against the ropes. May have had the slight edge in the opening round, and you need that if you want to take the title away. Now, Uskagari just threw a nice right hand, and he, he clipped him with it, but he was going to move it away, so he rode with Being the punch plant. a little bit. Plant rode away, rode with the punch. But I'm telling you, he's, he's, got, he's, he's shortening the distance. Jose is missing a lot, and the challenger plant on the dark trunks. Plant's last four fights have averaged 10 plus rounds. Ooh, good, good job. This is the, this is the problem. This, oh, down, yeah, down, down the oh, champion. Yeah, down. Oh, good shot. A little off balance, too, though. There was an yeah, off balance. Yeah, but it balance. was a shot. It, it was a knockdown. Was perfect timing on the part of Plant. So it's only the third time that he has ever gone down on the canvas. Plant aggressive here after measuring. Now he's delivering. Still in the defensive mode is Bonavita. Jose's got to let his hands go, especially now. He's got to get some type of control back in this fight. Yeah, when he has gone after it, Ray, hasn't connected much. That's the thing. He's not throwing as many punches as he fought even his last fight. He's sitting there waiting for the knockout, and you can't do that, especially with a boxer like Plant. Yeah, we're seeing the boxer versus the puncher. There's a there jab. There, got something to, sneaky Plant, right hand over the top. Got to the head of Plant, but Plant shaking his head. Which means he got hurt. <laughs> he doesn't want to show his opponent that he is bruised at all, even if it's just his ego. Now, I like the movement. I like him plan. I like his fight fight plan right now. He's, he's, you know, he's doing good. But, you know, it's a big guy. It's a small ring. So he's going to have to fight him. But I like what I see so far. You yeah. like his plan more than Jose's? Yes. Who's Kataki? He's got to let his hands go, man. And right now he's getting close. He's got the longer jab, but he's not using it. He's looking for that one punch. That he think he can yeah. land, and there, 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 there goes the right hand, but Didn't he rolled it. Yeah, but, but you got to set a lot up of steam off of it. You know that, Anthony. You got to set it up with the jab. You do. Ray Mancini, Anthony Durrell with Chris Myers and you ringside. Oh, oh there's a shot because he's got him in the corner, up against the ropes. Plants coming out of it. A body shot left. The right didn't connect. Inside 20 seconds of round two. Again, a miss on a wide reach by Jose Uskatagi, the champion, who has been on the defensive, a quick back turn. The aggressor has been the challenger, Caleb Plant. Errol Spence. He is here ringside. 
upset about the Cowboys' loss to the Rams. And there's David Benavides, some of the fighters you'll be seeing on Premier Boxing Champions at FS1 and Fox. There's Sean Porter. Heard from him earlier, always entertaining to talk to. And Leo Santa Cruz, an upcoming fight as they are looking on and seeing an aggressive start as we begin round three with Plant. If you're scoring at home, keeping your own assessment here, thinking that maybe Plant having the edge against the champ. I like the fact that he's controlling center ring. Caleb Plant is controlling this fight so far. Even though it's early in the fight, he's controlling it, and that's a big advantage mentally. Even yeah, though he's doing what he's supposed to do for sure. Gloves may be down, but he has protected himself well when Jose has tried for that big knockout punch. No, yeah. one thing about Jose that I know, there it is. When, he, when Caleb Plant slides to his right along those ropes, uh, along the ropes, you jump in with a left hook because he can't get out of the way of it. You saw the you jabs know? landed, Ray, moments ago and a 14 to one ratio in favor of the challenger Plant. Yeah, no, he's throwing more punches and he's landing more. Good move as Plant, a little showboating. Like that ain't, that ain't nothing. Says the kid from rural Tennessee, now in Las Vegas. I'm gonna tell you, at the end of the day, what, what uh, Jose's gonna look at is that he didn't use his jab. He was close up. He's trying now. Now, well, he's throwing that right hand a lot, but he's got to use that left hand. That's the key to this fight. And see, when they clinch, you get a little, you saw Plant land a few jabs with the left to the head, the side of the head of Jose. Ooh. And, and Uzgataki is, is cut. He cut under his left eye. And Plant sees it, could work on it. So even with the gloves up and the defensive work, Jose still feeling the effects of the Plant jabs. He wants him to box. And so do the fans here, and there they go. Now, if Caleb stands there and going and wants to go toe to toe, it's going to be that, sure that's not. a advantage to, to Jose. And why is that? Because he's a better, bigger puncher. He's the bigger puncher. He he's would, a taller guy. He want to keep moving like he was doing early in the fight. There's now, a good exchange. Yeah, and now Caleb move. got the best of that exchange. And then uh, move out of the way. Tagi didn't hit him with one punch, but probably a body punch. And the blood started to come out of that cut below the eye of the champ, defending his IBF World Super Middleweight title. And behind early. He has not gone the distance much. He's lived by the knockout. Through three rounds, and Caleb Plant pushing the champ to the edge with a title on the line here in Los Angeles. Live here in Los Angeles, and our artificial score, Marcos Villegas, he's been a boxing correspondent the last decade, covered hundreds of fights. Marcos, how are you seeing this so far? All right, Chris, dream start from Caleb Plant, and I really feel that his speed is taking over the fight so far. He's up three rounds uh, to none. Really impressive stuff from Plant. All right, Marcos Villegas unofficially scoring this all in favor, as you see there, of the challenger, Caleb Plant, with Ray Mancini and Anthony Durrell. Chris Ooh. Byers here in the fourth round, live on FS1 from the Microsoft Theater in Los Angeles at a good exchange. And gentlemen... And Caleb Plant is cut over his right eye. So we have both fighters. Anthony, you spot that right away. I could tell with your time in the ring and having fought in this weight division. Oh, there it is. It's bothering me. He's poking at it. Yeah, and it, that's a cut that'll bother you. It's over the right eye, and it's uh, right in the, in the eye sight, so that blood can definitely trinkle in there. It would appear not as severe as the one that Jose has suffered, which they worked on prior to this round. And oh, a good left took by left from Ooh, Jose. good left took by Now he's starting to rough him up a little bit. That's what he's got to do. He's got to rough up Caleb Plant to win this fight. Oh! oh down goes oh, the champ! And he hurt him time. with that right left hook. He hurt him with that left hook. That Plant. left hook really hurt him. That wasn't no flash knockdown. It really hurt him. And he, the, this is what he needs to do to win this fight. Plant came out of this 
with a severe shot, blood dripping down his cheek, but for the second time, and that was not off balance, that was a solid shot to Jose Uscanagui. But th that's something, Jose's got to use that jab to keep the distance, but he's not, and he's letting Caleb come in, and pay Caleb's uh, making him pay for it. Yeah, by looking at him, you'd think that Plant was losing and, the fight. And Caleb is still, I mean, uh, Uzgataki is still kind of hurt with this, with off that knockdown. But that He still don't look really there. He's coming for it, but he don't look there. Now, remember, Plant's prediction, as Jose Uscanagui said, hey, I'm going to try to take him the distance. The prediction by the champ was, I'll knock him out in five or six rounds. Jose said, I'm going to end this. But he's the one who's been down on the canvas. Well, he's getting a boxing lesson right now by Caleb Plant. He is. Shifting directions, shifting height up and down. I mean, look, he's put on a clinic right now. And this is what I was saying. I was saying he needs to hit him with some substantial for him to keep boxing like he and he just did it. That was a good right hand body shot by Caleb Plant. We are live in Los Angeles and a title fight here. The challenger in the dark trunks has been the dominant force. That's Caleb Plant. From Venezuela, now in Mexico, Jose Uscanagui with his championship on the line, having to rally from a couple of knockdowns. And that cut looks really bad. Right here, boom. Digging downstairs, double cut top, foot. boom, right there. And he both of them hit him. each other. Both yeah. of them hit each other and Caleb's was more effective. He's coming off that rope, but I tell you, because, boom, a good body shot. He's, you know, he's got to keep his hands up. I'll tell you, that was a hell of a shot. That was a hell of a that, shot. But, but it started play. with the body shot. Oh, he yeah. took his focus to the body and came up to the head. And they're working on that cut that you pointed out. You saw the blood dripping down that looked worse than the one suffered earlier by the champion. But And... Jose smiling after he was knocked down. You see now they worked on that cut under his left eye and no longer bleeding. Right. Yeah, you can smile, but that shot really hurt him. You know, I, at this point, I got him down by six points. And I'm sure Mar uh, Marcos does that. So he better do something. Plant with the early aggressiveness and clearly ahead of the champ. As we begin round five, a big swing, a big miss by the champ. And let's check in with the champ's trainer. He's standing by with Heidi Andro. Thank you very much, Chris. Well, in the fighter meetings, you, uh, Jose told us that it was gonna be the fifth or sixth round that this fight had at. How do you say things so far? Oh, it's good, man. He's, he's, he's giving us something more to work. Uh, we're gonna have to adjust. You know, we have to make adjustments. That's what we're gonna do. It's, like I said, it's a 12 round fight. Thanks, Coach. Rigo. Well, if it goes that long, quite an exchange. There was a right that landed solidly to the head of Jose Uskatagi. Yeah, I, I don't see anything that Jose's doing to give Caleb any problems right at this point. Caleb's controlling everything from, from the pace of the fight. You know, he's hit, hit the more effective punches. Right now, he's got things going his way. And, and Uskatagi, <laughs> Jose, has got to try to cut off the ring and use that jab. If he doesn't use that jab, he's got no shot of winning this fight. Plant said it was the best camp he has ever had coming into this fight. His sparring, his conditioning, he felt sharp, and he's shown that. Good exchange there. And again, reopening. They addressed that cut of Plant in between rounds. And on the defensive is Bolavita. Anthony said it best before. He said, Jose's waiting for the one punch. You can't do it against a guy like Plant. And he's still waiting for it. He's not using his jabs. He's not, from the keys to victory of what I said, he's not doing any of that. He's been behind the whole fight. You know, we said that Caleb Plant is fighting on not only emotion, adrenaline, you know, uh, oh, he's got nice. motivation, you know, all that stuff. You know, it's a hard man to beat tonight. You got to bring your best to beat him. And so far, Jose has it. For me, has it. Talk about athletes in a zone and Plant showing <laughs> some hip movement and the jabs. 33 landed by our count by the challenger Plant, and nothing on that effort 
from Jose. And Plant is fighting his fight. He's, he has no worries in there. He, you still have to worry about the power, but he has no worries. You can tell he's fighting his fight, and, and, and he's in, in control right now. Everything he said he was going to do, he's doing. His defensive work has been excellent, being able to weave or bob out of the way of any punches thrown by Jose. Plant very focused and told us, despite a great crowd here, that he zones everything out and only hears his corner and his trainer. And we've got the clinch to end the round. One that Plant, despite the blood, in control of. It's the last round. The last round was better, but you need more work. More work, please. Our translator, Felix De Jesus, interpreting the trainer of the current champ, who is clearly behind in this fight, despite opening a cut uh, under the eye of Caleb Plant. And nonstop action. Here we go, round six. And the scorecard so far. Every round has gone to Caleb Plant, the challenger, who comes in undefeated at 17-0. And a little more aggressiveness here from Jose, the left, landing to the body of Plant. Chris, don't be surprised if he gets dropped again, because every time he throws a punch, Anthony, he straightens straight back up. He, does. he doesn't roll underneath. He throws a punch, and he backs straight up. Blind man can hit you with a punch coming back. And Caleb's punches are so sharp right now that if you make a mistake, he's going to hit you. The words of Anthony Durrell, super middleweight himself, whose brother tangled with the champ, Jose Uskataki, and may end up getting a shot to fight one of these guys. A current fighter and Ray Boom Boom Mancini, the Hall of Famer, the former champ. Chris Myers and you on FS1 Live. It's premier boxing champions live from Los Angeles at the Microsoft Theater. And the challenger fighting with passion, with emotion, with focus and purpose. And ahead here in round six and throughout this fight. Anthony, I don't know about you. I'm looking at Jose. He looks uh, he, he, not sharp at all. He's sluggish, coming forward. You know, not, again, I'm going to say it over and over. He hasn't used that jab. But, you know, he looks sluggish coming forward. And, and Caleb Plant is moving around him and doing what he wants. Now, that's, that's the first jab, and he hit him. But this is the thing I told you guys. I told her, I, I hope Jose didn't underestimate Caleb Plant. Well, the nose now, you see blood coming from the nose of the challenger plant. And that left landed from Jose Uscadegui on the, on the head of the challenger. And Caleb Plant came back with a hook also. He hit him with his own hook. So both of them landed good punches in that sequence. The energy that these two fighters have shown, and Jose right now is too hesitant. He's the champion. He's got to start pushing the fight, and he's too hesitant. Yeah, he almost looks uncomfortable, or like he's not sure when he wants to. He's make scared that. to get hit with a big punch again, like he did before. Yeah, maybe he has found out what Plant can do, and it has caused him to play a little bit, or to fight a little bit more conservatively and play conservatively and fight off or play off. Some of the fight moves, the boxing moves of Plant, who has been very good defensively. Entertainment through six rounds. Is this title going to be taken away? Plant is fighting an outstanding fight so far. He took one there from the champ, but he is still ahead, scheduled for 12. The challenger has been the aggressor, Caleb Plant, despite blood rushing down his face, a cut. He is clearly ahead, has knocked down the champion twice. Live from Los Angeles, good to have you watching with us. You know, one thing I noticed, Chris, in the corner, Caleb Plant's deep, Deep, taking deep, deep breaths, you know. It could be emotion, you know, get that nervous energy. But Uskadegui is very, very calm over there. 
I don't know, you know, uh, uh, being calm is very important in a title fight, any fight. But, ooh, there's a right that oh. landed by Plant at a now, good exchange in th the middle of this ring. Now, this could not be good for Plant to stand and go toe to toe. -to -to. Throw your punches and move. Throw your punches and move. Give him angles. I now, let's just, uh, speaking of corners, let's check in with Heidi Andrell, who's in the corner. That's already, you're just saying you're a very vocal coach. What I are am. you telling him? Um, uh, I, I, I'm trying to get him to slow down just a little bit because uh, it's a tough pace that he's setting for himself. And the champion's got more experience with 12 round fights, so I don't want him to do too much too soon and get caught up in too many exchanges with the champion. Excellent. Thanks so much, Coach. Chris? Yeah, Heidi, thank you. That's some interesting insight from his trainer about wanting to slow things down, not expend too much energy. Being aggressive is one thing, exhausting yourself another. I, I think I think he know his pace as a fighter in the ring. I think you know what you can do Ooh. Uh, while you're in there. He's been 10 rounds before, so two more I don't think will, will determine the fight. But he's fighting an excellent fight right now. He looks like he's in shape, in condition, and, and just ready to go to full 12. No, he's in condition. He is in shape, uh, Anthony. There's no dispute. But I, I think the pace, that's what we're talking about. I don't know if he's been at this type of pace. He usually, you know, if ever. Because right now he's pushing hard, but he's forced to push hard. Everything. Well, Plant said it's about you know it's not about what Jose does. It's it's about what I do and what I do well. But see again, he's this close and he's not using that left hand. That you can't win that fight if Jose does not stick out a jab. Caleb's gonna walk, do the, do what he just did, two three shot combinations and move. Well, Plant was big on talking about ring generalship. You know, we have our unofficial scorer here, and those that watch, yeah, you have to land more punches than the other guy, right, to win right, unless you're right, knocking him down. Right. But tell me about ring generalship. Is that overrated? No, no, I'm a big advocate of ring generalship. Look, the old saying, if one guy's, you know, it's like one guy's controlling center ring, he's controlling the pace of the fight. And that's what Caleb Plant is doing since the jump. He's controlling the pace, hitting the other guy more, he's, you know, hitting the other guy more, boom. But if, and if he wasn't in there tonight, I'm not sure we got such a, an exciting fight. Now, this thing, Uzukatagi is still looking for one punch. I think he he, he looks kind of sluggish to me. He don't he he's sweating, but not sweating like Kato Plant. He looks dry. I think he came in a little bit too low in weight, and, and you're you're looking at it right now. Although he looks a little less tired, because Plant has been doing much of the attacking here inside of 10 seconds of round seven. Ooh. Ooh. Five rounds to go. If we go that far, scheduled for 12 with a title on the line, let's listen in on Caleb Plant's corner of the challenger. Take a deep breath. Now, Caleb, that last, that last angle you tried to take, feet aren't quite there. Like, let's not try to get, let's not try to get that dynamic right now. You know what I mean? Sorry, man. I know. Hey, right now, the stick is the key, Caleb. All right? Sticking. Hey, right now, your combinations are slowing. Your hands are slowing down a little bit, and he might be able to catch you in the middle of them. So we want to get away from the combinations a little bit, go back to that stick, and slow the fight down a little bit more, OK? You want some more water? Hey, don't let, don't let, him, don't let him get a hit of steam up, but slow it down a little bit this round. Again. I'm rounding. All right, we can always use more water, so slowing down the combinations. Don't leave yourself open. But 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 I, I don't totally agree with that because uh, Jose is putting on the pressure, so you can't really slow down. You got to keep punching like you're doing. Plus, you're going for the world title. You go after it. You go take it. You go everything the guy gives you. You you take it, you know, and try to bury him with it. And the card plant clearly ahead. On all seven rounds. A body shot by Jose. Yep, Jose landed but that one. Jose said he wanted to take him into deep waters. If that's his plan, then he better start doing a lot of body work and throwing a lot more punches. Jose Satal, the trainer for Uskatagi, told him to work the right, go work on the body, use that right to get to the body of plant. He can't do it if they're in a clinch. Two steps back. Well, Caleb got to fight the fight he started out with, man. Don't, those, you know, I know it's yeah. later in the fight. He might be a little winded. I get that. But keep fighting your fight, man. Throw punches and move. He's standing, he's standing too much in front of him without doing anything. Yeah, can you conserve your energy knowing that you have won these rounds when you still have four plus to go? I think you got to keep going because 
uh, Jose is keep pushing the pressure, and you're going to have to keep punching to keep him up. And he hurt him again with the left hook. That is his key punch right now, that left hook, because Uzgataki keeps putting his hands down every time he, after he punched. Pace, the fast pace was actually favoring favoring uh, plant. I yeah. agree with that. And if you're in shape like you should be, you shouldn't be able to go 12. You should be able to burn for 15, burn for 20. Don't why slow down. Pick up the pace. Let's, let's drop. Let's get close to show. Look, Jose looks like he's dragging. His punches are dragging right now. He just switched southpaw and went back to orthodox. He missed with that right. Got a little shot with a left, but nothing that seemed to bother Caleb Plant. And that's the thing, Uzutagi haven't hit Caleb with nothing substantial to keep him from coming forward. You see that right eye again, that right side of the face of Caleb Plant. Uzutagi isn't doing anything right now in the fight. This is where he's got to start letting his hands go in the infighting. Chop him down little by little. He's doing nothing. He's leaning in. That right didn't connect. Plant, trying I to think land Jose it. is getting a little bit winded right now because he's not throwing as much. His power, you can tell he, he doesn't have any snap on his punches really. And Caleb is really doing what he want to do. Caleb seems like the bigger man in there right now. And a miss on the right. The left may have landed, but not much. And then a body shot from Jose. Backing up Caleb Plant. Let's listen in to the champ's corner. The double hook, the double hook. We need that double hook and in the face. How, how are you feeling? Are you feeling good? Let's get, let's get that second wind. Are you sure? You're sure you're feeling okay? Yes. Are you sure? Sure. Are you sure? Yes. Let's get a little water here. Now you know he's uh, tiring a little bit. Three rounds, this is where we got to work it. Three rounds and we really have to work it. Complete three rounds. You know what you came for. Hoping to hope he could hold on to his title defense. We have four rounds to go. Yeah, I mean, look, doing, you know, punching good punches like that, that's what's going to get him back in the fight, yeah. He's got to let them power shots. On the scorecard, unofficially, we have Plant winning every round. Remember, there was an early knockdown. There was a slip and then a solid knockdown. Plant sending the champ to the canvas. And I got I got Jose winning one round, but it's, he's still dominating the fight. Plant is still dominating the fight. And what, what concerns me a little bit is Jose Corner kept asking him, is he okay, is he okay? And I didn't understand that. You know, you, you can't confuse him. You really got to go in there. And, and, and motivate him to go out there and fight. This is nine round. Does Jose Uscatagui need a knockout to win this fight? Yes. And oh, maybe, I agree. That's no, what I he's agree. banking on. He's so even if he wins. Show. Yeah, he's not going to win the decision at this yeah, point. The total punches, you see the percentage, and that's probably the most important, but at least the aggressor plant has still landed more. But, but I hope Caleb Plant continues to fight the fight he's doing. Don't slow down, like, you know, hoping not, 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 not hoping to lose, hoping not to win, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yep. Keep fighting. Try to sh close the show. Try to take him out. Well, he's he, doing a hell of a job right now when he's, do when he's throwing punch, letting his hands go. There you go, like that. Look at that. Working inside is Caleb Plant. He's putting on a clinic a on his side. A left that lands again. The left has been working all night for him. And, and the it starts with the body. Look at how Jose is bent over now because he's attacking the body. He attacked the body early, and he kept going, and that's the result right now. I mean, the champ is just leaning in. There's a left that landed to the head. Plant on Uskatagi. Oh, but Caleb's almost centered, uh, challenge him, you know, to punch him. You know, hit him with a good shot. But he just got caught with two shots, and he got hurt. He got hurt. Plant is somewhat you know, I don't think he he's hurt, his head. I don't think he's hurt. I think he's in there slipping the punches. He's got, he, he better be hit, careful. He hit him with one big punch, but I don't think Jose had the power on there like he did in the first round. That he's right jab landed from Jose. And I tell you, Anthony, why I disagree because now they're tired. His legs straightened up. His no, legs no, straightened no, no. up. He he's slipping. 
You two disagree? Yes, he's slipping the punches. He didn't get hit with no punch after that. Looked like the right Look. landed. <laughs> he got hit. Plant better defend himself. He's got oh, it closed down. Oh, he's, he's his there. Legs, his legs ain't going nowhere. He better get on that bike. He better get on that bike. Under 30 seconds, round nine. Scheduled for 12. What are they doing? Whispering? I think I lift their hands go. Inside leaning, clutching no body. Punches being thrown. There's a right to the back part of the head of Plant. Underneath looked like Jose landed one. He misses with the left. A little exchange here. And shoving Plant backward, and that's the end of round nine. Three to go with Ray Mancini, Chris Myers, Anthony Durrell. No, beautiful inside work by beautiful. Plant. I like the infighting by both guys. Boom, good shot here. And that's Plant. when Plant took it on the yes. chin, literally. Yes. yes, his leg went up. Tell me up. what other punch he got hit with. And the right from Plant. Another right uppercut. Nah. But mostly the left for Plant. And here. No, he came back strong. Jose answers to the head of the challenger. Be smart with him in there. Use that and stick. you see him tending to that cut that he's had from the early rounds with his trainer, Justin Gamber, looking on. There is the champion who, by looks, yeah, looks, looks like he's winning fresh. the fight. Looks pretty fresh. And it looks like maybe that was the best round that Jose Uskatagi has had in this fight, and he got it maybe just in time. Slightly ahead in oh. round nine. Did he win that round? Let's take a look uh, at our unofficial trainer, Marcos Villegas. Has the round going, the first round, to the champion. Well, I, I agree with that. I gave him one round earlier myself. Okay. Right, right now. But right now, look, he's got to get on. He's got to box like he started early. Punch, punch, and move out. Give him angles. He, don't stand in with him. Don't make it a dog fight. You know, that's what that. Oh. Oh, that's, the sweat flying. That's what Uskadagi wants, to make it a dog fight. And he was controlling. Now. Uzgatagi look like he got his second win right now. He look like he's yeah. stalking him now. He look like he's he's coming with a little bit more snap on his punches than before. He knows whatever he's hearing in his corner, he knows it is hand that he's got to do more to win this fight. But now he's starting to use the jab. The jab now he's starting to use it. Here we are in the, in the tenth round. Yeah, I don't know how much. Oh, it's a shot. Oh, big right hand, big right hand, and the blood reopening the cut. In the nose area of the challenger. Nancy, you know what he well got to do to win a fight. He needs a knockout, and he's going for the knockout. He's not following up. He hit him with that big shot. He didn't follow up right away. But Plant hanging tough. I don't know if Plant can... looks a little winded right now also. And Maybe the... a couple rounds he'll get his second win, but he looks a little winded. He don't have a couple and rounds. And visually, I don't know how much you can tell the, the body, the discoloration of some of the body shots landing on Plant, but he... His upper body, even the back, a redness has come in from some of the shots that have landed as the blood drips down his face. The champion is going to have to take charge of this, and he's doing it. Little by little, but he's got to let his hands go more. He's got to pick up the pace, man. He's got to be a little more of a higher end, uh, desperation mode. He really got to punch. He got to keep punching nonstop and hit him with something that's going to hurt him. You just said, Anthony, he's got to let his hands go, man. Just keep throwing punches from all angles. A minute to go in round 10 under that. Can Plant hang in there? He's ahead in this fight. And, 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 and Jose cannot let Plant tie him up like that. Push him off, push him back, and go to work. How long is the referee going to let this go on before he says, let's fight? We know they're tired. Head-to-head, -head, shoulder to shoulder, going glove to glove. A miss by Jose underneath an uppercut. Ooh, we got hit with him. Man, he was just a good uppercut right there himself. A Ooh. body shot, left side of the body delivered by Jose Uscatagui. And Caleb is still there. Like, he's pushing the fight to, to Jose. He's, he's, he's coming forward, he's pushing the fight, he's hitting him with more punches. His endurance paying off, his training. We have two rounds to go. The challenger puts the glove around the champ. Caleb Plant, last couple of rounds. Jose Uscatagui 
the aggressor. Last two rounds we're going to unofficially give to the champion. That's the right hand right there. Plant with an answer here. A direct shot with that left. I mean, and look, he landed the right hand that he wanted to. Smother, smother him, okay? When you smother him right there, okay, hit you, you in You can space. lose these last two rounds, no, man. Okay? So he's controlling this. Okay, controlling this. So it's got to get. You ain't control. You ain't control. As the champ looks on, you heard from the corner of the challenger. Now, his trainer said he's a harsh critic with his fighter. And in 85 rounds, if Caleb Plant is a professional, he said he, he's won 83 of them. He's a critic, and he's won more rounds tonight, unofficially, as we start round 11. Ooh. These are the championship rounds, and Jose is the champion. He's won the last two unofficially and wants more. Does he have a knockout in him to secure his title and keep it? I, I think, you know, look, he was hitting him with some hard shots there. But like you just said, he's got to pick up that pace and throw a lot more of them. He's, he's too relaxed at this point. There's no urgency. I got to see urgency in him. I see a little more urgency than he had the previous rounds for sure. He's he's stalking him more. He's throwing a little bit more punches, and he's going after him. But Anthony, he's not letting Caleb walk him down. Anthony, he may have run out of time unless he gets that knockout that you both said he needs. But that that's the thing with a puncher. You, you got a puncher's chance in every round, even the last round, the last second, you got a puncher's chance. The boxer, the puncher, and the boxer, Caleb Plant, the advantage inside of two minutes. He's taking good body shots. A lot of work he should do earlier. That was a good move by Plant to get off the ropes, and now he turns the tables on Jose. Leaning in, both fighters have exhausted their energy and now are slowing down, it's nearing the minute and half mark in round 11. It's starting to get a little sloppy right now. Yeah, a the slow dance. Got to get in there sooner. Yeah, got yeah. To get in there sooner. yeah. And you know, Plant will take this all day for the next yes. five minutes. Yes. And take that title. Oh, a couple of short jabs from the left, and Jose Uscarigui. Yeah, these are the championship rounds, and both of the fighters are showing champion mentality right now. A big miss, so kind of a lazy yeah, left. His, his punches are dragging. Yeah, yeah. Are dragging. there's not much behind that, and he's not connecting. And he needs to if he wants to keep the belt. Like we've been saying, Ray, he looks he looks sluggish from the first time he came out. Yes, and Anthony, you're right. You know, and he weighed in two pounds underweight. Why not go 168 right on the nose? He was two pounds underneath, which showed me either he's a little overtrained. Or, or, or de dehydrated. Wearing down. Both fighters, Caleb Plant, the challenger, with his undefeated 17-0 record. 28 wins for the champion, who has lived by the knockout, and he needs it here. 28-2, 23 knockouts for Jose Uscadegui who is wearing down with one round to go. We're going to round 12. The IBF World Super Middleweight title. Will Jose Uscadegui keep it? Or will the challenger, Caleb Plant, take it this away? The last round. You got to come out with everything in this round. With everything, everything. You got to come out with everything in this round. Don't let him hold you. I know he holds you, but you can't let him do that. He's been holding me. Come with everything. This round, you come with everything. You want to be world champion? You want to be world champion? You give me one more good round. Smart round. Don't give him. Be smart. Play it smart, Caleb. Play it smart, Caleb. You're going to be fucking IBF champion after one more round. From Caleb Platt's corner, one more good round. You want to be world champion. Definitely. Caleb really got to keep doing what he been doing to, to be the world champion. He need one round in the bank. If you get that one round, he could be world champion. And meanwhile, the champ from his corner, 
you, you, you give me everything this round or it's over. Yeah, but you know, but everybody should have been, you know, from the beginning, they should have been pumping him up earlier. Tell him that, man. He was, like like Anthony said, he's been sluggish from the jump. So now he's start, starting to pour it on, but it's too too little too late. Get the plants get to control. Ray Mancini, Anthony Durrell. I'm Chris Myers, and the champ needing a knockout or the title will slip from his hands. He's been knocked out twice in this fight. And our unofficial scorecard, the last three, the champ has come around, but still needing a knockout, as you heard from his corner. And he said, don't let him hold you. Don't let him hold you. What should he do? Shove him, break out well, of it? That, that's what he's trying to do. I mean, he's trying to stall time by clutching and grabbing. He feels he's so far ahead. He feels he's want to fight one. But you want to close the show. In the judge's eye, you want them to see that you're, you're going to close the show. Definitely, because it, it's always up to the judges, especially if they go to the decision, and you don't know what they're thinking. Yeah, you don't want the judges being left with the final few rounds that went to the champ and forget all the work that you did earlier. Caleb Plant did a lot of work early. Come on. <laughs> you heard from the referee. Hey, watch the backhand. No, back, no back. Yeah, that, that was and, yeah. Uh, unintended, of yeah, course. And the look from Caleb Plant, who has been excellent defensively throughout this fight along with being the aggressor, at least in the early rounds, the aggressor. No, nah, look, Caden Plant's going to get his dream. If he can let, hold out for another minute and 20 seconds, he's going to get his dream. You know, and, and, you know, hearing, kept saying, I'm going to listen for, you know, and the new. Last time I'm going to warn you, Caden, no clinching. That, the last time, if he can last a minute 10. That, that, that belt above his bed to come true. The visualization, he put it there, the memory of his daughter that helped him in his training and his hard work, the loss of his daughter, his life. Saying that boxing is his life, it's everything. He has no plan B. And said he was a, a better fighter now than six months ago when the hand injury kept him from this bout against the champ. It may have worked out just right for Caleb Plant. Is there a knockout left in Jose Uskadagi? Inside 30 seconds. The he got 20 seconds to become the world champion, what he dreamed of. And Jose got 20 seconds to knock him out. And the crowd hollering for Jose to throw that one punch. And arms in the air as if he already has it. Caleb Plant, the challenger in position to take away the IBF World Super Middleweight title. 12 full rounds. He's standing on the ropes, was never really in the ropes. Caleb Plant trying to stay undefeated and in his first chance as a title challenger, he wants the title. Does he have it? He dominated early. You're watching Premier Boxing Champions live on FM. Extraordinary action tonight in the ring live here in Los Angeles. And there is the champ, Caleb Plant, the challenger, talking to him. Caleb with the cap on. And after dominating early, let's see how the judges scored it and go to our ring announcer, Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we go to the scorecards. Judges Max DeLuca and Zachary Young see the contest. 116, 110. And Dr. Lou Moret scores the bout 115, 111. For your winner by unanimous decision. And the new IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Caleb Sweethands Plants. Caleb. There's a pretty red belt that you get to hold on to. You told us when you heard and the new, it was going to be overwhelming. Explain what you're feeling right now. Man, I've worked my whole entire life for this. 17 years straight. I buried my daughter in the process of trying to get this belt. I promised her that I'd become a world champion and that I'd bring her this title. And that's exactly what I'm going to go back to Tennessee and do. Nashville, stand up! This all right, Chris, we got to send it back over to you. Congratulations, right. Caleb. Thank you very much, Heidi. Today's the day. Order my fight against David. We'll be there on Showtime pay per view right now.
inside the ring, we take a look at our opening matchup with Ricky Edwards as he takes on Jesus Ramos. And let's take a look at our tale of the tape. Ray and Dominic break down the numbers. Well, <laughs> we met yesterday with Jesus Ramos. I love the kid. He turned pro at 18, much like myself. He's a young kid on the climb. He's been fighting regularly. Uh, I liked everything I heard about him. You know, Ricky Edwards, though, boom. Ricky Edwards is a good-looking fighter, good pro experience. The he's going to be hitting. Up, the one thing that stands out for me for Ramos is, is the KOs. He's, he's got ten wins under his belt, nine by way of KO. That's very, 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 very impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Rebel Bank Arena here in Bakersfield, California. Live on FS1, this is PBC of Fight Night. Brought to you by TGB Promotions and sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. Also, tonight's program is available to our United States military personnel via the Armed Forces Network. We begin the evening eight rounds in the Super Lightweight Division. Your three judges scoring this bout at ringside will be Abe Bellardo, Dr. Lou Moret, and Ralph McKnight. And the referee in charge when the bell sounds is Jack Reese. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He comes in wearing the olive trunks, weighing officially at 142 and one half pounds. His record, 12 wins, three losses. Three of those coming by way of a knockout. Joining us from Patterson, New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Ricky Superstar Rick Edwards. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the white trim with the gold, weighing it officially at 142 and one half pounds. His record is a perfect one. 10 wins, nine of those coming inside the distance. Joining us from Casa Grande, Arizona. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jesus Elamono Ramos Jr. And let's take a look at the rules here in California. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell except for the final round. Also, if you would like to hear the broadcast in Spanish, click over to the simulcast on Fox Deportes. Our opening matchup here on FS1, Ray Flores, the Hall of Famer Ray Boom Boom Mancini, and Dominic Trouble Brazil, the heavyweight contender Marcos Viegas as well. There is the rising Jesus Ramos, just 18 years of age. There is a belief that Ramos can be a superstar in boxing. Ricky Edwards, the veteran, wants to get back and show the world that he is a force to be reckoned with here at 140. Well, one thing I noticed by yesterday, Ramos, being, he's very wise for his 18 years of age. He knows what he wants, very determined. You know, I, le I loved what I heard about everything he said. You know, his father, he works with his father. Uh, his fi you know, in, He's the nephew center. of Abel Ramos, an outstanding right. welterweight. Right. And, you know, the kid's just a nice, nice kid. And, but he, he seems to have his head on and knows where he wants to be. Well, Ramos is a southpaw. Hard hitter, a 90% knockout percentage. A nine-fight knockout streak consisted of only first and second round knockouts. Four finishes in the first round, five in the second. They told us that he's been fighting. He's been a pro for 15 months, and the majority of his early fights came down in Mexico because you cannot be a professional in the United States if you are not 18 years of age. There's a big shot. Ramos chasing down Edwards. You know, for being a pro for only 15 months, uh, Ramos is showing some great expertise. He's, he's cutting off the ring very, very well. He's calm, cool, and collective. And the yeah. one thing that I did remember in the, in the fighter meetings to say, his confidence is through the roof. Yeah, and I was just going to say that what you said, his composure. 
He has lost his composure. Ricky Edwards is a little awkward at this point, uh, but he's you know he's keeping his composure and he's just sticking to the fight plan. He's digging to the body. Now right here, this was his youth. You don't let a guy back you straight up, but a guy starts back, you gotta turn him. You gotta turn him. And it almost with a straight left. Yeah. Edwards but looking to stay away from the big power of Ramos. And, and, and see right there, referee ain't there, you don't lift your hands up, man, because that's how you get sucker punched. Keep your hands in tight till the referee gets over there. For Ricky Edwards, he's lost three of his last four fights. This is his second fight here in 2019. Came out short against undefeated prospect Mike Kwan Williams back on May 17th. Ray, correct me if I'm wrong, though. Ramos is doing a great job of walking his opponent down. Yeah, As exactly. a southpaw, he's got position this whole time. He's keeping that right foot on the outside. I was just going to say, Dom, Edwards you just left. said it. He's doing what he's supposed to. He's keeping that right foot out, and he's digging his th throwing a straight left, and he's sliding to the right. Out of the way of any, any return punches, out of the way of any counters. Mm -hmm. That's a good veteran move right there. Well, Ramos has proclaimed his wishes. He wants to be a world champion at 20 or no later than 21. He feels like superstardom is in his imminent future. He actually fought on the undercard of Pacquiao and Thurman. We saw him on Fox. And that's the end. Welcome back here to Bakersfield, California. We are at the Rabobank Bank Arena. Ray Flores, the Hall of Fame, Marie Mancini, Dominic Brazil, Ricky Edwards, who is looking to try to go ahead and derail the what they feel is the superstardom of Ramos. But so far, gentlemen, what did you see in the first? Uh, uh, look, I saw a very composed 18-year-old uh, Jesus Ramos sticking to the game plan, and he's just very composed in there. And I like uh, what I see. I, I like what I see as well. Ramos did a great job of controlling that round. Um, he did, he did a, a great share of, of throwing some body punches as well as just keeping his foot on the outside and setting him up for the next, the next shot. Well, for Ricky Edwards, two of his three losses have come against undefeated opponents. Ramos is the second straight undefeated opponent that Edwards has stepped inside the ring with. He's fought four total undefeated fighters. During that time period, he's gone two and two. Well, you know, you can see, look, he's a, he's a wily, you know, he's a guy who's been in there, he's had enough fights now, he's 29 years old, he's got a lot of good veteran moves, but he may not, I don't know if he knows how his experience to fight southpaws, because he's doing a lot, making a lot of mistakes against a southpaw first, and especially Jesus Ramos. Oh! Ramos, big punch that connected him. Ramos, his first eight fights took place in Tijuana because, as we pointed out, he turned pro at the age of 17. He said he didn't want to go to the Olympics because there's no headgear, and he did not want to take unnecessary punishment. No, right. If you're gonna if you're gonna go without the headgear, well, we didn't have it when I was fighting amateurs. So, but if you're going to fight without headgear, you might as well get paid for it. I agree. That was a smart decision by Ramos. So, uh, if you're gonna you're gonna take the headgear off, you're gonna compete at a high level. You might as well do it as a pro. This will be Ramos' sixth fight in the last year, his fourth in 2019. And he continues to try to press the action on Edwards and a takedown. But Edwards picks him off. Jack Reese, a gentleman, is Ricky Edwards. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. He There's could have easily let him tumble to the canvas, but he was there to impede that. But, but again, the one thing I was watching Ramos, what I like is the position of his right foot. He slides it outside, dips his body to the right, and shoots a straight left hand. Another, another thing that Ramos is doing very, very well is, is establishing that jab and fainting off of it. He faints yeah. before it. He faints after it. Um, I, I think he's setting up a, a big, big left, left back hand. And Dom, he digs that left hand to the body real good. Well, he's starting there, there to really is. target yeah. that body is Ramos. Ramos is unloading, and Ramos is heavy-handed. You can hear the thought here ringside when Ramos connects. Yeah, you know, you could see throwing straight shots, attacking the body like, like you're supposed to. Man, no, I'm very, I'm very impressed by see it. Ramos is outlanding Edwards almost two to one. There's Edwards with the right hand. Ramos complaining Ooh. it was a rapid punch. Ooh. 
As we near the end, that's the end of the second. Welcome back to PBC Fight Night here on FS1. Ricky Edwards has been featured in Grundy Gentleman Fashion Magazine for New York Fashion Week. He's got some style, does Ricky Edwards. A yeah, good-looking kid. I mean, why not? If you can make money outside of getting smacked around, that's not bad. Well, right now, though, he is hoping to smack around his <laughs> opponent tonight and Jesus Ramos. But so far, it has been Ramos who's been doing the majority of the smacking around and who's been having the edge. As you see, the land punches landed 47 compared to that of 24. The percentage of 37% compared to that of 25 for Edwards. Well, what I'm seeing to him right now, Ramos, he got to pick up the pace. He, they're too much posing in front of each other. You know, dumb to put, you know too much hurt looking at each other. Try, just, just start throwing punches, man. Yeah. Start walking a guy down. They're, they're, they're both looking for something rather than making something happen. They're, they're sticking a jab out, throwing a feint, full position, things like that. Um, the one thing I'm not liking out of Edwards right now, he's not making the adjustment with his feet. He's right inside of the pocket for, for Ramos. Ramos could throw anything he wants at this point, and he's going to hit. Edwards because he's just there. Yeah. A right hook that connected by Ramos caught the attention of Ricky Edwards as we're into the third. You know, I just got a text from a friend of mine from Youngstown. Hi, man. Oh, there's a shot. Oh, Looks there like go. Edwards might have been off balance. Oh, there go. And Ramos is attacking Patterson. Yeah, showed good control. Good control. Friend of mine from Youngstown, Hi, G, with a bunch of guys watching the fight at the speakeasy saying they love what they see from, uh, uh, from Jesus Ramos. They love what they see. Well, Ramos is attacking Ricky Edwards. Edwards is looking to go ahead and have that guard. Sees it. That defense, that Philly shell. Yeah, yeah, there it but is. he eats a straight left and complaining about a shot below the belt. I mean, what's part of, again, Dom, you know, it's part of the game, man. You wait till the referee to jump in there. Yeah, you 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 gotta you gotta you gotta be in defensive offensive mood at, at all times. Yeah. Let the referee do his job. Uh, it, was, it was bored. I mean, it was on the belt. It was low, but it was on the belt. Come on, man. Just over the halfway mark of round three. His Ramos is getting a lot of fans. A lot of fans running to Rush in Youngstown. Well, Jesus Ramos. He said when he fought on television back in July, he had butterflies when it came to the TV exposure, but he seems to have calmed down. There's a big thudding straight left, but oh. back comes Ricky Edwards. Ricky Edwards now sitting down in his punches more. Ricky Edwards has found a home for that, that, that big loop in right hand. He's landed it a couple times now. But, you know, he's got, he's got to watch your own encounter with the right hook. He's got to watch your own encounter with that right hook. Jesus Ramos sitting down on his punches. Yeah, he keeps his hands up nice and tight. You know, he's he caught a few shots, but I like to see. Oh, there it is, yeah. And like he slides. I love the fact he slides to his, I'm gonna say it again, to his right, he hooks that left hand. A right hook upstairs. Edwards shakes his head as oh! they say no. There's a straight oh! left, down goes Edwards. Oh! On a 30 straight left, oh, and this my! one is over. Candidate for knockout of the year, Jesus Ramos has wiped out Ricky Edwards. What a punch by Jesus Ramos. Dynamite in that straight left, and he landed and out win Edwards. What? Up a punch, and Edwards rises to his feet, obviously disappointed, but what a punch. Oh my goodness. Jesus Ramos with a highlight reel knockout as he finishes off Ricky Edwards. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> right and out win Edwards. We'll come back to get the official particulars. We'll take a look at it again. And as Elvis Presley said, they got me all shook up. Uh -huh. <laughs> and down he goes. Look at his foot. Oh look at his foot. my. He stepped foot over. Position. Look at that. This kid has got a bright future. He's got great height. He's got youth, everything, especially for that super lightweight division. This kid is a future star. If he could stay in this division for a while, I don't see why he wouldn't be a world champion next with the next two years. Let's take a look at the punch stats, Dominic. Very impressive. At 18 years old, with the confidence he has, listen, 
to throw 195 punches and land 71 of them, those 71 punches were big time. But the, the, the punching power that he brought behind these 61 punches, it, it, it's something that, that showed and, and paid dividends here at the end of this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 40 seconds of the third round for your winner by knockout, Jesus Mono Ramos. Jesus Ramos, if you could buy stock in a fighter, put it behind that young man. Just 18 years of age, he has the look, he has the style, and he has the power in his hands. The hostility between these two guys is real. Tonight. My objective is putting a beating on Caleb Plant. Knockout artist and two-time title holder David Benavidez takes on the smooth technician and former champ Caleb Plant. I need to teach him a life lesson. And no one's backing down. I'm gonna beat the living out of you. You're not gonna do nothing. David Benavidez versus Caleb Plant, tonight, live on pay-per-view. First, the tail of the tape, Spencer. At 5'9", Gambardella at 5'10", both with a 71-inch reach. Spencer turned pro uh, two years ago. Gambardella three years ago. A 10-year uh, age differential. Spencer uh, just 19 years of age. Gambardella, the Massachusetts native, turned pro at the age of 26. Now to the ring for the introductions, Jimmy Lennon Jr. and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen a very good evening to you and we welcome you to Staples Center in Los Angeles California as premier boxing champions presents a prelude to our big night of action it's Fox Sports PBC pay-per-view preliminaries and it's all brought to you by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing in a promotion of Man Down Promotions, Sean Porter Promotions, and TGB Promotions. Judges at ringside for this bout, we have Tim Cheatham, Eddie Hernandez Sr., and Dr. Lou Moret. All right, fans, here we go. Four rounds of boxing scheduled super welterweights in the ring. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black chunks with red trim, hailing from Revere, Massachusetts, and training in Ventura, California. He weighed in at 155 pounds, undefeated in his career, with a record of five wins, no losses, two draws, with two wins coming by way of knockout, Please welcome the undefeated Travis Gambi Gambardella. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner in this four round attraction, wearing red trunks, gold and black trim. Joining us from Linden, Michigan. He weighed in at 155 and three quarter pounds. He also is undefeated in his campaign with a record of eight wins, no losses. Six of his wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the undefeated young protege of boxing, introducing Joey Spencer. And a third man to the ring, the referee in charge of the action, introducing Ray Corona. Right here is good, it's gonna be right on the belt because these are a little high. Right here on the belt, if you wanna to touch gloves, do it now. God bless. Mark, Eddie. Nineteen-year-old Joey Spencer, fighting out of Linden, Michigan. With a record of 8-0, six of his wins coming via knockout. And Travis Gambardella out of Revere, Wait Massachusetts, scheduled for four rounds Let's go. in the super welterweight division. Spencer's last two fights have gone the distance, six round bouts after he knocked out his first six opponents all within the first two rounds. For Gambardella, this is his first fight in 2019. He has not fought in nearly a year. 
I think we're going to see a little bit of a uh, difference with Joey Spencer. And I think he learned a lot from Akeem Black. He's only got four rounds to work with this fight, not six like normal. I think he's going to look for a knockout tonight. He hasn't had one in the past couple fights. He looks in great shape. He looks really focused. He's got good head movement. He looks a lot better than he did, much more concentrated than he did in the last fight. That's Ooh. true. That's true. You know, that's a, as a, what I noticed so far. He needs to move his head a little bit more instead of keeping it in that one place. He's throwing that jab, but he's got he's to watch out for defense. Defense is he's got to move that head. Well, we talked about that in the fighter meetings, and it looks like he's doing that right now. But, but he looks quicker tonight. He looks more focused tonight, and I think he talked about that because he may have taken a keen black good right hand by Spencer a little lightly in that last fight. And Spencer told us he was looking to get off to a, a quick start uh, tonight because this fight is only scheduled for four rounds. He was the 2018 PBC Prospect of the Year. This only his ninth pro bout. Gambardella's last fight at TD Garden in Boston, close to his hometown of Revere, Massachusetts. That was a lifelong dream and now of fighting tonight here at Staples Center in Los Angeles. Now, Gambardella, Gambardella oh, right sorry, now sorry. is, is uh, not really doing anything. He's, no. You know, he's focused on defense, and I don't know if it's ring rust or what, but he needs to get it going. It's he's only, only got four rounds. It's exactly right, Lennox. I was just about to mention that. He seems like he's kind of frozen stop, stop, right stop, now stop. by uh, jo uh, Joey Spencer. Gambardella, as, as you can see, has landed only one punch so far over the first two minutes here in round one. Oh, he's rocked. He's, he's definitely rocked. Him Down gone. goes Gambardella. And Joey actually did a good good thing right there. He hit to the Six, body, then to the head, and seven, he, you know, he finished the job. Eight, That's what he's supposed to do. Nine, ten, all right. Come here, come here. You want to continue? Hands up, hands up. All right. Oh, Gambardella goes down once again. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You want to continue one more? I'm gonna do it. Hands up, hands up. Gambardella knocked down yes, twice by ball. Joey Spencer here in round one, which comes to an end. Back at Staples Center in Los Angeles, round two scheduled for four. Travis Gambardella knocked down twice in the first round by Joey Spencer. Yeah, and, and like I said, and Lennox agrees, Joey Spencer is really on point tonight. Great left hook to the body, and that's this may end the fight right here. This is oh, down yeah. goes Gambardella for a third time. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You want to continue? One more time and I'll get over it. One more time I'll call you a fight, all right? Now. One more time. Let's go, to him. Yeah, I was going to say, Gambardilla, he's just really, he's like his feet are in quicksand right now. He's not even moving his feet when he's jabbing. Well, it's a fait accompli right now. The referee says you go down again, which he's going to go down again. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be this round. The fight's going to be over. Well, he's another great body He's shot already right showed right his weakness to the body, so I know Joey Spencer's going to go to the body and then to the head. This is what he's supposed to do, but... Right now, Travis is not doing nothing. Oh. He's just an open target. Now we heard he from uh, the referee, Ray Caroni. He said one more time, that's it. Gambardella up against the ropes. That's a great liver shot. Boy, is Spencer shot. continuing the barrage. Spencer is on tonight. And Gambardella's trying to fight back. you got to give him credit. He's been down four times, but he's still fighting back here. I don't think he's going to make the round, though. He's got a minute 29 left. Punch has landed 36 to 3 in favor of Spencer. And Spencer knows this is only a four round fight, so he can let it all out right now. He doesn't have to hold back, even right here. So he should be following with the right hand after that liver shot. And that would probably end this game right now. Yeah, Gambardella doesn't want any more of this. He's, he's really in a survival mode right now. And the referee is standing close, so he's ready to stop it at any moment. He's got a minute left to uh, close the show here, uh, and this is the second round. Now he's got two more rounds to work with if uh, Gambardella actually survives this round. I don't like the fact that Spencer slowed down here. There's no well, reason for him to slow down. He should just be going for the knockout right now. I agree with that, but part of the reason is he said he wanted to put oh. some rounds in, and he does have time. 
So he wants to do it in a, in a, in a fine fashion. Dangerous to put rounds in when you don't have to. You well, know, anything not, can happen. A headbutt, an elbow, anything. You take the guy out when you can. This guy's a sitting duck right now, and he should do it. Right. But the guy hasn't thrown any punches at him. Well, yeah, but he's coming in right now. Like I said, anything can happen. A headbutt, elbow, anything. So a lucky punch. Down to 15 seconds remaining in round two. Gambardella has already gone down three times, twice in the first round, and once here in round two. Oh, boy, he's really absorbing these punches right now and staying on his feet, which is surprising. Scheduled for four. Two rounds of the Bucks. All Joey Spencer. A look at Travis Gambardella, who has gone down three times over the first two rounds. Okay. He has a degree in applied physics from okay. UMass Boston, and he's heading back to his job Monday morning. Works for the water department in engineering in his hometown of Revere, Massachusetts. Took a leave of absence to train for this fight. Held a six-week camp in Ventura, California. And he looks to hang in there against Joey Spencer, who has knocked down Gambardella three times to this point. Over the first two rounds, Gambardella has landed only four punches to Spencer's 45. Gambardella's coming out with the jab, and that looks good. The first round, he's actually looking like a boxer. And I think those first couple rounds, you know, he's absorbed a couple of Joey's punches, and he's used to his power now, so he's continuing with his fighting. Well, he's actually listening to his corner. His corner told him to start dipping, slipping, and moving the head a little bit more. But I, I think eventually Spencer in this round is going to start catching him again. And if it gets a little too dicey, the referee's going to stop it, or the corner's going to stop it, or the doctor. So, you know, if, if Gambardella doesn't do something worthwhile here, they're going to stop this fight if he keeps taking this type of punishment. Like that, yeah. right there. It's over. Ray Corona steps in between Spencer and Gambardella. Spencer remains unbeaten as he stops Gambardella here in round three. Well, Joey Spencer told us he wanted to get off to a quick start. And he certainly did here at Staples Center in Los Angeles, knocking down Travis Gambardella twice in round one, again in round two. And he ends it early in round three. His trainer, Father Jason, former amateur boxer himself. So 19-year-old Joey Spencer, victorious, raising his record to 9-0, 7 by KO. Bounce stopped early in round three here in Los Angeles. As Spencer remains unbeaten in nine professional bouts. First loss of Gambardella's career. Well, here, here we go. We started off with that big left hook from Spencer right there. And of course, that liver shot he dropped him with right there. It was a beautiful setup. And here's the second knockdown. Basically doing the same thing, softening him up in the body, and he went down. Yeah, now here we're going into the second round here, Lennox, and it's all over again. It was that left hook to the head, back to the liver twice. So, I mean, he's put it down with the right uppercut in the second knockdown, the third knockdown, it was another left hook to the liver. And here's the ending right here. One shot from uh, Spencer, and the referee stopped it. Time for the decision. To the ring we go, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 53 seconds in round number three. Our referee in charge, Ray Corona, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of knockout and still undefeated, Joey Spencer. Hey, boxing fans. It's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for El Bandera Roja to reign or for Sweet Hands to snag the W, you can bank on action with DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers can bet $5 to win $150 in bonus bets if your fighter wins on a pre-match Moneyline bet. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet $5 to win $150 in bonus bets if your fighter wins. Action's so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? That's Chris Culbert's. 
10 and 0 with three knockouts. The 22, 22 year old coming in to the ring in style, in a kind of a gladiator form. Good thing he's not fighting in that outfit. Could be trouble as he gets ready to take on Mario Briones. Colbert is coming off an eight round unanimous decision over Josh Hernandez. Meanwhile, Briones has been knocked out in three of his last four fights. Colbert, the youth advantage, also a slight reach advantage. And here's Ray Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. 10 rounds in the super featherweight division. It's all sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. Your three judges scoring this contest will be John Mariano, Tim Taggart, and Ruby Webster. The referee in charge of Bell Sounds is Celestino Ruiz. Introducing first, fighting to my left out of the red corner. He comes in wearing the gray and the black, weighing officially at 132 pounds. His record, 29 wins, eight losses, two draws, 21 wins coming by way of knockouts. Fighting out of all loss, Calientes, Mexico. Vamos y caballeros, aquí está. Here is Mario Maca. Opponent fighting out of the blue court. He comes in wearing the red trunks and the gold, weighing officially at already 132 pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated. Ten wins, three of those coming by way of knockouts. Fighting out of Brooklyn, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the fast rising, the golden child, Prince Behind. Okay, we're good here. We're good here. I gave you guys your instruction in the adjustment room. It takes stuff at all times. Good luck. Colbert admitted he doesn't know very much about his opponent. Uh, saying it'll take a, a round, maybe two, to figure him out, then I'll be good. He has never been one to research his opponent because he said, he says, Jamal, that nobody ever fights the same way twice. You agree with that? I agree with that. You know, um, but young fighters, research your opponent. You're don't better go into anything that you know you don't really know about. His goal to have a title by 2020. I like him. I like how flashy he is. He's got style. <laughs> Definitely. He's got an impressive record. He's got uh, like a leather case over his boxing shorts. Colbert in the red. Mario Briones. The first thing you notice is he's, he has speed. Is it all flash and no substance? That's what we need to find out. This is his second fight here at the Armory. Last uh, April, he dyed his hair lime green. Stopped a previously undefeated fighter. Didn't come out for the eighth round. Colbert had a knockdown in the sixth of Austin Dulac. That's a nice jab. Getting started right now. Got an interesting stance, pose for Colbert. It doesn't look like he's really still in the model. Right? It's going to take that long start. Yeah. A round or two. Like he's, got he's not waiting. He's, he's, got a, he's got a plan from the start. The 33 year old Briones, who, as I was mentioning, with 21 knockouts, many of those came early in fights. And maybe early in his career. As you see right there, they stepped on each other's feet, like the clash of you know, softball versus the Orthodox. Yep. Chris, do you remember the great Pernell Sweet Pea? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah Sweet Pea. Well, you know what? Just start wise. Yeah, quick, yeah. Quick, quick, yeah. Quick, 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 quick glance. Like you can could see the resemblance. He was sitting in front of you with his hands down. Couldn't hit him, you know. He had a little power. Yeah, he was. 
There's a little bit of a <laughs> look at that. That pose. He would, he, almost Derek. Yeah, he would do that. He, 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 like you just said, he would dare guys come and try to hit him, you know? He's got a little bit of that swagger to him. See if he could fight. No, I don't know if he could ever fight like Pete. If Pete was wanting something special, you know? I mean, how aggressive is Briones going to be? Because we haven't seen anything yet. That was almost even like a fake. A little fake. A little jab there may have connected. Maybe Briones is the one that's going to take a round or two to prove him out. Hopefully he comes out the next round with a little bit more steam. Chris Colbert has been called B-Hop, little B-Hop, similar to the style of Bernard Hopkins. And they met at a press conference years ago. He says Hopkins is taking me under his wing with advice on the ins and outs of boxing. Playing some defense there against Brionis. Opening round scheduled for 10. Chris Colbert. He was supposed to have some hair dyed like he did before. Uh, Jordan Hardy has more on that. Thanks, Chris. So, yeah, like Chris mentioned, Chris Colbert, he, when he fights, he likes to have his hair dyed certain colors in dedication of something. Well, this fight, his hair is supposed to be red in support of people with sickle cell, hence the red trunks, and the three names on the back of him, actually, uh, Trey, Mike, and Bam. But the color didn't turn out right. He said it was light red, almost orange. So he bleached it and tried to re-dye it, but it started breaking off. His hair was falling out. So he had to shave his head, hence the short haircut. He's coming out right now. And uh, he's coming out, landing some punches here. Thank you, Jordan. That, and that's those are some sharp crisp punches. Yeah. Just oh. like a Pete Whitaker could have done. Briones kind of encouraging him, and now coming in. Briones wants to fight. He wants to get hit. That's Colbert moving off the ropes. He's going straight in, no head movement right now. And, and you can tell that Chris is, is skillful, right? I like, I, I really like how, how he's just pushing a heavy shot. Yeah, that left landed. That's a grab by Briones, and he kind of rides him into the ropes. Colbert comes out of that. It's almost as if Colbert is just toying with Briones. Confident that this is his fight. Briones is up. Referee Celestino Ruiz says you can continue. Go right back to the same shot. Yeah. And Colbert's trying to end it. He's got to oh, the left landed. He's got to back a whole He's lot. smiling here. Colbert. He's enjoying it. He's having fun. This is all about. If you're Colbert. I mean, if you're Colbert. <laughs> right. Oh, Briones doesn't know where he is. He's still hurt. I mean, he's, he's, he's in a daze. Yeah. That's, 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 that's it. That's it. Oh. That was quick and easy. Colbert to stay undefeated. No matter what the hairstyle is or how he enters the ring, he leaves the ring a winner. And hardly tested. He, he barely got punched. I mean, he, he went straight to work. I thought he had to figure him out. He did. He figured it right out. Moves over to 11 and 0. Four knockouts now. He's on the rise. Yeah, Chris Colbert, I guess what he said, he didn't have to worry about researching his opponent. Because he finished him off in such a hurry. A second round knocked down, and then despite Briones getting up, he couldn't take the beating from Chris Colbert. Colbert smiling in a quick victory. And stopped in Minneapolis. Colbert over Briones. The last KO uh, came at the armory. He came in with four, three career knockouts and adding to that. It wasn't much of a fight. Briones barely surviving. Let's head to the ring and get the official word from our ring announcer, Ray Flores.
Ladies and gentlemen, referee in charge, Celestino Ruiz, waves off the contest. One minute, 59 seconds of the second round for your winner by TKO victory. And still undefeated, the golden child, Chris Behar-Colbert. You do not want to miss my fight against Caleb Plant. Tune into my fight against David Benavidez on March 25th. Buy it now on Showtime Pay Per Boxing Champions now presents six rounds in the Super Featherweight Division. Brought to you by TGB Promotions, Man Down Promotions, and Sean Porter Promotions. Brought by, sponsored by MGM Resorts and a Brooklyn Boxing. Introducing first in the red corner, wearing the black and green trunks. He weighed in at 129.2 pounds. With seven fights on his record from Dallas, Texas, presenting Charles the Cobra Clark. And his opponent across the ring in the blue corner, wearing the black, gold, and green trunks. He weighed in at 129.2 pounds. His record is unblemished. Four victories, including a one by knockout. Hailing from Los Mochis, Mexico, presenting Jose El Rayo Valenzuela. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a four-round fight, a four-round bout.
Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes in round number one at one minute and six seconds for your winner by knockout and still undefeated, Jose El Rayo Valenzuela. Don't wait to order my fight against Caleb Plan on Showtime pay-per-view. As we look at this tail of the tape, the reach advantage for Crowley could be significant because Abdukaharov really wants to fight at range in this fight. That reach advantage might help a Crowley. Rules for this fight, same as the first fight. Without further ado, once again, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, fans, from Dignity Health Sports Park here in Carson, California, we continue our action in the welterweight division. Introducing our three judges scoring from ringside, from Mexico, Alejandro Rochin. From California, Pat Russell. And also from California, Fernando Villarreal. Introducing our referee in charge of the action. He'll be giving instructions after the introductions. Jerry Cantu. All right, fans, here we go. The co-main event of the evening scheduled 10 rounds of boxing, a battle of undefeated welterweights in the ring. Introducing to you first, on my right, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing white trunks with gold trim, he is fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Peterborough, Ontario, Canada. He weighed in at a ready 145 and one half pounds. With a record of 19 wins, no losses, he has nine wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated Southpaw contender, introducing Cody, the Crippler Crowley. And his opponent across the ring, finding out of the blue corner, wearing dark blue trunks with gold trim, Haley from Tashkent, Uzbekistan. He weighed in at 146 and one quarter pounds. He also is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 18 wins, no losses, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the IBF number one ranked welterweight world contender introducing the undefeated Kudratilo Abdukahora. Let's go. Once again, a referee in charge now to give instructions, Jerry Cantu. Chief seconds. Not peace. Not peace. I'm sorry. Gentlemen, you were giving your instructions in the dressing room. I want a good, clean, hard fight. You will obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. Good luck to both of you. Jerry Cantu in his 19th year as a referee, officiating his 488th professional Corner. bout. Corner. Two. Corner. Corner. Are you ready? Are you ready? Come here, gentlemen. Bell round one and the Canadian Crowley. What an inspiring story, Al. Relocate, moving to Las Vegas, bought a one-way ticket when he was 18 yes. to Vegas, set out to be a pro fighter, returned home after utterly failing, regrouped, went back and waited two weeks to spar with Floyd Mayweather, went 38 minutes yes. with him, and here he is! <laughs> yeah, this was Mayweather Jim famed for its long and grueling sparring sessions, and you know, Watch he had a 10-year plan, he said, I'm going to be a champion in 10 years, uh, he's headed, he hopes he's headed towards that you know in his last fight against Josh Torres who came in with a seven fight win streak Crowley averaged 82 punches a round and in the fifth round he landed 52 so he he is a guy who likes to work and work a lot and they're both throwing punches here early Abner he sparred about 150 rounds with Floyd Mayweather preparing him for the Manny Pacquiao and Conor McGregor fights and the commitment the desire the belief the dream is alive for Cody Crowley, and here he faces by far the toughest test oh, yeah. of his career. I mean, if you spar with Floyd Mayweather, you definitely pick up a good thing or two. And if you sparred at that gym, the doghouse, I mean, you must definitely be yeah, proving yourself. And, and Crowley definitely showing something different because he normally is a boxer. He likes to box, use the ring, but now he's being the aggressive puncher because he must have seen something. He said, if I pressure uh, Duke Kaharov, you know, I'm going to give him something different. And he's doing it. He's, he's a good round for Crowley. 
and Abdukharov already switched to lefty a little bit. We will see that during the course of this fight. And Manny Robles, his new trainer, this is his first fight with Manny Robles, he wants him to be a lefty more often. There's a straight left that scored for Crowley. Crowley can get you. If he gets you on the ropes, though, he, he does like the box, but he can pressure you, and he's pressuring Abdukharov really well in this round. Yeah, uh, Abdukharov not working, not doing so well on his back foot. Yeah. He's, he's known to be a pressure fighter, and right now, you know, he doesn't know what to do. Right hand to the body by Abdukharov, <laughs> but there's a left to the body by Crowley. Crowley putting the pressure on Abdukhakhorov here in round number one, looking to seize the moment, seize this opportunity. And great body work from both right there. COVID cost Crowley a nationally televised opportunity. That's Gabriel Maestra earlier. And there's a jab that lands for Abdukhakhorov. We'll take a look what these men need to do in order to win this fight for Abdul Kaharov. Uh, he, he planned on using lateral movement, and he's doing that in this fight. And you do want to give angles to Crowley. Has to stay off the ropes, and Crowley has pushed him there a couple times and landed good body punches. Now, when he's a righty, I think the left hook is a good weapon for him to use in this fight. Now, for Crowley, uh, got to cut off the ring, and he did that pretty well in round one. The body punches, he did go downstairs, especially with that right hook, and when he gets in position, the double right hook is very effective for him to both the body and the head. Both of these undefeated fighters looking to rise to the next level as round number two is underway. And after Kaharov trying to utilize lateral movement, but Crowley continuing to put on the pressure. You know, Crowley threw 43 jabs in that last round, and that punch has helped him get on the inside very well. Yeah, Crowley's got to be careful, too. He's just lunging in, and Abdul Kakarov, he, he's landing great body work as soon as he comes in. And there's a right Oh, hand. wow, he hurt him. Crowley! He hurt him. Yeah. Staggered Abdul Kakarov, who's never been down, and there's the uppercut that jacked the jaw of Abdul Kakarov, and the ropes may have helped him there. Crowley biting down. Abdukharov ranked number one, a mandatory for Errol Spence. Whether he'll ever get there, I don't know, but he's got a lot on the line right now against the underdog Crowley. And Crowley gets clipped with the right, but Crowley is a crazy work ethic. Yeah. He's in the gym every single day. He has, yep. he eats, lives, and breathes <laughs> boxing. And he was born with out. hockey skates on in Canada, of course, but he is looking to oh. make his mark in the boxing ring, and he's looking to make his mark on Abdukharov here in round two. Great exchange in the corner, but uh, Crowley getting the better of most of these exchanges right now. And there, Abdukharov with a right uppercut to the body, continues to work to the body. You know, uh, Crowley has landed the straight left well. I thought the right hook was going to be his big power punch, and it may still be, but the left is landing for him. Great distance, great left hand that he's landing, Crowley. Yeah, Crowley trained by Haseem Rockman's younger brother. Haseem Rockman known for a huge upset against Lennox Lewis, and Crowley looking to upset Abdul Kahara. I've been Carson, yeah, the trainer of Crowley, and they feel like Crowley is just on the brink of doing really good things, and he's done them in this fight so far. And yet, you know, we haven't seen the uh, Duke Kaharov. Oh, my! Abdul Kaharov! Sending Crowley down for the first time in Crowley's career! Six, seven, eight, one, two, one, two. The theater of the unexpected, the ebb and flow of boxing. Safe to 
a strong start in round number two for Crowley. It's Abdukaharov that sends Crowley to the canvas. And Brett, he stopped Crowley and he stopped myself from saying it right on the time. I said Abdukaharov has not shown up tonight and, and he landed that right. So Abdukaharov scores the knockdown in round two. Human eyes, good breath. Huh? Yeah. Okay, listen, listen. I didn't see what he cut. What he cut? What he catch you with? Overhand right. Something you didn't see? Uh, right. Yeah. All right, stay inside, okay? You already hurt him. You already know you can hurt him, but you can't get too hungry, okay? Just stay inside. Give him that. Well, here is where Abdukarov, who was not having a good round, lands this uh, counterpunch. It's a straight left, actually, a half jab, half hook. Uh, and Carson was just, he just was careless. And a second look at this will show the right hand low for, Car for uh, Crowley. Threw a right hook and got off balance, and his hand was down, and Abdukarov took advantage. He did. He surely did. I thought it was a right hand, but he yeah. pointed out, it's there it is, the jab, a power jab right in the chin that took a Crawley down. Round number three, Gudratilo Abdukarov with the knockdown in the second, and Crowley fighting down again, coming forward, but Abdukarov trying to stem the tide and land his own counter strikes. And this fight is kind of coming down to that. Can Abdukarov counter the aggression of Crowley well as he did with that knockdown? Crowley's still doing the right thing by pawing with, or throwing that jab to try and work his way inside. And not only does he work his way inside, he maintains that distance because every time he lets go of that left hand, it's at a good range, right there. He lets it go. Ivan Carson, I think, giving him good advice in the corner as well. Get on the inside. You know, don't don't be at range for those counter punches. Minute gone in the third. Abdukaharov utilizing lateral movement, effective countering. Crowley trying to unleash his attack, and there's a right that lands for Abdukaharov. Crowley with a left hand upstairs, another left. Right hook by Crowley. Manny Robo said they've been working on uh, Abdukaharov setting down on his punches, which he certainly did on that knockdown punch. But Crowley picking it up where he left off. He is. There's another left hand, scores for Crowley. This fight. year old not a beautiful combination, great punch placement. Crowley 19 and 0, nine knockouts. This fight is becoming a fascinating chess match, action chess match, where you're watching Crowley attack, Abdukarov trying to counter, and which one get, will get the job done the best. Rob Dukaharov's left hand has been Prominent led to the knockdown under a minute left here in the third. Good round for Crowley, though, although we said that the last round. <laughs> and then things changed, didn't they? It has been a, a decent round for the Canadian who now calls Las Vegas home. Yeah, he's a lot more busier talking about Crawley, pressure fighter. He's throwing great combinations, combining upstairs, downstairs, clean punches. But <laughs> Abdul Kagorov, you know, he'll have his moments, you know, body shots. And then if he gets a clean punch, we saw what happened in the last round. Crowley 8-0 oh as a pro here in the United States. Uppercut by Crowley. 20 seconds left in the third. Abdul Kagorov backing up to the ropes. And Crowley connects with a right hook upstairs. Nice bounce back round for Crowley after the knockdown. Okay, I want. Relax. Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Be bad, okay? Listen, listen. Too much movement. Stay in the center of the ring. You understand? Center of the ring. 
Well, Crowley in that last round, and Marl mentioned it was a good bounce back round. Boy, was it that. Working on the inside. There's the body punching that uh, Crowley can do with the right. And there's another right hook. So that was kind of almost a double right hook, which we talked about uh, in the keys. Here he is attacking and landing that straight left hand, which he had on, on a number of occasions. Back to the corner. Bell round number four, <laughs> scheduled for 10 at welterweight. Abdul Kahorov would love to join compatriot unified 122 pound titleist Murujan Akhmadaliyev as a champion, but he is in tough against Cody Crowley despite knocking Crowley down in the second. And Manny Robles is quite clear. They don't want Abdukhanov just moving around the ring. Oh, nice right hook by Crowley. They want him in the center of the ring where he can get something done offensively. Well, Crowley said you're going to see who's standing in the center of the ring and who's running once the bell rings. He says he has survived in waters that destroy most people. Power punches in his fight, uh, everything other than the jab and uh, in the last round, excuse me, and Crowley, you see landing 42% uh, and yeah, two to one margin, so that's impressive. And they both dip to the body here in the fourth. Right uppercut on the inside lands for Abdul Kahara. Really, really good round. A really interesting fight, actually. You know, both fighters doing, you know, their thing. But Crawley's aggressiveness, uh, the volume punching, the well-placed punches, you know, it has the best in this fight. And it's being contested at close quarters. They are... Crowley continues to put the pressure on, but Abdul Kaharov has had success with the counterattack. Crowley, the only undefeated fighter that Abdul Kaharov has faced. Whether he's the best remains to be seen, but he's the only undefeated one. Crowley once worked his way onto a show by selling $17,000 <laughs> worth of tickets on his own. You think this guy wants to be a professional boxer? And he promoted his own fights yes, in Peterborough. Yes, as his own promotional license was yeah. given. The key to the city of Peterborough. Yes. Home to the Peterborough Peets, the oldest franchise in the Ontario Hockey League as Abdul Kaharov comes back. See that and the, the electric uh, thing you told us about Peterborough, very impressive. Got to do my homework, especially when it comes to my home and native land, Mr. Bernstein. 45 seconds, yeah, they won't let me back in the country for the holidays <laughs> if I don't represent. 40 seconds left here in the fourth, and another good round yeah, for Crowley. Very much so. <laughs> Yeah, I found his distance with the jab, with the punches, well-placed punches. Uh, Abdul Kakarov just, you know, on his back foot, trying to wait for a right counter punch, where he's, he's had success here and there, but, you know, for more uh, best effective punches, Crowley so wow. far. And Crowley's doing a good job picking off Abdul Kakarov with the left hand. And there's a right from Abdul Kakarov. Fascinating stuff through four rounds here in Carson, California. And still to come, it was any health sports park, home to so many Carson classics. Remember how we were here 2014, fight of the year, Lucas Matisse, John Molina. There have been so many entertaining scraps, and we are witnessing another one right now. This is a really interesting fight. A lot of punches thrown, a lot of punches landed, and two different styles at play. And that lead right hook keeps connecting for Crowley. His blood on the ear of Abdul Kaharov. Uh, probably came from one of those right hooks, maybe. Oh, big right hook by Crowley. I don't know if it was from the previous round, but it just started yeah. right away. You know, Crowley has fought most of his career at 154 pounds, but he wants to be at 147 where he is tonight. He thinks being the naturally bigger man is going to help him. Beautiful left hook to the liver by Abdul Kaharov. And a great point right there, Al, because he is, he is being the bigger man tonight. Man, these power shots are landing for both fighters yeah. here in the fifth. A minute gone. Yeah, Dukarov has landed a couple of really good counters, but Crowley, oh, wow, nice left hand. He's just so well placed. Oh, 
and then up to Kaharov comes back and Crowley shakes it off. Watch the pitch. <laughs> and that's what makes it so so exciting this fight because of the Kaharov, you know, he'll come with his own punch out of nowhere. Crowley went down for the first time in his career. With 38 seconds left in round two from a counter punch. Though Abdul Kaharov was the one who had been staggered earlier in the round. You know, the pressure of Crowley. He said, my pressure is going to really begin to affect him after four or five rounds. He, it is pushing Abdul Kaharov back. A lot more in this fifth round. The crowd here reacting to every thudding blow that is being landed coming up on the final minute of the fifth. Cody Crowley did not fight this year. He had to sell his automobile because he did not have enough money to keep it. He said, this is an important fight for me. You say that again. Yeah. And just the entire story, we've talked about yeah. what he has done, the sacrifice, the lengths that he has gone just to get an opportunity. And Abdul Kaharov lands the right-left combination on the face of Crowley. And the importance for Abdul Kaharov, he's in a position where if he loses his fight, he tumbles in the rankings. He's been the he's mandatory challenger for Earl Spence Jr. for a long time. Yeah. I think Truman was president when he first got to be mandatory. <laughs> And this is the well-placed punches from Carly. You talked about yeah. the pressure that he's putting. It, it, it's smart pressure. It's yes. really smart pressure what Carly, Carly's doing. Picking his punches well, but not, look, not, not worrying when to go in. He goes in when he pleases, and placing his punches really good. And his punch numbers in terms of what's being thrown is growing 89 in that last round. Fantastic first half of what is a welterweight fight scheduled for 10 rounds, and Abdul Kaharab has been in a fight. Breath, relax, relax, relax. Okay. Okay. Relax, breathe, 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 breathe. Sixth round coming up, okay? We're going to see where that Six cut round. happened. The straight left hand, yeah, landed right uh, on the ear. Well, the elbow hit the ear as well, but I, one, either the punch or the elbow. And you look at the left shoulder, see the blood starting to drip down. So great work by the folks in the truck showing us uh, where that cut took place. So it may have come from the actual punch or from the elbow, but either way. And Crowley doing excellent work, pushing Abdul Kaharov back, landing the straight lefts, the right hooks, just having a very good round. And we begin round six, the second half of this 10 round welterweight attraction. Crowley immediately pouncing on Abdul Kaharov, who responds by going to the body with a right hand. We've had so many bouts this year that were the, the companion fight or third fight on a card that have been exciting. This is yet another example. Let's bring in our unofficial score, Steve Farhood. How do you have it after five, my friend? Mo, oh, I have Crowley ahead 48-46. It's a little closer than it would be because Abdul Kaharov scored the knockdown in round two. And that second round was fascinating because Crowley scored early and I was thinking maybe it'll be a 10-8 round even without a knockdown for Crowley. And then Abdul Kaharov landed the knock knockdown punch and he ended up with a 10-8 round. But I think Crowley's done enough to uh, merit a lead on my part 48-46 after five. And the welterweight division continues to deliver. Yeah, so many fighters in the division that can make good matches. And this one looked good on paper, and it's showing up to be that way in the ring. Two undefeated prize fighters on the big stage in a loaded division. Ooh, wow. Wow. That was a great left from Crowley. And Abdul Kaharov just waiting the time, really, and counterpunch, and that's what he's been doing, Crowley, but it's the pressure that... Oh, and there's another left hand by Crowley. The pressure from Crowley that, you know, Abdul Kaharov just can't, he just a lot. And Al Crowley would love to just stay in that center of the ring, bite down on the mouth guard and exchange shots, but of course, Abdul Kaharov we want to utilize his own style. Wants to use the ring and counter punch, but uh, Crowley getting the better of that. And they're total punches. You can see a, a Crowley a volume puncher, and he's doing that here tonight. Yes, he's landing at a lower percentage, but because he's throwing so many more, he's landing more punches. 
Crowley saying that he making it to Showtime, a message to everyone in the world that you can do anything you put your mind to. He is putting his mind to authoring the fight of his life, and what a fight it is here as we begin the second half. You know what they say, it takes two to tango, and yes. you know, Abdukagulov obviously giving them a good fight. It's a good fight. Oh, very competitive still. Kaharov looking the worse for wear after the cut on the ear, beginning to wear the blood as we hit the final 10 seconds of the sixth round. Fainting by Crowley. Actually commentating his own fight. <laughs> He's an interesting guy. <laughs> Relax, relax, relax. How do you feel? How do you feel? What? Oh, what we? So the only thing we haven't had in uh, this fight up to this round was a clash of heads, and uh, we would get it as they both come in. Abdukaharov kind of, you know, jumping in a little bit, but that wasn't anything blatant. It just was an accidental clash of heads. And we'll take a look at it. Luckily, it did not create a, a cut anywhere, which is good. Yeah, they're a big bang of the heads uh, in the last round. And we had to get it left-handers and right handers. It always yeah. happens. Yeah. Oh, it's really common. Hey. Hey. Go, go, go. Round number seven again scheduled for 10 and for Crowley, he has gone the distance in his last three fights, distances of 12, 10, and 10 rounds. But here looking to put it on Abdu Kaharov, Abdu Kaharov countering back, but continues to get nailed with those shots upstairs. And Abdu Kaharov has gone the distance in his last three fights, uh, all three 12 rounders. So these men are used to going long and uh, we'll see if they can keep up this pace and do that. Abdukarov has done some nice body work yes. in the last uh, couple minutes of this fight. Whether that's enough to turn the tide for him remains to be seen. He times that left every time and he lands a body shot. But after that body shot, Crawley comes with one, two, three punches upstairs. So it takes away from that from that body shot that Abdukarov landed. A minute gone here. In the seventh, Crowley continued to stock Abdukaharov along the ropes, nails him with another left. Abdukaharov never been down in his career. He's been rocked in this fight, but he is the one who has sent Crowley to the canvas for the first time in the Canadian's career. You know, the, the headline in this fight to me is the fact that Crowley has used his jab so effectively and it has set up the other punches. He's shown 21 jabs in this round alone. Imagine that, oh. what happens when you establish yeah. the jab and he's establishing wow. dominance on the ropes. Uh, crushing combinations upstairs and Abdul Kaharov being tagged. Tagged and he's getting, he's getting tired. I yes. see a little bit of fatigue from oh. Abdul Kaharov. Abdul Kaharov firing back. Crowley composed, calculated. You know, he said, I'm a pressure fighter and I break people down. And you know, he's doing exactly that. Yep. Mm. We haven't seen body work from Crowley. I would, I would like for him to, you know, invest a little bit in the body. Probably help him out a lot, you know. Early in the fight, he Crowley. did it, but he stopped. Yes. Right. Crowley said that. Abdu Kaharov is going to find himself in waters he can't swim in. Someone better throw this man some water wings. <laughs> Close quote. And he's, I mean, he is yeah. bringing him into deep waters. Well, he's doing exactly what he does at his best, uh, Cody Crowley, and that is be a volume puncher, throw a variety of punches, and he's doing that. Look at the foot placement, the distance. He's not getting in too close. He's not smothering his punches. Spe speaking of Crawley. All right, we in 
our territory now, baby. We're in our territory now, all right? Turn it up. He's only looking for one punch. He's just trying to catch you at one punch. But if you don't see that punch, it's going to be a problem. I don't want, so you keep your defense right, your eyes right, okay? Keep outworking him. Keep that press on him. I want him to bank the rounds. Yeah. We ain't looking for no knockout. We looking to beat the piss out of him, okay? <laughs> you see everything. I've been Carson saying, uh, you know, keep that pressure on. And yeah, that is exactly what Crowley wants to do. And here's the kind of pressure he's been putting on, landing the straight left. And as Abner pointed out, being smart about it, going back and making Abdukharov miss after he threw those combinations. Yeah, the uh, defense uh, after the, the offense. Uh, He's being placed well, well positioned, throwing his punches really good, doing, being really effective. Action from pillar to post as we begin round number eight. Cody the Crippler Crowley, the 28-year-old, living in Las Vegas from Peterborough, Ontario, Canada, 19-0, with nine KOs, Kudratillo Abdukhorov. 28-year-old from Uzbekistan, 18-0 with 10 KOs. He has been a mandatory challenger for Errol Spence for many moons. And Crowley said the fact that Abdukarov mentioned Errol Spence Jr.'s name is, is a sign that he's overlooking him. Yeah, and as Steve's unofficial scorecard shows, other than that second round, Crowley has really controlled this fight. And we're in round eight for Abdukarov. What can he do to change things? And what he has to do is land a big counter punch, something that will hurt Crowley, maybe knock him down. Uh, we'll just fight. like the shot in round two. Yeah, just like the shot in round two. There's the head shots landed at big edge for Crowley. Uh, he's landing more power punches, more of everything in this fight. And it's his positioning, Abner, his, his, the way he places his punches, the, the IQ, the combinations. It is an impressive outing thus far for Cody Crowley. Yeah, it's the range where he's, where he's at, the well-placed position from his punches. But talking of Abdul Kagarov, what he needs to do, he needs to trade punches with Crowley. He, he's just looking for counter punches, you know, here and there, one body shot, overhand right. Yes, he has the power, but if you want to win rounds, there's a counter punch. You got to be more effective. You got to throw more volume, more, more punches. And there was a, a right hand jab from Abdukarov as he switched to Southpaw. Well, Manny Robles has urged Abdukarov to step forward in this fight, but he can't. Crowley is just putting too much pressure on him. And he can't, can't, back, can't seem to back Crowley up. In this round, Crowley is up to 68 punches already. His volume has increased as the fight's gone on. So that's impressive. Final minute of the eighth. And they have combined to throw 1,000 punches. And it majority shows. by Crowley, large majority. Yeah, this shows who, who was the bigger man tonight. Crowley just walking him down. Because Abdul Kagarov, he, he is a pressure fighter. He is a guy that will sit and trade punches with you, but not, not against Crowley. And Crowley, we mentioned he fights at 154 pounds a lot of the time. He looks bigger in that way, even though he's at 147. Crowley at range. Oh, gets picked off by that counter right hand by Abdukharov. But it's there's a lead right by Abdukharov that scores as we head to round number nine here in the great outdoors in Carson, California. Hey, orale cabrón con la pinche agua. Ya deberías de estar preparado. Okay, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Again. Okay? Let's go. What are we here? Well, Crowley doing a lot of good work, especially early in that round, and landing a nice combination. That's just really good combination work by him. And then a straight left hand will get right through the guard of Abdukarov. But Abdukarov did have a couple good moments with some counter punches. There's the right hand, a lead right hand that would get in. He actually landed a couple of good left hands right at the end of the round, but certainly not enough, I wouldn't imagine, to win him the round. Back to the in our court. estimation, Back to the unofficially. <laughs>
Hot One wonders how much might the blood be affecting the scoring or simply Crowley outworking, outstriking Abdul Kaharav as we begin round number nine. Double jab from the southpaw Crowley, left uppercut landed. Well, Crowley started out throwing three straight right hooks that landed. That's, you know, and for a lefty that has a good right hook, they don't all land. They don't. They don't. But again, Abdul Kagarov, that's what he has to do. He has to let his hands go because if he lands punches, that's going to stop the volley from Crowley also. But if, you know, if, if Abdul Kagarov is not doing anything, not throwing, well, Crowley's going to keep walking him down. Crowley started kickboxing at the age of 14 and then transitioned to the sweet science at age 15. He trained himself until the age of 19. Lost his first kickboxing match to a young lady, he said. <laughs> Which, hey, <laughs> he was good. Crowley just landed a nice body shot. And coming into this fight, Abdul Kaharov was a huge favorite. Yes. Yeah, that's well worth noting at this point. But you know, watching the videos of them, you, you, it, it was obvious this was going to be a very interesting and competitive fight. And in fact, it, it, while it's been competitive, probably dominating. And he just landed another solid left hand to the face of Abdul Kaharov past the midpoint of the ninth. And now Abdul Kaharov, he's only thrown 16 punches yeah. this round. Now he's just in, he, right now he looks like he's in survival mode. Probably exhorting him to do more offensively. <laughs> he heard you. Yeah. And you know where that's coming from is because Crawley has invested a little bit more in the body. Oh, there he goes with uh, right hook to the body. Nice attack here by Crowley. Less than a minute left in the ninth. The double right hook, which we talked about during the keys, and he's used it in this fight. And how about the fact that got oh, up and ooh, a left hand clobbering. Abdul Kaurav upstairs, but Crowley getting up off the deck for the first time in his career in round two. And it has been a sensational performance by the Canadian, but Abdul Kaurav undefeated for a reason. And we have just over three minutes left in this fight. There's a body work from up. up. Of the cover up, but it's just one punch here and there. And just Crowley goes seconds. to the body before finishing with a left hook upstairs. Tenth and final round on deck. Well, the straight left of Crowley. Why, why does he land it? Because he used the jab to get on the inside. And even with his right hand up, Abdukharov's not able to block the punch because it was a straight yeah, punch. Put that work on him. I need everything in there, but don't get sloppy with it. Not problem. Touch him up in the center. Okay, don't get sloppy with it. I want it to be meaningful, all right? But don't have your hand straight up when you punch him, baby. Don't cut it like that. Don't do that, all right? Tuck it. Because he's trying to land that one shot. He want to get you. You got to finish strong. You got that? Finish strong okay yes yes that's wrong give me the rest of you all right let's go push let's go you gotta push you want this you gotta push the message from Abdul Kaharab's corner, you got to push. He has got to put it all on the line here in the 10th and a final round. Crowley telling us that no one can keep up with it. the activity in the ring. He's a machine. Crowley saying, I'm a world champion in my head. The world just doesn't know it yet. And what a performance tonight. I'm the greatest star. <laughs> they just don't know it yet. You know, he, I've been Carson with great work in the corner, reminding Crowley to be, uh, to use his fundamentals. Don't get wild. Don't give him a chance to land that one big counter punch. Yeah, that's great advice because that's the last thing you want to do. You know, give him the opportunity to land, you know, overhand crazy punches where he did. What was it? The second, third round where he was able to knock down Crowley. Oh, and Crowley comprehensively <laughs> outboxing, outworking Kudratilo Abdukaharov. 
That was beautiful combination punching by Crowley. He's a good technician in that ring. So I guess uh, going 150 rounds of the ring with Floyd and yeah. Jr. does pay off. Stop, stop, stop. No, 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 no. Could help you a little Put bit. Put your head up with your yeah. Really anyone sparring in that gym. Yeah. The dog pound. The dog, yeah. And there's a right hook again that landed upstairs for Crowley and Abdukarov. He's backing up, utilizing lateral movement. He's got to come forward. He's got to let it all hang out now. A minute and a half left in the fight. Now, who's the one losing the fight? <laughs> Crowley's the one pressuring, trying to end this. But, you know, again, it's easier than Abdukarov. Obviously, he wants to stay in there and trade punches, but it's just too much volume. This is beautiful combination punching by Crowley. Look at the distance. That range, I was just going to say, what Abner well said there. Just beautiful display of boxing from the Canadian who bet on himself. And while he is the betting underdog here with 50 seconds left, he has definitely proved to be more than a live dog, putting it on up to Kaharov in the corner. Cody Crowley gave himself a 10-year plan to become a champion. He's in the seventh year, and here in his 20th professional fight, having authored the best fight of his career, and that despite going down for the first time in his career in round two. Who will remain undefeated? The judges will let us know. But what a fight for the Canadian, Cody Crowley. That man has got to be proud of this effort. At 28, he, as you pointed out, he authored the best fight of his career at the right moment against the best opponent he's faced. And Ivan Carson, his trainer, uh, just has to be so gratified for Abdu Kaharov. If, if he loses this fight, which we think he probably will, uh, of course, it's a huge setback for him in probably losing his number one status in the IBF. Let's go inside the ropes and look at this fight in microcosm. From the beginning, it was Cody Crawley coming with a lot of pressure, and that was a good sequence of counterpoint, but that's the place where we thought maybe this fight would change in round two with the jab that turned uh, what was a good Crawley run into a knockdown. Did that deter Cody Crawley? No. He kept coming. He kept using the jab to work his way in, landing straight left hands with impunity, also right hooks, and just outworking him by throwing 800 at 98 punches in this fight. He was busy, he was effective, and he did a great job. They never want to fight. They always run. The numbers in this fight, remarkable from Crowley's standpoint. 898 punches thrown, uh, and you know, he landed 37% of his power punches, but with the, the jabs, 404. That's more jabs than you would expect him to throw. It really helped him. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies, Ladies and, and gentlemen, gentlemen after 10, 10 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. We have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Pat Russell scores the action 95 to 94. Alejandro Rochin, 97 to 92. And Fernando Villarreal scores the bout 98 to 91. All three in favor of the winner, Cody the Crippler. Stand up and cheer! 28-year-old Cody Crowley has made the Maple Leaf proud with a comprehensive effort here tonight. The hostility between these two guys is real. Tonight.
My objective is putting a beating on Caleb Plant. Knockout artist and two-time title holder David Benavidez takes on the smooth technician and former champ Caleb Plant. I need to teach him a life lesson. And no one's backing down. I'm gonna beat the living out of you. You're not gonna do nothing. David Benavidez versus Caleb Plant tonight, live on Pay Per View. Boxing Champions presents our next world title attraction in association with Samson Boxing, and it is brought to you by MGM Resorts, O'Reilly Auto Parts, and Lucas Oil. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC, the president in attendance, Mauricio Suleiman. Judges at ringside, Tim Carasoni, Dr. Lou Moret, and Mike Ross. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, gold, and black trunks, and fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona. He weighed in at 167 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 21 wins, no losses, 18 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the youngest boxer ever to hold the super middleweight crown. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting young star of boxing, the undefeated former super middleweight champion of the world, introducing El Bandera. Across the ring is the defending world champion fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with orange trim, representing the famed fighting family from Flint, Michigan. He weighed in at 167 and one half pounds with a record of 33 wins, one loss and one draw. He has 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight in his fifth world title appearance, please welcome the two-time and the current WBC Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Anthony Rondon-Durell! And a referee in charge now to give instructions, Thomas Taylor. Right here, Kent, right here. Right here. Okay, gentlemen, both belt lines are good. You gave your instructions in the back. Protect yourselves at all times, listen to my commands. Touch them up. Back to your corner, gentlemen. Let's take a look at our tale of the tape. Miguel, what stands out to you numerically? I mean, obviously the age difference. You talk about the young superstar in David Benavides compared to the old dog, as some people say, Anthony Durrell. Plus, you look at Benavides, he's got the reach. He's got the height Guys, advantage. Sure move that on, or excuse me, and he's the, and the bottom water. just 6'2", just stay like stay Durrell, but he's got the reach advantage on Durrell. Benavides is a very, very big 168 pounder. We saw Anthony Durrell in action when he became a world champion. Are you ready? Defeated you ready? Abney Yildrum, David Benavides stopped. Jay Leon Love in two rounds were underway. Darrell and Benavides going at it for the WBC Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Ray Flores Miguel Flores here at Staples Center, Los Angeles. Darrell, a significant underdog heading into this fight as much of a four and a half to one underdog is the champion Durrell. Well, if you look at both of these guys' last fights, Benavidez, like you said against Jamie Amab, dispatched him in less than two rounds. If you look at Durrell, fought a very difficult fight against Yavni Yildrum, split decision victory. Some said Yildrum did enough to win that fight. Nevertheless, Durrell won that split decision, but it was a tough fight. It was a fight that many said, you know what? The WBC, he may have won the WBC championship, but he's not going to have it for long. And once this fight was announced against Benavidez, all signs pointed to Benavidez recapturing what he lost when he won it when he was 20 years old. Well, look, if you're Anthony Durrell, this man has fought and beaten cancer. He has been in there with some of the world's best. And he is not afraid of anybody. Benavidez said, look, I'm going to put you away and knock you out. Midway point of the first. So far, not much action. The feeling out process. 
And for Benavides, he got a very good reception from this Mexican crowd. He certainly did. We're in Los Angeles, the epicenter of the Mexican-American community. He's got a ton of fans behind him here in the Staples Center. But that is nothing new to Darrell. And if you're Darrell, if you're looking to improve on things, he cannot stand in front of Benavides. He can't do what he did against Yodrum. Against Yodrum, he took a lot of shots, took some punishment. Um, he wasn't put down, but he can't replicate that same performance if he wants to beat Benavides tonight. Under a minute left here in our opening round of our co-main event here at Staples Center. A left hook blocked by Benavides. Benavides is smiling. He goes, okay, yeah, come on. Bring the fight to me, no problem. Durrell boxing well in this opening stance. Durrell just missed with that left hook. And you can see Benavidez not throwing much, just kind of getting a feel for things. Durrell walked into the lion's den, got out of the way immediately. And even though Benavidez missed, that just shows you the type of hand speed for that, bell, gentlemen. that Benavidez has. Final moments of the first. Time. Solid round for Durrell. Relax, relax. Attack the body, attack the body. I like what you're doing. Move, move. Block, block. Relax, use a jab, use a jab. Ready? Now let's take a look at David Benavides saying, okay, I like the facts. And he's saying, come on, let's fight. And if you're Darrell, you don't want to engage in that. That's what Benavides wants. He wants you to come into the lion's den. Benavides, a known counter puncher, really throws punches and bunches. That's what he's known for. And if you're Darrell, you do not want to play Benavides' game. No better indication of that than a few years ago when he put out Rogelio Porky Medina in what looked like a video game-like knockout. It was an eight or nine punch combination. I forget the exact number that he put him out in spectacular fashion. Benavides, when he hits you, it's hard to stand up to that kind of firepower. Right there, that's what Darrell needs. In and out, real quick. Go to the body, come right back out. But Darrell is very poised, and he knows what it's like to be under fire from opponents. Darrell's been hit with some of the best shots from his opponents, and he stood tall. There's the jab by Benavides. Over and right. Jab for Benavides. Darrell still looking to look for his opening. And you can tell Darrell's being extremely careful, picking his shots. He knows how dangerous Benavides can be. Darrell steps in, jab ball by right hand. The right for Benavides, followed by the left hook. And again, Benavides smiles. Benavides knows it is a 12 round fight, but he cannot get behind on the scorecards too early. Darrell ties up, smart veteran move from Darrell. Bad spot, ties him up, resets. That's what you gotta do. That's the smart veteran experience that Anthony Darrell possesses. And if you're Benavides, one thing, let's say, it, it, that you can be worried about as we see the overhand right connecting for Darrell is a little bit of overconfidence. Not saying that he is overconfident, but that's something that could worry you in this fight. If Benavides is overlooking Darrell, if he thinks he's gonna walk through him, Darrell is not a guy that you're gonna come in and put away within a round or two. Well, you know Caleb Plant is going to get married to his longtime girlfriend, Jordan Hardy, is watching this one. Plant, the IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World. There's so many good divisions here in boxing, and 168 is another one you can add to the list. Darrell 
boxing well. Benavidez, a right hand that connects for Durrell. Durrell fighting very well here in the second. And another thing I like by Durrell so far early in this one is he's not staying in one place. He's moving around. He's not giving Benavidez a chance to tee off. Now Benavidez goes on the attack. Listen for the bell, gentlemen. Listen for that bell. That's the end of two. Listen into the corner of Anthony Durrell. Every time you, you see him falling and lunge in on the shot, just be patient. When you're ready, you're going to just load that foot up. You'll start catching him with the shots. Good jab working to the body. Good right hand to the body, all of that. Very good head movement. Moving from left to right. You see he's not that physical. As soon as you got inside, Well, we just mentioned just about how the super middleweight out. division, look at the names, Callum Smith, Caleb Plant, Durrell, who's got to keep, who Plant defeated to win the world title. Chris Eubank Jr., Benavides, Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Truex, Yiltrum. Are you kidding me? That is a loaded division. Ray, I mean, it is a murderer's row type of a lineup. So even whoever wins this fight has another tough task ahead of them uh, for this one. I mean, it is no easy fight in this division as we are seeing both of the top two uh, fighters along with Caleb Plant and uh, some others we saw on the list of, two of them are going toe-to-toe -to -toe right now. Round three, this one's scheduled for 12. I gave you the first two rounds to Anthony Durrell, Miguel, and if you are David Benavidez, you cannot get behind too much. No, you certainly can't. You, you can't allow Durrell to gain confidence, gain rounds, because all it takes is a knockdown, like we saw against uh, in the, our last fight. All it takes is a knockdown, maybe two, and all of a sudden, you're really asking, you're, you're up against it. You're asking to get a knockout in order to just win, and you don't want to be in that position if you're Benavidez. David Benavidez should be jabbing more and also try to attack the body of Anthony Durrell. You heard the corner of Anthony Durrell telling him, work the jab, be patient, work the body, and watch it go left to right. That stay away from the power punch, the right hand of David Benavides. Overhand right by Durrell. Benavides trying to catch Durrell coming forward. Durrell so relaxed. Benavides has had a history of putting away his opponents. Jay Leon Love broke out of Gabriel's eye socket. Finished off Rogelio Porky Medina. Very hard for opponents to withstand the power of David Benavides. Benavides, uh, again, he's a big 168 pounder. There's a right hand. Durrell shrugs his shoulders, has to say, is that all you got? And Durrell, again, he did that against Yildrum. He can shrug his shoulders, but you don't want to take too many of those. All it takes is one, and that was a beautiful shot from Benavides to go downstairs. It was a left hook, and then he came upstairs. Durrell throwing, but Benavides blocking it out. Benavides checks his chin as to say, come on, the machismo is coming out for David Benavides. He's starting to walk down Durrell, Miguel, here in this third. He certainly is, and, and if you're Durrell, you don't want Benavides to start cutting off the ring, gaining confidence, letting his hands go. You need something to push him back from. And right now, Benavides is going to town. Right hook connected. Right hand on the top for Benavides. This is Benavides' best round by far, Ray. Well, offensively, he's cutting off the ring. He's jabbing his way to set up those power punches. Now, if you're Durrell, you've got to go to work here at close range. Tom Taylor, referee in charge, letting them work out of it. There's both left hook. hooks. They both exchange hooks. Toe to toe they go to Benavides and Durrell. Get him up a little bit. Listen for the bell, gentlemen. Listen for that bell. Time. That's the end Heart. of the third. Heart. I got a little cut from a punch right here. A little cut on the outside nose right here. Let's take a look at 
the action. A right hand that misses for Durrell. And Benavides makes him pay with the right cross. And right there, Benavides walking him down, uh, cutting off the ring. There he goes up top and then right down to the body. He eats the left hand from Durrell, but he smiles as to tell Durrell, you can't hurt me. Durrell says, hey, you can't hurt me either. And Benavidez chin checking his chin as to say, come on, right there. That's where I want you to hit me. Coming up on round four, this one is scheduled for 12. The Super Middleweight Championship of the World is on the line. The champion, Anthony Durrell from Flint, Michigan, defending the championship against David Benavides. Benavides, former world champion. He was the youngest American champion at just 21 years of age. Gave that third round to David Benavides, Miguel Ivan. Two rounds to one in favor of Anthony Durrell. Well, so far that's how I see it right as well. I mean, Benavides kind of posted through those first two rounds. Durrell took advantage, racked up some points, racked up some rounds. But Benavides starting to turn it on in that round three and really put the pressure on Durrell. Benavides walking right to Durrell. Durrell having a back box off his back foot. Again, there you see Benavides smiling. This is, it almost feels like Benavides is at home. This is where he, he loves to be inside the ring. Big fight, world title on the line. Well, some guys are born to be prize fighters. And I'm of the belief that Anthony Durrell and David Benavides are of that own. Benavides was sporting Gennady Golovkin when he was 15 years of age. And that was when Triple G was Triple G. And that just shows you the type of respect and what people in the boxing world thought about this young kid and David Benavides when he was coming up. Well, look, Samson Lukowicz, who's his promoter, when I saw, I've seen, been watching David Benavides for the past four and a half years. Samson Lukowicz came to me in November of 2015 and said, when Benavides made his national television debut, he goes, I have a kid who's so special, and he was just 18 years old at the time. And lo and behold, he became the youngest American to be a world champion. So far, though, in the fourth very close round, as Benavides goes right back on the offensive. And you see Durrell adjusting. He doesn't want to replicate that third round. He knows Benavides got the better of him in that third round. So he's using his jab, trying to stay at a distance, not letting Benavidez cut the ring off as much as he did in that third round. Final 49 seconds of the fourth round. David Benavidez, the heavy favorite, even though he's the challenger, looking to become a world champion once again. Anthony Durrell making the first defense of the, WC, the WBC Super Middleweight Championship. And already you can see Durrell fighting a smarter fight than his last fight against Yojo. Picking his shots, he's not getting in as much of a slugfest as he did his last fight. And there he goes, connected on Benavidez. Well, here comes Durrell going to work on Benavidez. Durrell fighting on the inside. Benavidez, they're both are mixing it up. Listen for the bell, listen for that bell. And Benavidez likes it. He stuck out his tongue. They're both enjoying this. They're both savage in their own demented way. And you can see both guys have massive amounts of respect for each other. This is fun for them. This is what they wanted. The FWBC Championship will be unified. But first off, we got to see who's going to come away with the WBC World Super Middleweight title. Very compelling matchup. 
Dakota men have been mixing it up at parts, toe to toe, right hand. That starts off the action. Sorrell nods his head. Both guys realize that they are typically the aggressors in their respective fights. You know that they both love the fact that it's not hard to find one another here in this fight. Oh, it certainly isn't. And you, you know Benavidez wants the fight brought to him. Right hand for Benavidez, left hook to the body. And Darrell got out of that corner immediately. Wanted oh, nothing to do with that. And uh, Darrell stuck out his tongue at Benavidez. Both men with some gamesmanship. And again, neither fighter has been truly hurt with the big shot just yet. I'm curious to see who's going to be that first one to land the big shot. Yes, as you mentioned, neither man has had that signature punch that has connected. Benavides walking down Durrell. The jab for Durrell. Durrell steps in. Benavides now going to work. Look at this hand speed by David Benavides, the 22 year old. Oh my goodness, that hand speed. And Durrell laughs as Benavides continues to go to work. I love Thomas Taylor tells Anthony Durrell, I'll take care of the referee and you take care of business. I think Thomas Taylor is one of the fastest rising, one of the best referees in the business. So good. He's had a couple of high profile fights. And this is, an, this is not an easy one for him to referee. And you got two guys like Darrell and Benavidez, both who like to really get inside and kind of muck it up, as you would say. Well, and both with high work rates. And now, as you talked about, no Darrell oh, is mucking it up on the inside, making it a rough and tumble affair. And Darrell's doing a really good job at continuing to go to the body. He's going and using his jab to the midsection of Benavidez. Well, Benavidez just pressed and got Darrell off of him with the right hand of the temple. And Benavides surgical-like in his demeanor. But Darrell sticks that jab. Now blood is coming, I believe, from, from a few rounds ago. It is on the right cheek of Anthony Darrell. Listen for that bell, gentlemen. Listen for that bell. Benavides swinging wildly, missing. And that's the end of the fifth. Punctuated by a right hand from Benavides. Take a look at this exchange and both men enjoying this. There you see Benavides just going to work. Teeing off on Darrell, but if you're Darrell, I mean, he, he didn't really get a hit at flush. A lot of those punches hit the gloves, hit the forearms. So Darrell did a really nice job at covering up. And Benavidez feeling it, especially after that right hand that found its mark on Durrell. Let's see if Benavidez will use that as a springboard in this next round. But if you're Durrell, you got to still feel good about yourself and feel good about your chances. You, he has done a really wonderful job at negating Benavidez's power. He's not re really allowing Benavidez to come off with the signature punches in bunches. He's not letting them get off that we're used to seeing Benavidez get off. Also good defense by Anthony Durrell. Durrell has such a high guard and makes for such a difficult target for Benavidez to connect upon. And Durrell varies the placement of where the jab goes, which stops David Benavides and makes him think. You're going to have to make David Benavides think and question himself. You certainly have to do that. And Benavides, he's a smart fighter. I mean, there's a reason why many pegged him as a child prodigy coming up the ranks. Well, his brother, his older brother, Jose Benavides, is a welterweight contender. His father, Jose Benavides, senior as well is his lead trainer so the Benavides family very well represented much like the Durrells Anthony's brother Andre was an Olympian and former world champion as well so the Durrells and the Benavides is certainly have etched their name in boxing lore
at this tempo, Miguel, this favors Anthony Durrell. It certainly does. Because it is slow. It's not slow, but it, it is methodical, and it's with precision, whereas Benavidez likes to get off combinations almost in machine gun-like bursts. Exactly, and that was a huge right hook that connected for Benavidez. Benavidez using his jab. Benavidez pressing with the jab. Durrell putting that jab right on the midsection of Benavidez. And Durrell's almost making it a point to go to the body of Benavidez. He's not even looking upstairs anymore. You can see what the game plan is now from Durrell. What's to stop the mobility of David Benavidez because Benavidez is deceptively athletic. And if you are pounding away on the body, it doesn't give you enough fervor to throw with the combinations that you would like. Benavides throws us left. I believe blood now trickling outside the right eye of Anthony Durrell. We're gonna go and try to see if that is truly the case. Durrell does have some blood trickling, as you can yes. see, taking a swipe under his right eye. Well, now Benavides going to work, a left hook. Stop, 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 stop. Taylor Good took idea. some time, and now they're going to look at the cut. And you heard Tom tell the judges that was a cut from a punch. It's, it's on the island. Taking a look at it again. Good. There's that right, right hand. Hey, that got through the guard. Anthony, you ready? Time in. Carlos Vargas, who is a fantastic trainer, is the cut man for Anthony Durrell. Brilliant cut man is Carlos Vargas. Listen for the bell, gentlemen. Final moments of the sixth. Cut. That's the end of six. Take a look again at where the cut occurred. I think it was from that jab, Ray. I, the jab landed flush, it appears, on the right eye of Darrell. And that cut is nasty. It is on the, covering up the entire eyelid almost of Darrell. That is gonna be a problem. Taking it slow. Bring it right into him now, okay? Bring it right into him. He ain't no physical guy. Wow, that is right above the eye later. That's a nasty cut above the right eye of Anthony Durrell. This is why you go ahead and you invest in a quality cut man. Well, we saw it a couple of weeks ago in the Tyson Fury Otto Wallen fight. Fury suffered an extremely bad cut early on in that fight, but was able to withstand it due to his cut man coming to his aid. And Fury could have potentially have lost that fight if they stopped it due to the cut. Very true, Miguel. That was only a few weeks right, stop, ago. Stop. No punch, no punch. And Straight we'll back. see Go. how Darrell handles this adversity as he is the defending champion. And now Benavides' confidence is starting to grow. He's kicking it up into another gear. Stop, stop, let him go. Let him go straight back. Straight you want to see straight. how that cut's going to affect Darrell. And it's just pouring out, Miguel. And Thomas Taylor, once again, made it a point as to say it was caused from a punch. So if this fight is stopped, it will be, be, it will be a victory no back. in favor back. of David Benavides. If this fight is stopped because of the cut, it will be in favor of Benavides. If you're Darrell, you almost stop, have to put stop. the pedal to the metal and really start to try to get this fight over with. I mean, it's a, that is a nasty cut. I don't oh, know stop, how stop, much. Stop, stop, stop. Well, that's a shot below the belt. Hey, I know, it's accidental. It's accidental. It was an Stay accidental right punch. Stay right here. Time. David, total accidental. Didn't mean it. You all right? You need time? You all right? All right, stay right here. Good enough, right? Let's go. Time in. 
both touch gloves. That was an inadvertent shot. I know Anthony Durrell. And I know both guys very well. Neither man is a dirty fighter. Not at all, Ray. And Durrell, again, like I was saying earlier, that cut is extremely nasty. And you can see Benavides is starting to make it a point to jab to that side of Durrell's head. He knows that that is working in his favor. And if you're Durrell, you got to do everything you can to cut that off. Left stop, 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 stop. That connected yeah, for Benavides that jacked the jaw of Durrell hey, stop, stop, with 65 stop. seconds Time. in the seventh. Get over there. And again, Time called. The fans don't like this too much. Look at that island. That's a deep cut. What do you say, Doc? You okay? All right, check that out, right? Stay right here. Thomas Taylor's airing on the side of caution, and the fans, they want to see that mix it up. So do I. So do we. We don't want this fight stopped. It's getting too good. Especially a fight of this magnitude with these two fighters. Big right hand for Durrell. Oh, my. But back comes Benavides. Durrell mixing it up. There's a reason why right, they stop, call stop, him the stop. dog. What? You, got, you got to watch your holding. You're pausing. Hey, you're pausing the elbow. Darrell is bleeding above his right eye, all in his face, as he has to deal with a 22-year-old hungry contender in David Benavides. And it's almost like Benavides is a shark. He smells the blood in the water. He senses it. He is amping up the pressure. The punch output is increasing. Big Listen right to the hand bell, from Benavides. Final moments of the seventh. Time! Hey, when the, when the round starts, I'm gonna bring him over, okay? Be ready. Well, Carlos Vargas, the cut man of Anthony Durrell, has his work cut out for him. You heard Thomas Taylor say, when the round begins, I'm gonna bring him over to the doctor. How's that eye? You see out of it? Shoot it all out. Fuck it. Alright? I need you to ask him if he can see out of that eye. Anthony Durrell right has been cut before. There's that cut. Against Yildra and Dennis Dugley. Boom. Watch me. Javon Sugar Hill telling Anthony Durrell, hey, this is it. He wants him to fight with more of a sense of urgency. And look at that blinking, and oh my. It's a bad cut. And again, they're going to check him out. You're gonna keep an eye on that, right? Stay right here. Ready? Ready? And this Staples Center crowd erupts and cheers. Round eight, this one's scheduled for 12. Ray Flores, Miguel Flores. Ringside, the champion Anthony Durrell looking to defend his championship. Now he goes softball, and he goes to the body of Benavides. And Tom Taylor warning Durrell about keeping the punches up. Durrell was on the offensive, and then he was warned about hitting below the belt. Durrell extremely upset. He landed a beautiful shot on Benavides, too, and he was looking to follow that up before Tom Taylor stopped him. Look, it's not easy to be in that ring, so you have to make a judgment call. Durrell has now gone to Southpaw, possibly to protect that eye, that right eye that is streaming out blood as he has a deep cut above the right eyelid. And Benavides will see if he can pound away on that eye and get it to bleed more. And you're seeing Darrell starting to change his game plan up because of the cut. He doesn't want to lose this fight on a technicality with the cut. 
he right, stop, stop. No punch, knows no that he's got to no bring the fight down. to Benavidez stop. now, and he's got to change things up and be more aggressive, Anthony, him go. take more stop, chances. Stop, stop. No well, I like what Durrell is doing hey, gotta watch that. because Hold he's go. swarming Benavidez, not allowing him to get a lot of leverage behind his punches, throwing punches, and then resetting. Durrell is a very smart veteran. And there's Benavidez just going Top to work. Left hooks, followed by a right. Benavidez. Right, stop, 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 stop. 75 stop. seconds left here in the eighth. Watch your holding. Listen, when you guys are in there, watch the elbow, all right? Let's go. Tom Taylor warning both. The fans just want to see these guys scrap. And one thing about these two, right? Neither of them want to give up an inch. Neither man. You have two trains on the same track. Who's going to budge first? Under a minute left here in the eighth. There's another jab by Benavidez as he's walking Durrell down. Durrell going back to the body. There's a left hook for Benavidez. Might have stunned Durrell. Durrell might be hurt. Right, stop, stop, no. No punch, no punch. Run, run. And the blood pouring out again. Anthony Durrell, left hook. Dan David Benavidez hammering away upon Durrell. He might have Durrell hurt. Big shot by Benavidez. Benavidez applying the pressure on the champion, Anthony Durrell. Look at this work rate by David Benavidez. Here's some of the work we get. There's Benavides. Yeah. This is what really started the momentum for Benavides towards the later half of that round. He hit him with the left hook, went down to the body, stunned Durrell, and you can see Benavides sense that he was on the cusp yeah, of closing out elbows, this fight. In, like, Fortunately for Durrell. How you feeling? How you feeling? How you feeling? There's that left hook from Benavidez. That right there stunned Durrell, as you can see his legs wobbly, leaning on the ropes. Hey, when I asked him how are you feeling, he said, but we're gonna keep it full fight. Southfall. Avoid the cut. Don't worry about it. Fight your fight. Well, they know that this fight could potentially be stopped, and Carlos Vargas has gotten in between rounds. He does a good job of getting the bleeding to stop. And that's the big thing for Durrell. I mean, he's dealt with this situation in the past before, and he's been able to fight through it. This is not new to him. And Benavides a look at a left hook to the body. Answering back is Durrell. But Benavides is starting to physically wear down Anthony Durrell. And there you see Benavides, huge straight left. Left hook to the body, winging right hook. Benavides a left hook to the body. Benavides is targeting the body of Anthony Durrell now. Sweeping left hook by Benavides getting a lot of leverage behind his shots. And now Benavides, you can see, is really starting to pour it on. Durrell's in major trouble. Now Durrell's starting to get physically beaten up here. A left uppercut by Benavides. Left hook to the body. Another one. Big hooks by Benavides. And Benavides is now starting to be the aggressor. Tom Taylor watching it. Oh my, what a work. Tom Taylor may stop it. David Benavides may be close of stopping Anthony Durrell. Charles got to fight out of it. Benavides teeing up on Durrell. Durrell hurt. Major trouble. They're waving it up. And this one is over. Oh my goodness. And the new super middleweight champion of the world, David Benavides. At 22 years of age, he once again has gold around his waist. Take him off. Benavidez showing the world why 
He was a prodigy. Lost his belt, was the youngest champion at 20 years old, lost his belt through no fault in the ring. And now he finally is able to wrap that WBC super middleweight title around his waist again. David Benavides is one bad man to stop, Hell of a fight. to be the first man oh to stop oh Anthony Durrell. They say, show me something. But well, we saw something tonight from David Benavides. We certainly did, and you know, that cut, once Benavides clipped Durrell and had that cut lacerated Durrell's face, that changed the momentum of the fight. Durrell was fighting a smart fight. And right here, Ray, we're gonna take a look as Benavides, he sets the blood in the water. Going to the body, then going upstairs. And there you see the blood in the vision of Durrell. The jab coming straight through, rocking Durrell. And then there, there was Benavides sensing the end. He knew he had Durrell on the ropes. And he was this close to a finish. And one thing about Benavidez, when he senses that he can finish you, he usually does it. No question. And there was the corner they came and said, enough is enough. And there is a member of the California State Athletic Commission. He was working very hard. And the adulation, the moment, overwhelmed by emotion, still undefeated, and once again, a world champion. And here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of one minute, 39 seconds in round number nine. Our referee in charge, Thomas Taylor, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of knockout. He is still undefeated. And once again, the WBC Super Middleweight Champion of the World Today is the day. Order my fight against Caleb Plan on Showtime Papers now. Tale of the tape. Caleb Plant, only 27 years old, but Feigen was a young man. Again, turned pro at the age of 16. He's still only 24. Caleb Plant with the height advantage reach is the same. Plant is a celebrated amateur. Feigen puts no amateur experience, but has a shot at the pro title tonight. He said he remembers being a little kid here in Nashville and dreaming of fighting in the biggest arena. Here he is right now. He said, I've worked my whole life for this. Now he gets his chance. 19-0, second title defense at 168 pounds. Main event, world title on the line. We go to the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Bridgestone Arena here in Music City, USA, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the World Championship featured attraction of the evening, brought to you by Sweet Hands Promotions and TGB Promotions in association with Team Zauerland, sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the IBF, the President General Peoples, introducing our three judges scoring from ringside, David Hudson, Mike Fitzgerald, and Benoit Roussel. All right, fans, here we go with a bout you've all been waiting for. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from Nashville, Tennessee, it's time for the main event of the evening! Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the red corner, entering the ring wearing black trunks with gold and white trim, hailing from Karlsruhe, Baden-Württemberg, Germany. He 
Carey again at already 165 and one quarter pounds. With a record of 31 wins and two losses, he has 28 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the hard-hitting IBF mandatory super middleweight world rank contender. Tonight making his U.S. debut, please welcome the former super middleweight champion of the world, known as the K.O. King, introducing Vincent. And his opponent across the ring, the defending a champion in the blue corner tonight, making his homecoming appearance. Entering the ring wearing dark blue trunks, fighting out of them, proudly representing Nashville, Tennessee. He weighed in at 166 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 19 wins, no losses. 11 of his wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making the second defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated, reigning, and defending IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, introducing a sweet hands, Referee in charge of the action, Malik Wali. Okay, fellas, you both have been given the rules. I'm expecting good, clean boxing. When I say break, stop punching, take a full step back, remember, protect yourselves at all times. And look here, I'm gonna allow work from here and up. On this end, your lower high, I'm gonna allow some work in here. Anything below, nothing. You clear? Touch him up. Good luck to you both. Ready now for the main event. Tonight's odds provided by Fox Bet. If you bet $100 on the favorite, that's Caleb Plant, you would get a payout of $104. If you bet $100 on the underdog, that's Vincent Feigenbutz, you would win $1,100 with a payout of $1,200. Ready to go here in the main event. Caleb Plant, again, first pro fight in Tennessee. He comes back to Nashville as a world champion. Comes off a commanding performance last June, knocking out Mike Lee. Joe Goose, and he's just a patient, accurate, hard-working fighter, and you would expect him to be the favorite here against Feigen Butch tonight. Without a doubt, not only paint, but he's fast, and he's, he throws in combinations when need be. First round scheduled for the championship 12 here at the Bridgetone Arena in Nashville, Tennessee. Brian Kenny, Joe Goose, and, and Lennox Lewis here ringside, Heidi, Heidi Andrall, and... Marcos Viegas with us as well as Caleb Plant opens up. Again, he is patient, but he is quick with the jab. Lennox, he prefers to be accurate and sting and hurt rather than overcome you with volume. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's an accurate puncher, so uh, he's got to make uh, do with these punches. They're going to be really hard and fast when he's throwing them because that's what everybody's expecting. I mean, uh, Feigen Boost is, knows that he's quick, knows that he's fast, so he, he's gotta, he can't waste punches. He's got to be careful in there. Feigenbutz, only 24 years old. Again, he has two pro losses, but he hasn't lost since he was 20 years old. And even in that fight where he got stopped, he was still on his feet. He is a sturdy, rugged guy. That he is, Brian. But I got to tell you, uh, the size difference, I think, is really obvious here. Uh, yeah, and range, too. Look at the wingspan for Plant, able to spring in and hit him with a right hand to the body. Feigenbutz looks more like a middleweight to me as opposed to a, a legitimate 68-pounder right. here with Caleb Plant. And Caleb Plant leaves that left hand low, but he dares you to come in and throw a right hand because he'll whip that hook right over it. He's really good with that. And Plant able to land that jab to the body. That's a good scoring shot. You can see already outlanding Feigenbutz by a, a pretty wide margin. Also landing the right hand to the body again. And you're, you're right, Joe, uh, Feigenbusch is, is definitely bulkier, but the bulk here brings uh, less speed. So he doesn't really have those speed muscles, he's got those strength power muscles. And, and that he does have, he's bad. We, want, we both watch tape on the guy, and he's, a, he's got a great right hand. So, you know, I don't care who you are, if you get hit by a solid right hand, even from a, especially from a guy who's got 28 knockouts, you're gonna feel it, get hurt, or possibly get knocked out. But the chances are slim right now because of the, like I said, the, just the experience that, that Caleb Plant has and the high IQ he brings to the ring. And Tiger Butts able to have some success there, able to land a right hand after the jab. 
quickly to move forward. He normally really commits to a body attack. It might be difficult to do that at this range, the range that Plant is establishing. Normally he will just plunge in and throw a high number of punches if you check their normal work rate for CompuBox. Feigenbutz throws a lot more punches, but again, Style Spank fights, he's not going to come in here and be able to throw the same amount of punches he would against lesser competition. No, I mean, he's come a long way. I mean, he has to get warmed up a little bit. He's fighting out of his country for the first time. And, uh, uh, you know, he's coming over here for the win. He wants this title badly. He wants to make history. Caleb Plant is able to find a home for that right hand to the body. He's been able to do that all through the round. A very good, solid first round for the champion. As for Vincent Feigenbutz, again, coming out of Karlsruhe, Germany, he has fought, again, 33 professional fights in an eight-year professional career, but most of his fights in Germany, 28 so far in his home nation. He's had two fights in England as well. Wait, we'll travel back. It's like Indiana Jones. He'll travel back over to Poland. He had two fights there and has had one fight in Hungary as well. All bouts, though, so far in Europe. His first fight in the United States here tonight. And again, we may have mentioned this earlier, well, they went the other way, too. I thought they'd fly the other way. I'm surprised. Anyway, they brought his own. They brought their own water. They, they were worried about, can we find good food and, and all of that? And actually, the last German-born fighter to win a world title on U.S. soil, you got to go back to Max Schmeling, 1930 at Yankee Stadium. And it was a disqualification when Jack Sharkey hit him low. But you got to go back to Max Schmeling. Yeah, Stop Joe. That. Joe actually seen that fight. No, I, no, I still have the ticket stuff. <laughs> Did you agree with the DQ, Joe? I, no, no, no. I, I, in fact, I was yelling at the referee. I'm sure you were. Hey, young Joe Goosen, get lost, kid. Sell some papers. Round number two here, main event, Caleb Plant looked good in that early round. What do you think on, on the whole, Lennox? I thought that was a good feeling out round for both guys. And, uh, you know, hopefully the, in the, this round, obviously, uh, Caleb's starting the uh, the work off a lot quicker than it, than before, in the first round. Yeah, he came right out with that jab, and that was a, a lightning quick jab. Yeah, he came out through a nice combination, just to, you know, he's, like Lennox said, he's starting to get warmed up. And, and look, Feigenbluth is going to probably do the same thing. He's going to probably start trying to make a move, maybe to his detriment, because uh, like that, that's what I'm talking about. Like and quick left hand. Answer already, and then a little bit of uh, a few markings over the left eye of Feigenbluth as he's taken some hard shots already. Yep. Daniel's plant, you know, not electrifying power, but hard thudding power, Joe. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he will hurt you. He'll sting you with those shots. He will. And look, I mean... You say he may not have a lot of power, but, you know, a, a, a champion like uh, Uskanagi, he put down with that quick left hand. His speed uh, interprets into power, and um, he's powerful enough that with that speed, it makes it doubly effective. Not only that, you saw, you know, Caleb Plant throw that left hook, and he went right into a left uppercut afterwards within a, a hair of a second. He's really fast. I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, he does. Look at that hook. Oh, oh, hook and oh he's hurt. He's driven back immediately. Plant just seems to be getting better and better. A student of the game. And already Feigenbutz backing up and he looks stunned. Let me tell you one thing about Feigenbutz right now. His head is in one spot. It's not like he's moving it from side to side. This is what happens with European fighters. They keep their he uh, head in one place. Hands up. His hands up. He's, good. he's doing good defense. But he's got to throw some punches. Right now he's not throwing enough punches. Caleb's throwing all the punches. And a sharp jab again from Caleb Plant. And Lennox, to a point we made earlier, he's not coming over from Europe as we see many European fighters with 300 amateur fights. He's got zero amateur fights. Now, now I, I will say, Fagnus, we've watched tape on him, and he's tough as nails. You saw that he took that abuse, and he's determined to come back as best as he can. He keeps his hands up. He may not be moving his head a lot, but he keeps his hands up. And you got to be careful. He's a knockout puncher. And it's early in the fight, and he's still strong. Oh, you, you, you'd be worried about a counter, Joe? You, you well, know, you know, look, the closer you get to a puncher, the more dangerous it gets. If I'm in the corner, I'd just say keep him on the end of your punches. Keep doing what you're doing. You don't need to close the gap too close to this guy. Big round. Not yet. Yeah. Plant, he has just looked terrific. Picking his shots. He's able to hurt and drive Feigenbutz back. Feigenbutz, again, very tough guy. Able to come in here, weather that storm. But uh, Caleb Plant just looks terrific. Final seconds, round number two. Caleb Plant up in the ante, putting his foot down on the pedal. And impress here in Nashville.
Kayla Plant in round number two. Lennox able to throw with length and pop as well against Feigenbutz. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Feigenbutz showed good defense, but Kalem was able to get through with some straight, accurate punches. And one one thing Feigenbush is doing is like he took his eye off of Caleb. You can't you can't take go. your eye off of him. Here's that left hook right at the end of the round that uh, Feigenbush landed right on the belt line, and Caleb adjusted his shorts right afterwards. You know because uh, you're gonna feel that no matter what. He's a heavy-handed guy, uh, Feigenbush. So you know, like I say, you gotta be careful. Even if you're dominating a guy like this, he's a he's a one-punch knockout guy. So you gotta be careful and really. Take him apart before you go in for the kill. Look at Plant already starting off with an impressive flurry. Beautiful work here in the opening seconds. Able to establish himself in the early seconds of the second round and once again here in the third. That is Jordan Plant, formerly Jordan Hardy, part of our broadcast team here on Fox. Not tonight, obviously. Well, she's singing the national anthem today, and I was uh, blown away by how good she was, right? Did a tremendous job yeah. as well, and now married to Caleb Plant, and Caleb, top of the world, and here in Nashville, again, in front of his fans, staying focused and doing his work, and we mentioned it's cliche, but he's a, an honest, hard-working fighter. He says he stays in shape year-round, so by the time Lennox, he gets into camp, like, he's in shape and ready to go, it's a matter of fine-tuning and then trying to make improvements. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to stay in top shape all the time. Even, even when you don't have a fight coming up, you have to find out, okay, if I've got 15 weeks for the fight, then you have to kind of tailor your, your workout to be able to uh, peak by the 15th week. And he's uh, got a great trainer to do that. Great combination by Plant. Feigenbutch trying to block those shots, but he's a stationary target. He is, and, 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 and Caleb has is, is, uh, split the gloves a few times on him. But uh, Feigenbutch keeps his hands up good. He keeps on coming. He's a determined guy. And, you know, he's not just backing down and laying down here. He came here to win this fight. And uh, Caleb's going to have to work to beat this guy. And, his, and if he wants to stop him, he's going to have to really work hard. And there's a long way to go in this fight. So he's really got to be careful, too. You know, he's doing, he's doing the right things. He's, he's, he's winning the early, early rounds, which is important. But he's got to always stay focused. Well, this seems to be a class difference, but you're right, Lennox. And then if we've learned nothing else tonight with Diego Magdaleno and then also with Abel Ramos, and with one second to go in the 12th round, stopping Brian Perella. If we learn nothing else, you, you got to pay attention every second oh. in the full fight. Feigenbutz driven back and he's hurt. A hook lands by Plant and the right foot goes up for Feigenbutz. He's hurt. He got, he, hurt. he got hurt by a jab to start that off with Brian. And he gets a lot behind that jab. Full left pass from Plant. Yeah, he hurt him with the jab, and he followed up with that great combination. He's so fast. It's good. Nashville yes, fans with the USA chant. Now, this guy didn't have it bad enough. Wow, an uppercut lands, and then a hook. Beautiful combinations from Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant is determined. This is his hometown. He doesn't want to look bad. Final seconds of round three. Beautiful performance so far by the champion. A man who says he wants to unify, he wants to take on everyone in this division. And right now, Joe, you thought he was the best guy at 168. He's certainly making a case for that tonight. Man, he's already got Feigenbutz bloodied up right now. Here we go. Here's, here's the jab downstairs, right hand, and then a hook off the arm. But look how fast that went. See, those arm punches, that arm punches just open it up. Here's that jab that stunned him. That's the one that really hurt him. So you see him buckle right there. He doesn't stand up very quickly because he's buckled. And now Caleb notices that, and he goes in for this flurry right here. Here's the last flurry. It was a little uppercut hook. See, he threads the needle, then he goes around. He'll come back from the other side. Like I said, his IQ in the ring is so good. His hands are so fast, and he's got a great variety of punches that he uses in succession. He's a great, great fighter, man. He's only got 19 fights. Absolutely. I mean, Caleb Plan says wow, he is focused on greatness. And, you know, this is Feigen, what's his first American opponent. So, you know, he's used to fighting guys that are similar to him. So basically throw punches and block throw punches and block. This is a man, Caleb, moves around and shows you different angles. The funny thing is, is Feigenbutz has been fighting two years longer than Caleb Plant as a professional. But Plant has that yeah, amateur career. Yes. He's a national Golden Gloves yeah, champion, right. 97 amateur wins. And you can see, again, the, oh, yeah. the pedigree at work. Plant immediately goes to work, round number four. 
Heidi Andrell is standing by in one of the corners. Heidi, where are you? I'm over in Caleb's corner, Justin. I, you know, he has established himself early in every single round, looking sharp, as you said. What would you like to see more of from him? Uh, nothing more. Um, maybe finishing his combinations with a few more jabs. Other than that, uh, he's looking great. I don't want him to do more than he needs to do. I don't want him to use more energy than he needs to be uh, using. I want him to be economical, but everything I see so far, I'm happy with. This is the game plan right now? Absolutely, absolutely. And to make adjustments as, as needed uh, throughout the fight. And we'll continue to do that. Um, but other than that, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing from Caleb right now. He's, he's in complete control, and that's what we want. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much, Justin. Guys. And Justin Gamber had said that Caleb Plant had looked terrific all through the camp. Fellas, he said, I'm excited to see how good he's going to look on Saturday night. And he absolutely looks fantastic. Again, he's got a very stationary opponent in front of him. He's a strong, sturdy guy, but he's not lightning fast. But this is all Plant can do. And Joe, you've been in the corner a few times. I, this is the best possible thing you can say is the guy sits down and you say, beautiful work. I mean, that's what he's doing. That's right. And you heard his trainer uh, just say, I, I don't want him doing any more than he's doing. Because he realizes, he would say, hey, I need him to go in for the knockout if he thought this guy wasn't dangerous. He still thinks this guy is dangerous enough to have enough respect to have Caleb Plant keep boxing, being smart, and then, you know, you, you chip away at a guy like this until you finally get to him and then take him out. And that could happen maybe seven, eight rounds. Yeah, that's true, Joe. Uh, you know, Caleb could probably go forward if he wants to. I think it is a bit, a bit too early for him to go forward, but he's doing the right thing. You know, let a couple rounds go by uh, and warm up even more. And again, remember the fight where he took the title against Jose Wiscotegui. Again, it was Gamble who said, hey, let's, you know, just use as much as you have to because in the late rounds, Plant was kind of gassed. You know, he lost a lot of those late rounds, got bloodied up a little bit, but he had put enough rounds in the bank to win that fight and win the world title. Yeah. But you, you, it is smart. He boxed this lots of times, 12 rounds. Well, he was fighting a world champion that was a legitimate 68-pounder, number one, much bigger guy, and uh, very qualified, had a lot of skills himself. Pocketbooks there, misses with the right hand, Plant able to get out of the way very easily from that. That gives you an idea of the defense. And there's a good stick by Plant. Yeah, a couple of great jabs. Yeah, it just comes right out, like, it just pull-acts him, Lennox. Hey, I mean, uh, the jab looks sweet. Sweet hand, baby. <laughs> right. I tell you, you can't help but watch this and wonder, hey, Callum Smith is the Ring Magazine champ. David Benavides has a title. He's got heavy hands. And by the way, Canelo has no opponent so far. I'm just saying, this guy is out there. He is peaking, and he looks tremendous here in his hometown tonight. right now and if you know some of his story you know he has dealt with tragedy he lost his daughter Aaliyah at 19 months back in 2015 to a rare disease he promised that he would take a world title belt after he won it that he would win it and then bring it to her this is heartbreaking to watch obviously but Caleb bringing it to the gravesite of his daughter and she passed away Aaliyah in 2015 he wants to honor his daughter honor her memory there's his father Richie behind him so he is focused. He says, I do everything for my family. I need to provide for them, and I want to be great for them. It's a lot on his shoulders, but he is fulfilling that, Joe. I don't even know if the word heartbreaking is enough. Been through a lot in his life, but he has maintained his focus, and he has risen to the top of the boxing world. Great performance so far, but it's a long way to go against a very game Vincent Feigenbutz of Germany. There in the black trunks, opening combination by Plant again with the blue trunks with the blue trim. See the body shots landed by Plant, 18 to 7. A oh, good disparity so far. Look, he's just whitewashing this every single round. It's just a matter of how good he will look and can Feigenbutz stick around without getting too badly hurt. Well, I, I got to tell you, he'll probably be around for a while because he's keeping his hands up really well, keeping them in. He's blocking, you know, the wider shots that uh, that Caleb's throwing. I think Caleb's going to start going up the middle a little bit. Uh, after he touches the body with that left uppercut, keep threatening the, the middle with that right hand right through the gloves because he, he does keep his hands up and I'm talking about fighting, but very well. He, he protects himself well. He's got a good self-preservation mechanism. 
uh, that served him well through eight years of boxing. Yeah, the only problem with that, when you keep your hands up like that, some some of the punches you can't see. And Caleb is doing the right thing by mixing up the punches. You know, not being a headhunter, he's hitting the bodies, hitting both sides. So he's giving him a lot of different things to wor be worried about. Good oh. hard shots there. Yeah. Seems uh, reasonably straightforward so far, but let's check in with Marcos Villegas. Marcos, what do you have so far? I have 40-36. Uh, Caleb Platt's looking spectacular right now. He's mixing his offense in the top and the body, which is scoring uh, very cleanly. And, you know, the speed of Caleb Platt is really oh, killing a fight in You know, it, it, he has to throw punches to win these rounds, and I think, you know, there's a bit of a worry there. If he throws a punch, he'll get caught with something big. Marcos, thank you very much. He's winning every round. Just a matter of how sharp plants can stay through these rounds because it does take immense concentration to stay and fight at this level. And focus. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's a 12-round fight. And uh, a lot of people uh, forget that. You know, they can say he's winning five rounds, but he's got to win the, the rest of the rounds as well. Now, Feigenbush just ran uh, Caleb back a little bit. Two misses and one landed. A nice stiff jab at the end of the two-miss combo. But I, I think once Caleb starts walking... Feigenbuss back, and, and that starts to happen. I think that's when Feigenbuss will really get into trouble. Feigenbuss now trying with the jab, and Plant able to get away from that defensively. You can see, and to your point that you made earlier, Joe, this does look like a true super middleweight against a guy with a middleweight build. Yep. You know, Feigenbuss, uh, again, very conventional, very predictable, very sturdy, strong. We'll give him enough credit. And again, he does... You know, does reasonably well defensively with his hands up, but he's you know, he's fighting a world champion tonight. Listen, when you're when you turn pro at 16, all they're thinking about is building your body up. So you can tell this is years of being built up. Final seconds here, round number five. Caleb Plant having his way tonight, the second title defense. We will not be stepping aside. We're going to keep it right here, and we'll be able to go to the corners and listen in. And great work by Caleb Plant here, winning most every round, seemingly winning every round fairly easily. You know what I mean? Like you're doing a lot, and then you're finishing not as much. So I try to get a better uh, balance between, you know, with your output each round. And then you feel good when you get out there and you want to start. Round five. Round five coming up. Yeah, you're doing great, man. You can do this stuff. All day long. You can do this in your sleep. I feel great. Hey, you're in complete control. Keep doing what you're doing. Make a good balance of everything, all right? Now more combinations at the beginning of the round, all right? Not fewer at the end. Just a good balance all the way around. Keep working that stick up and down. Keep busting them up. You're doing great, man. Look at that. You're doing great, and Caleb Plant saying the main thing, I feel great. Yeah. Like the one thing, like, I feel terrific. And that's all you need to say, conserving the energy, put all the energy into the ring, and those sharp combinations. Listen, if he feels great now, he's going to feel great uh, even better. Don't leave it. Yeah. You know, I, I also think, so I, I saw something in the last round where Caleb got back into his own corner. I think he's, good, he's much better on the inside. We haven't seen it yet, but even if he were to play in close with this guy, I think... He'd probably fare well even as better, maybe as well he is, is doing on the outside. So I, I think eventually he might even feel that he could get on the inside a little bit and do some damage. Sometimes you can do more damage on the inside than the outside. Yeah, I mean, I think Fagin Bush is, is, is a bit stronger. Right now, you don't want to take any chances. Yeah, like, like right here. I'm rushing him and has him up against the ropes. Watch. See how good he's doing right here, and he's going to be able to counter him. See? That's why he's sitting there. That's exactly what I was talking about. Most of those shots are being blocked. That's right. I plan. Now they're talking to each other. Caleb's capable of holding his ground a little bit more and putting the guy in his place. But well, Feigenbuch was trying to really bum rush him in that fight. And you can see Feigenbuch's corner there, the guys in the black t-shirts behind him yelling. They don't like that level of disrespect. But there's only so much you can do. You, you've got to come in and throw punches. I used to like to train, you know, my boxers that box. I used to like to really get them very savvy out of the corner and on the ropes. So when guys thought they had you by pinning you on the ropes, they were sadly mistaken. They got beat up on the inside as well as the outside. Well, he, I think he was Caleb's able to block those shots. Yeah, he was able to block those shots and he can counter. But Feigenbutz, I have to give him credit. He's trying. Well, he's outgunned. There we go. He's certainly a class level below. But he is trying yeah, to impose his will in this fight. Oh, yeah. Well, because he's a strong guy and he knows it. He feels that if he can connect, 
he can hurt you. I mentioned he, had, he got stopped in one fight four years ago, and in that fight against Giovanni Carolis, you know, he got almost knocked off his feet. Like, I mean, his feet left the canvas yeah. and jumped up in the air. He got spun around. He was out on his feet. But you know what? That fight was stopped. He was still on his feet. Yeah, He's a very strong guy. Yeah, I remember seeing that fight. And uh, the referee, I think, stepped in a little early. Should have given him a little bit more of a break. But, uh, Especially in the title fight. Yeah, because um, I remember... I remember my title fights. I wish the referee could have gave oh, me a little more. You <laughs> Good chat there by Fagabuts here in the sixth round. Now, I'm really curious to see what happens when Caleb does sit on the ropes like he has, and instead of just blocking all the punches, then coming back with short, cute, quick uh, uh, com uh, counter punches. Malik Walid there, referee, doing a great job. Yeah, that was strong instructions there, where you get a good combination by Plant. And Plant, uh, very sportsmanlike, listening to those instructions, but it takes a strong hand in there to make it clear. Good jab to the head and then body by Caleb Plant. Plant able to slip those jabs easily. Beautiful defensive work by the champ. And here you see Caleb blocking most of these punches on the ropes. Vincent trying to catch him, but, you know, not getting through. You know, Caleb is showing his ring generalship. And it's Valentine's Day, so he's giving him a couple kisses. <laughs> nah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The international language so, of right. romance. <laughs> But but that that little flurry kind of it, you know is what I'm saying. I think if uh, if Caleb would have actually tried to counter off of there, I think he would have been done quite well. So when he does get pinned, I think he should hold his ground, counter more, then get back out and go back to boxing again. But when you do get pinned, don't be so anxious to get out without making the guy pay a little bit for getting close. To yeah, I, I mean I agree with you. Caleb's just not taking that chance right now. He doesn't need to take that chance. He's doing, like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Both men are ready to go, standing up, and there's the belt. They were both ready, and Feigenbutz standing between rounds the whole time as he tries to get as engaged in po as, as possible. Look, he's getting out gunned here. 101 to 23 and punches landed, according to Copybox, and that seems to be an accurate reflection of the fight. So Caleb Plant just uh, putting on a tremendous performance here. It's a matter of how much can Vincent Feigenbutz take, and can he cause any damage himself? Marcos Villegas, all six rounds so far for Plant. Great body shot. I gotta tell you, you, you pointed out uh, Malik Walid, the referee. I think he's doing a great job. We're gonna be staying out of the action. No, no, yep. He's only get getting involved when he has to. That's a great referee to me. Even the way he did that show, just clapping. You don't have to that's be right. you don't put your hands on him, let him know. He's very demonstrative, and that's what you want in a referee. By the way, I ran into Jack Reese, you know, just behind there as between fights. And I, I had to say to him, good job on that, you know, again, Richard yeah. Steele for years had to deal with the whole uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. Uh, Meldrick Taylor fight, right. but the referee's job is to be there for the health of the fighter, and he stopped the fight if you're just joining us. With one second to go in the 12th round, Abel Ramos knocking out Brian Perella. It was an incredible come from behind knockout. He needed a knockout. We called it in the 10th round. We said, look, he needs a knockout to win this fight. There was no doubt. And again, Jack Reese is not the timekeeper. He's the referee. Correct. Right, well put. And Jack Reese doing a very good job, although there'll be some upset people around here and in the Perella camp. That was a good jab by Feigenbutz, by the way. That look, he's able, to, able to snap Caleb Plant's head back a little bit. Yeah, he's been really, you know, bum rushing uh, Caleb this round. And Caleb has to be careful. I mean, you know what I mean? You, you can't take your eye off the prize. You got to stay focused and uh, make sure your hands are up. You can't get caught by no silly shot right now. Oh, hard hook there on the top of the head. That could have hurt Feigenbutz. You can. It looked like it messed up balance. his legs a little yeah. bit. You get off balance, you get hit like that. Tyson Fury got hit in the side of the head. The first knockdown from Deontay Wilder, a week away from that fight. That was the first knockdown in that fight. You get hit there, strange things can happen. Yeah, Deontay can like just breeze by you and hurt you. I mean, he is a powerful guy, but I, I get what you're saying. But I got to tell you, sometimes when you get a guy that starts getting brave like Feigenbus is doing, and of course he's brave to begin with, but I'm just saying, just starts trying to put more pressure on you and, and assert his will on you, sometimes you got to meet that pressure. 
you know, like that right there and not give up so much ground. And just trust in your skills like that. See, I'd like to see Caleb do that more often. Hold his ground and beat him to the punch and stop that pressure that he's putting on. Two crisp jabs coming from Caleb Plant, though, as he is able to keep the intensity here in round seven. That's the challenge to him so far. Yeah, Caleb's not having a difficult time moving around. I mean, he does it naturally, and he's using up the, the whole ring, and this is what he's doing well. You know, and in his defense, Lennox, yeah, you're you know, right. back in the old days, you didn't say, hey, take a step to the right, now step toward me. No. He said, just step toward me. That's yeah. right. Now he was going to do a cartwheel. What do you want from the guy? That's right. Sometimes they didn't even say step towards me. They just wipe your gloves off. And like, oh, the other go, go get him. Listen, oh, yeah, that's all old days. As a boxer. Old days, two years ago. <laughs> as a boxer, you feel that you're okay, but then your legs is not telling you you're okay. By the way, Joe, did you hear what you just said to me? Lennox, what? You that you're 100% right, Brian. Can you, did you, and you wrote it down. I wrote it down. I want you to, to repeat that. Yes. I would like that. And then be ready to repeat that next week. You can frame it and I'll autograph it. Thank you. <laughs> Round eight, Caleb Plant looking like he is on his way to his second title defense, doing outstanding work against a, a game and rugged Vincent Feigenbutz of Germany. Uh, but it is uh, unlikely he's winning any rounds. Good work there, Feigenbutz jumping in with a one two. And it was a quick one two, it was straight two down the line. And Caleb just, you know, stepped to his side and made the power go uh, to the side. Was a good jab there. A bunch of those shots were blocked, but not that jab. That was able to split the guard, get right through. Good defensive work as well. Again, this is exciting. His plant is on the way up. He says he wants greatness. He wants his name to live forever. I mentioned the other champions at 168 pounds. And what is so exciting about that heavyweight title fight is you have the two best in the world. All respect to Anthony Joshua, who has one of the belts. And it is exciting for fans to say, hey, this guy isn't just a titleist. He's the champ. And Plant might be the best at 168. Maybe it's Callum Smith. Maybe it's David Benavides. Can I mention Canelo is the middleweight champ, but he can certainly move up. So exciting times here as we are seeing fighters cross the aisles and make great fights. We'll see it next week in the heavyweight division. Good left, left combination. Yeah, Plant has been using his speed this round and, of course, defensive prowess, uh, as always. But he's, he, he landed some very, very effective shots against Feigenbutz. But I tell you, Feigenbutz is not really being deterred. He keeps coming, and he's, he is throwing hard shots. He's trying right there. He was hooking off the jab earlier, about uh, 30 seconds ago. He's trying to find Plant's head, but he's having a hard time really zeroing in on it. And very good work by Malik Walid once again. As they were locked up in the middle, he said, hey, fight out of that, fight clean. Yep, beautifully done. No need to break them up. You don't have to get involved. And the fighters aren't clinching, let a box. I agree with you 100% again. Wait a second. <laughs> Lennox, hold on. You take <laughs> a I, I said it with a question mark. <laughs> I didn't hear it that way. 100% right again. Final seconds are You take your win to where you can go. Oh, good hook by Fagenbus. Going to land that on the cheek. See how emboldened he can get with that success. His corner is screaming. Plant tried to answer in the final seconds. Beautiful uppercut by Caleb Plant to punctuate that round. There he is. He's been in Brooklyn a number of years. Again, there is a big Polish community there. And again, the way he boxes, he attend, again, he's not going to win a bodybuilding competition, Joe Goosen, but he is a very good and skilled boxer, and he might be a future opponent for one of those champions. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, look, he's, he's undefeated. He's got 15 knockouts out of 20 wins. And you know what he told me in the ring after the uh, Areola fight? He said, I needed this fight. Now, I think he meant... I needed the spike to motivate me to train harder. And if he does do that and trains rigorously, this guy could go all the way because he is a he's a powerhouse, man, and a moose. The only thing is what? go all the way. To get all the way, you gotta beat a guy who's six seven or six seven or six nine. Yeah, he's at a disadvantage in that in that play. He's 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 got a great eagle, he's got a great chin, he's got a good punch, and he's Oh, Kane okay. just caught him real good. And a right hand as well. Fight it, but he's hurt. His it. head is getting rocked. Plant comes out under control, but firing. And another hook. He peers in closely in a three-punch combination. Those landed. Beautiful jab as well by Plant. Feigenbuchs looks to fire back. Wow. 
sharp work from Plant early here in round nine. Lennox, well, if you're in that situation, like, man, I almost had the guy out, but now I'm expending a lot of energy. Do you say, so I just, you know, can I put it into third gear, or do you say, no, let me knock this guy out? What do you think? No, sometimes, you know, sometimes you can put it into third gear. Like, 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 uh, like you said, he's tough. You know, you can't take no chances because you could punch yourself out. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take, take it easy. That was a hard jab too. Joe Feigenbutz back. You see the blood on Feigenbutz's face now. Well, let me tell you, Caleb's trainer told him the right thing. Go out there, start your combinations early, and then kind of uh, throw less combinations as, as the round ends. Feigenbutz's face now, seeing the effects. He is a very tough guy, and to that end, you wonder, Joe, at what point would his corner think? Hey, you know what? We're not winning tonight. What do you think? Well, yeah. are you there or are you not there? No, listen, look, they're already there. They know he's not winning this fight. The next question is, okay, can we keep this guy safe? Can we keep him from getting That's what I'm saying. Out? Like, yeah. at what point do you think, hey, you know well, what? Not our night. Look, it, it depends here. on what, what Caleb Plant does. If Caleb Plant keeps delivering this type of punishment... And his hard shots again. He stays on his feet. His nose looks it. broken. There's blood flowing out from Feigenbutz's nose. So he is getting busted up, and you can see Malik Waleed is taking a close look as well. I'm just saying, we're reaching a point. He hasn't won a round. His face is getting rocked and busted up. Maybe you stop this fight at the start. Look at him. No, he, he's still throwing hard punches. He threw three jabs. He tried for the right uppercut. Unfortunately for him, Plant spun out on him and avoided the right uppercut. I think the people that will stop it before the referee does will be the corner. Look, he landed a left hook on Caleb. That's the first left hand he's landed on Caleb. Yeah. This is Caleb who's going to head back. Yeah. Caleb who's going to go for it soon. Maybe not now, but he's going to go for it in one of these rounds that's coming up. Well, he's doing real damage in this round. I mean, he is snapping his head back. It's target practice. This is what I was talking about earlier: is to start forcing your will on a guy like this. Because see, he's much slicker on the inside. Hard body shot by Plant, able to land there. Feigenbutz close now. Look, he's trying. He's extremely game. Ooh, Good hard body shot again by Plant. And Caleb's staying close to him now. He's got his confidence back again. He feels good being in there. So he doesn't need to move around that much. Well, man, right, he takes Joe. the starch out of him so he can, he, he's safer in there because Feigenbutz is he just got firing back as hard. He can't. And they wow. kiss each other again. Look at his face. I mean, I think that's a broken nose. He's bleeding. From the nose, his yeah. eyes are swollen. Now, I, I think they're having a discussion in that corner right now. You know, if you don't get something done, we're going to stop this fight. Yeah, which is the, the step before you get to, I'm going to stop this fight. Now, on the other hand, what have we got? Tenth round coming up right now? You okay? Okay, here we go. There's that right hand lead right over the jab. And then here goes these combinations. Once Plant starts throwing punches and you don't defend yourself, he's going to keep punching. And then he threaded the needle there with that left uppercut to top it off. There's the body shots. See, so he gets you thinking wide, then he goes up the middle on you, and then he keeps finding new spots. He's got a great variety of punches in his bag. There's his wife, Jordan. Excited to see her new husband performing so beautifully here tonight. I'm just saying, when I, when I see a head being snapped in three different directions within a 30-second period, I'm thinking, but, how, how much but, do we need but to But, Brian, wait a minute. We saw that with Perella uh, again. Oh, it was not uh, a again. beating like but this. Oh, what he was, it was doing. It not a beating like he, this, Joe. What he was doing to, uh, to Ramos? He wasn't he battering Ramos to that level. Lennox, you what do you think? I think, oh, I think Caleb's going for it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Lennox is ready to move on. All right. I got that 100% now. <laughs> Caleb is feeling good. He's throwing some great punches and he's throwing some great combinations. And he's and he's feeling the win. Feigenbutz able to throw an uppercut there and try to answer back, but he eats another body shot. I'll tell you what, his corner, Feigenbutz's corner, just uh, telling our own Heidi Andrew that his nose is not broken. So all right, he's bloodied up. Uh, we'll see what Feigenbutz has to say about that after and what uh, they'll say at the hospital because his face is getting busted up. Again, when Feigenbluch is actually covering up, he's missing some of the punches. He's like, he can't see some of Caleb's punches. That was a dangerous right hand. You're right, Joe. That, that was a short right hand right off the shoulder. There's a good right hand by Plant, but Feigenbluch still reasonably dangerous. Now look, and it is a world, I understand, I'm not saying, hey, let's stop the fight, the guy's getting hurt. I know that it's a world championship fight, so you might let it go a little longer. But I'm wondering, when a guy hasn't won a round, you know, you, you have to start thinking about it. 
Oh, Caleb is looking sweet right now with these combinations. He's doing the right thing. He's, he's bringing him to the body and to the head. And Feigenbutch is getting worn down again in his one loss. He was able to stay on his feet, but got stopped. Yeah. Again. Let me tell you, Caleb can do what he wants in there right now. He's, see, he's, got, he's so Caleb, far ahead. Did you see him make that fake and, and Feigenbutch went for it? It was just when you can do yep. that to a guy. And, 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 and make him fall for just a simple fake. You know you got him. That's a tremendous performance. Beautiful uppercut by Plant. Again, he comes off an easy win over Mike Lee where he dropped him three times in the third round. Is he talking to you, Joe? Yeah. He's saying, mixing it up? Yeah. What do you get a call for? What combination? Well, I, I think he's doing kind of what we talked about earlier that, you know, once he gets close to him, He'll, he'll just outgun him, he'll outmaneuver him, just like that. Three punch combination, and oh, again, another I'm three back-to-back -back -back combinations. If Caleb steps it up, he could stop this man. Yeah, well, That's lead is saying. looking closely. Right hand there by Feigenbutz, yep. answering back. Still a lot of time left in this 10th round. So Plant right goes on. to work again. This is where you can really hurt And Molly yes. Perry says, That's it. That's enough. And I like agree. I said. A virtuoso performance in his hometown. The champion of the world at 168 pounds in Nashville, Tennessee. They get to see their hometown kid come back and be victorious. Extremely impressive work by Caleb Plant. And very Plant. impressive, very impressive. I mean, uh, unbelievable. He did a great job in there. He looked terrific, fast, sweet, good on his feet, great defense. Hey, what, what you saw him do, really, he did everything and anything exceptionally well inside outside boxing defense counter punching is brilliant it really is respect there for plant yeah. with feigenbutz's corner again outstanding job there by plant again they had said uh feigenbutz camp that uh there was a lack of respect the trash talk they're not used to i don't know what they're reacting to plant isn't really that type of guy maybe they heard something else but nothing but respect here and respect to feigenbutz as well who did the best he could and was extremely rugged and eventually needed to be saved from himself. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the referee, you got to give it to, to Malik Walid. He stepped in at the exact right moment. I agree. Let me see. Let me tell you, he's seen. He's never seen a boxer like Plant. No. So this is the first time, and he got well surprised and schooled in this particular fight. I'll tell you, Plant has got a really incredible future ahead of him. That's. You just saw him just really do it all from from the from the close quarters to the to the distance uh, game. He, he just looked masterful. He's peaking. I mean, he's 27 yeah. years old. I mentioned earlier, he seems to be getting better and better with each fight. He wants to improve. Let me tell you something. A fight between David Benavides and yep. Caleb Plant. That can happen too. We've been told, hey, that fight can happen. Yeah. It would be tremendous. To me, that's a pay-per-view fight, let me tell you. Yeah, let me tell you, the speed of those combinations by Plant, unbelievable. Sweet! That is a hometown success story. Back here live in Nashville, Tennessee, and Caleb Plant retains his title at 168 pounds. And Lennox Lewis, he just put in beautiful work from the very start, and oh, yeah. it kept increasing the output. Yeah, this is a, this is the shoe shine right now. Excellent job by Malik Walid ending this fight. I agree, Joe Goosen, at the exact right moment when the punishment was just too much. Yeah, that, that last uppercut is what got uh, Malik Walid's attention, and he jumped in because that head snapped back. There it is, the IBF belt. Michaela Plant, respect between kid from Nashville and the man from Karlsruhe, Germany, who came in. Total punches landed 202 to 47 in favor of the champion, Caleb Plant. Power punches, wow, 152 to 19. It was all Caleb Plant seemingly winning every single round. Just a commanding performance as Caleb Plant retains his title. Here's Jimmy Lennon. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 23 seconds in round number 10. Our referee in charge, Malik Walid, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. And still, the undefeated IBF super middleweight champion of the world, sweet hands.
go to Heidi Angel in the ring. Heidi is there with the champion, Kayla Plant. Thank you very much. We've got your grandfather, your father by your side for this historic moment for you, defending your title here at home in front of this crowd that was on their feet in the third round chanting sweet hands. How much did they fuel you in this fight? Say again. How much did they fuel you in this fight? Oh man, I was super fueled. I could have went all night. The whole city came out. Nashville, stand up! You were, it was going to be the jab. It was the jab, but it was also the combinations, the uppercuts. How confident and how great did you feel out there tonight? Man, I felt great. I was relaxed, sharp. I told you guys I was going to stop this uh, fight before the 12th round. I want to dedicate this fight to my daughter, Aaliyah, who's in heaven. I want to dedicate this fight to my mother. I want to dedicate this fight to my grandfather and dedicate this fight to the whole city of Nashville. Certainly an incredible crowd here. For you, I know this is your 20th win to start 2020. How would you like to see the rest of the year progress? Everybody knows I want that unification fight with David Benavidez. You know who the best 168 pounder is. If you want that, you got to come see me. I've been wanting that fight, I've been asking for it, and I'm tired of waiting. Order my fight against David Benavidez on Showtime Pay Per View now. You ready for fight now? Fourteen and zero. 13 wins by knockout. He is 19 years old. There it is in the tail of the tape. And Jesus Emilio Bajorquez, he is 33 years old, a bit shorter at 5'8". A lot more experience in the ring, but Ramos is the kid on the rise. Again, 19. Family of fighters. His uncle Abel is a top pro as well. His father is training him. Jesus Sr. Jesus Ramos back here on Fox. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. in the ring. Jesus Ramos Jr., 14 and 0. Was that you whistling, Joe? Is that your accompaniment? Yeah, how did you know? Well, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it's a little quieter. Again, I haven't uh -huh. explained to people. Yeah, there's no fans there, and we're at the uh, the Shrine okay. Hall again, but there's no fans, so when you, you whistle it's along a, with the music. A very famous we're song, hear it. <laughs> very famous song by Vincente Fernandez. Okay. And Excellent. Chris Chris Ariola was just playing it in the gym the other day. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, no, you had, you had perfect pitch, Joe. <laughs> Brian Kenny with Lennox Lewis, former heavyweight champion, and uh, Joe Goosen, trainer of champions. And here is 19-year-old Jesus Ramos Jr. against Jesus Bohorquez. Bohorquez uh, lost his father only two days before he signed for this fight, his father Emilio. And that's why he's requested that he wants to be known as uh, Jesus Emilio Bohorquez in honor of his father. So going through a lot in his life. But in the meantime, he gets a shot at a kid, big-time shot on TV. 
Yeah, and right off the bat, Bajorquez is walking, you know, down Ramos, which is kind of a role reversal. It's usually Ramos coming after you. Yeah. Right? Because he's so big and so strong. But I, I think it's wise because, um, you know, what's his name? Bajorquez. Bajorquez, I'm sorry. Bajorquez is a veteran. He's been around a long time. He knows what he's doing, and... and uh, He's he's actually a very qualified fighter. He's got a lot of a good variety of punches, and uh, I, I just think it's smart that Ramos takes his time as well. Yeah. yeah, Ramos. Ramos is usually the guy to your point, Joe. And this is 147, but if he's 140 or 147, he's usually looking like the bigger man, and he looks like the bigger man here yeah, he as huge. well. He's going to grow into that size, that frame. But he's a big, strong kid. He will. He's only 19, and he he really has the body of a 68, 75 pounder. You know, when you stand next to him, you just realize just how big he is and how he makes that 140. I, I really don't know. It's crazy because he's a great he's a great puncher as well because I, I say he's a banger. When he starts to bang, he throws some good combinations, mm -hmm. and they're coming with a, a, a thump. Bajorka is already moving uh, to a southpaw stance here. Bajorka, to your point, Joe, you're talking about his career. He turned pro in 2006. Yeah. That's a long time ago. Yeah. But after a loss in 2012, he left boxing for seven years. He did. And he's 4-0 since coming back, but that's a long time to be away. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, you know, it's like trying to go back to school after you've been out for a year or two. It's, it's you know, imagine being out for seven years. But, you know, if you're determined enough and you are – Determined to get it done, which he's done. He's gotten into great shape, and his trainer, uh, Chris Martin, has worked very hard with him, and they came here to win. You know, when we talked to them earlier, they were they really had a lot of time to prepare for this fight, and they studied Ramos, and, uh, you know, we'll see how this unfolds. It's, it's a 10-round fight. Right. I was going to say, 10 rounds is a lot of time to be patient. Ramos is, is doing just that. It's a very exciting young prospect. Tremendous power, still growing. And also, his third fight in six months. We're getting to see these guys grow up like Vito Milnicki right in front of our eyes. Final seconds of round number one. And Ramos patient so far, eyeing his man, probing with the jab. Final seconds. And we're back in Los Angeles after this. Jesus Ramos traveled out to Colorado Springs for four weeks for this camp. This is the third time he's been at Triple Threat Boxing Gym training with guys like Terrence Crawford, Maurice Hooker, Robert Brand. I asked his father, Jesus Sr., about that experience, and he said really what it's done is made him think differently. He said when you can get in there and make – you can't make mistakes against those guys because they'll capitalize on it. So when you're able to correct your mistakes in the trenches in sparring, that's only going to benefit him in this fight and the future fights, guys. Wow. I mean, Terrence Crawford, Maurice Hooker. Yeah, you better think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, better, better think about what you're doing every day, every yeah. second of every round. I, you know, two of the top yeah. talents. Terrence Crawford, one of the best pound for pound in the when world. He, Maurice Hooker, a da Joe, a dangerous guy with the right, long right hand. Exactly. When he mentioned, you know, uh, Terrence Crawford, I said, well, what, he was there. He goes, no, I sparred with him. I go, you sparred with Terrence Crawford? I, it's, a, it's a heck of a... An accomplishment, to tell you listen, the truth. Listen, if you want to be the best, you got to fight with the best. And he's doing a, uh, a, a smart thing by fighting and sparring Terrence Crawford because he's, he's one of the best in yeah. the world. So there's a lot Lennox, of things he can learn from that. Of course. Yeah, Le Lennox, as long as we're quizzing you, yeah. um, when you were on the way up, did you get any... Like, uh, who was like the biggest name that you sparred with while you were still kind of a you know not a star yet? Did, Razor did you do any of that or no? Razor really? Ruddick. Okay. Yeah, he was he was actually my sparring partner. Oh! For the oh wow! Down he goes, Ramos with the thunder. Yeah, uh, he's gonna have a hard time getting up. He's gonna be really wobbly from this. You see the cut on the bridge of the nose. Looked like a great Tom right Taylor hook. taking a, a long look. And Tom Taylor right to do that as well. See if Bajorquez can survive. And this is the thing Ramos, about Ramos. So patient. Yeah, Ramos throws great punches right now. Oh, Tom Taylor says that's it. Yeah. And, it, you know, I seen it was going to head, head that way because Ramos seemed like he was taking it easy. He was really just feeling them out in the first round. That's and what then, he always does. Yeah, and then yeah. the second round, he knew what to do. And he went in he there did. and threw that punch. Good call. And, and, the, and the thing is, is that I, I like what Tom uh, Taylor did because I'll tell you why. Bajorquez... You know, is an older guy. He's 33. Yeah. But he was stunned still. Yeah. And he was frozen on those ropes there. He would have been a sitting duck for a big, powerful southpaw 
like Jesus Ramos, and I and I, and I think he did him a real big favor yeah, by no, stopping that the, fight. The, the ref ref knows who's in there, and he did a great job stopping that fight. You're right. That was a, a big knockdown. You could see the blood on the bridge of the nose from that shot. Ramos, by the way, that's his second straight 10-rounder, and he's never gone 10 no. because he keeps putting guys out well before that. But he's still in his formative stages, and yet very impressive and easy work for Ramos tonight. That was his biggest shot at Lennox. As I said, Ramos seemingly can hurt you with any punch that he throws. Yeah, he showed some good poise here. He was taking his time. You know, he was just... Show, oh man, well, that's when he threw that right hook. Three, and you know what? He changed four, speed. He was going five, slow, slow, and then all of a six, sudden he came out with that right seven, hook. Nobody's seen it, not even his opponent. And this is the finish right here where this is not good for Bohorkas. Ramos would just team. Well, fans, we have the time of 1 minute 44 seconds in round number two. A referee in charge, Thomas Taylor, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of knockout and still undefeated, Jesus Mono Ramos. Hey, boxing fans. It's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for El Bandera Roja to reign or for Sweet Hands to snag the W, you can bank on action with DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers can bet $5 to win $150 in bonus bets if your fighter wins on a pre-match Moneyline bet. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet $5 to win $150 in bonus bets if your fighter wins. Action's so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? Tape time. Joey Spencer is up first. We get right to it. He's only 21. He is still undefeated. 13 and 0. Nine wins by KO. Limberth Ponce is 30 years old, more experienced. 18 and 4. Both about the same size. But again, Joey Spencer, the top prospect, opens things up tonight here on Christmas on Fox. We go to the ring, and here is the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome from the Prudential Center here in Newark, New Jersey. Premier Boxing Champions presents a big night of action coming away. Fox PBC Fight Night. Introducing our three judges scoring from ringside. We have Henry Grant, Ron McNair, and Robin Taylor. All right, fans, here we go with our opening attraction on Fox. Middleweights in the ring scheduled eight rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing silver trunks with gold trim, fighting out of Moline, Illinois, by way of Acapulco, Guerrero, Mexico. He weighed in at 155 and one half pounds with a record of 18 wins, four losses, 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing Limber, El Gallito Ponce. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, this eight round attraction, wearing white trunks, hailing from Linden, New Jersey. He weighed in at 156 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 13 wins, no losses, nine wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the undefeated young contender known as the small town soldier, introducing Joey. Spencer hey. and Shoot introducing him. our referee in charge he'll be giving instructions after the introductions Eric Dolly okay gentlemen you already know the rules let me remind you to keep it clean protect yourself at all times and obey my commands at all times touch gloves good luck to both of you ready to get underway closed captioning is available for tonight's telecast or if you'd like to hear the broadcast in Spanish, you can click over to the simulcast on the Fox Deportes app. Joey Spencer, 21 years old. He's trained by his father, Jason. That was the man in his corner. He's already married. His wife is expecting their first child. Solid family foundation, and he behaves like it. He's always focused. He is always in top shape. Going up against a veteran here, and he looks to complete, again, another level of progression as he moves up the list at 154 pounds. Round number one, Joey Spencer in the white trunks, and Limberth Ponce in the white and gold trunks, scheduled for eight rounds. Now, we already know a lot about Joey Spencer, and he's, he's a very athletic fighter. Uh, he's on a roll. He's undefeated. 
But Limberth Ponce is actually, you know, we watched film of him, Lennox, you and yeah, I, yeah. and he's he's a tricky guy. He, he's got a nice variety of punches, Brian. Uh, he can bring the left hook to the body, uppercut. So he's he's really a, a, a very well-skilled guy. This is a big test for Joey Spencer, and if he can dispense with a guy like Ponce in uh, short fashion, he's, he's on his way. And Ponce also has quick feet, and he's, you know, short. Oh, he's going to be going to Joey's body or trying to get to Joey's mm. body. Yeah, Ponce, by the way, uh, born in Alcapulco, Mexico, but uh, fought as an amateur out of Quad Cities, Moline, Illinois. Still lives there. He's 30 years old, but he had a good amateur career. 95 amateur wins, won Chicago Golden Gloves in 2012 at 164 pounds, beating Nate Gallimore, by the way, who's gone on to be a good pro. Well, it's very rare for a guy to go from the Quad Cities and go up and win in the big city. Mouthpiece came out on Ponce. Joey, go to your corner. Came sprawling out right Mouth near piece. us. Let's go. Rinse it out. In that corner. No, no, no. Well, that came out on I'm Joey. Right yeah. Put it in his mouth. That's odd. How did that come out? His father Jason right, puts it back in. Joey. We'll take a look and see exactly. What, did a punch take that out? I just didn't see it. I, 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 it, it might have, but I doubt it. It, it probably did because that's usually when it comes out. But he has, see, look, oh, his mouth open. He just yeah. yeah. I don't remember him getting popped in the yeah, mouth. There was a punch, oh. but he threw it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, it's bad to get hit with the hook right after you spit out the mouthpiece. Yeah, terrible. But again, Limberth Ponce, good amateur background, but it, at this point, there's a full-time. You know, he works full-time, trying to keep up with his boxing career at the age of 30. It's tough to make money in this business if you're not on the A side. And there's that athleticism of Joey Spencer right there. You know, Ponce came at him really hard. He got under one right hand, and then he slid out under a hook. I mean, that's really nice stuff early on from Joey Spencer. See, when it, when you first start a fight, you got to keep your hands up because that's when the other guy's strong as well. It's a hard right hand to the body by Always Spencer. Keep your hands up and try and keep that defense intact. Ponce trying to do that come in. With a solid foundation, a jab to the body by Spencer. Uh, but a low, uh, low work rate so far by Spencer. He's outlanded Ponce only eight punches to four. Yeah, yeah. he's made a couple feints, but he didn't do anything after the feints. Well, he's got to do something after the feints. Joey Spencer's landed a couple good punches. He just landed a nice little short right hand against Ponce about five seconds ago. Then he landed a good right hand to the body right before that. He's, look, it's an eight-round fight. This is going to be a long fight for him. Uh, and, you know, he's got time to work on things here. So, uh, you know, he's trying to set up some counter shots, and I think he's looking really good right now. And to your point, uh, Joe, that you mentioned, look, you walk in there it depends on who you're fighting right not just the style but the level of experience and Ponce is not a guy that Spencer can just walk through so he's taken a good long look outworked him there slightly in round number one outlanded him as we are underway here on Fox and thank you very much guys here at the Prudential Center Joey Joey Spencer and his wife as Brian mentioned are expecting their first child in the springtime but Joey Spencer said if he's victorious tonight he wants to advance to fighting 10 round fights and he said that his right hand is fully healed and he's going to be a force to be reckoned with as we head towards 2022 back to you Brian all right Ray Flores thank you so much yeah Joey and his wife Tabitha expecting their first child again he's 21 married uh they live in their own place now they make a little money as a professional fighter and uh, they are expecting their first child, they say in about uh, May. And uh, she's out here, uh, expected to be out here and uh, watch this fight. So again, it is a strong family foundation in a number of ways with the parents, with his wife, uh, soon to have a family. Uh, but it's just a matter of Joe Goosen. How good or great can he be head, as he moves up? He's still 21, but you have to be very fluid to beat the top guys at 154 pounds. Well, right now, you know, Joey Spencer's looking really good. It, tonight will tell a big tale, you know, uh, what his next step should be and will be. If he can dispense with Ponce, because, you you know, we talked about it. He has a great amateur career. He's got 11 knockouts and 18 wins. Uh, he, he's in there with a formidable guy. So tonight we'll tell a big tale, Bry. It's a hard shots there by Spencer, able to land his combinations. He's outlanded Ponce as well. Ponce, by the way, hasn't fought in two years before coming back this past June. And he had a, a, an easy win third round TKO in Davenport, Iowa against a guy with 32 losses. So like he is barely fought, but he comes in here tonight in pretty good shape and you can see He's experienced and can handle himself. He is experienced. Joey Spencer just went in there with a right hand to the body. And while he was throwing that right hand to the body, Spencer had his left hand down, and Ponce threw a short right hand. Now, did it land cleanly and hard? No. But it was right there. He, he timed it. So he's a smart guy, and Joey's got to be careful about making mistakes like that. Right hand to the body there by Ponce. Yeah, I usually see Joey uh, throw a lot more jabs in his, in his fights, but, uh, you know, 
He's throwing them sparingly in these last two rounds. That's a good point, Lennox. He's outlanded uh, in this fight so far. But Jabs outlanded Ponce 5-1. to one. He's only thrown 27. We're in the second round. But, right, he's usually just a little more high energy and a little yeah, more I mean, active. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Double jab really well. Ate a right hand there. Got countered by Ponce nicely. That's the thing Ponce did earlier. Now, sometimes when you want to throw a jab, the guy doesn't cooperate too much, and it doesn't sit still. And, and you know, Ponce's got, you know, he's got that little movement, that little head movement, left and right. And I think it's, it's uh, the timing is going to have to be mastered by uh, Spencer tonight, like that right there. So instead of going for the head, he went for the body. Uh, he, he, Ponce is not making it easy for him to land a jab. But a little bit earlier, see, I like what Spencer's doing right there. He threw a left uppercut earlier, landed it. He went to the body right there with the left hand. This is what he needs to do is mix it up, mix up his punches. And uh, that could really get him a, a big win tonight if he uses both hands instead of the last fight, just the left hand. Remember, he yeah. wasn't using the right hand. And it's also important for him not to throw just one or two punches. He's got to throw combinations, three, four, five punch combinations. Well, he promised that. Let's see if he's going to come through for it. Spencer throwing uh, those counter shots, looking to catch Ponce in between punches. He's been able to hit him with some strafing shots, but nothing to do much damage so far. Final seconds now of round number two. Joey Spencer opening things up. We're scheduled for eight rounds here. It looks sharp, but reasonably slow so far. We uh, sincerely hope you're enjoying your Christmas day. Merry Christmas from all of us. This is nice, Joe. I'm going to send this out next year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. I want, I, Instead I, of your family, you want to send I us? Know, I, we can do both. <laughs> I, if I can get Jimmy Lennon in that red jacket, then I, I definitely would. Joey Spencer and his family are here. Spencer family is here from Linden, Michigan, making the trip out here. Again, they travel with him. Younger brother is a fighter as well, now a professional fighter. Again, trained by his father, Jason. His wife, Tabitha out here as well in New Jersey. Then they'll celebrate Christmas after it. Not here in the building at the moment, but possibly, you know, resting, as he's expecting, Joe. So that's what, that's what happens. Round number three, you understand that sharp yes, jab there. I do quite well. By Joey Spencer early on. You know what's different here, and I'm, I'm with you, Lennox, on this. In the last fight in July against James Martin, James Martin, very different fighter, more high yeah, energy, yeah, traditional boxer, true. puncher, you know, kind of a straight conventional jab, double jab. And Spencer boxed with him, high energy. Yeah, this a lot of work. pace is vastly different. Well, he's taking his time, he's picking his shots, he's, you know, getting used to his opponent. Well, he's, uh, he's not getting hit, but he can step it up a little bit now because he's not really getting hit. Um, well, I'll also say, just to throw in, James Martin was the guy who defeated Vito Milnicki Jr. So James Martin was no joke coming in. No. They had a, he was overweight. Milnicki did not want to fight him because he was overweight. So Spencer, who's one weight class up, said, I'll take him. And he fought him and fought him very well and boxed beautifully and boxed Joe differently than we've seen. Well, yeah, More yeah. of a boxer than a slugger. But but again, but again when you went in that last fight, uh, he, against Martin, he was fighting a guy that has no knockouts. And, you know, you're going to take more chances. Right here, Ponce's got 11 knockouts and 18 wins. So he's he's obviously, and I think it's smart for him to take a little bit more time and be a little bit more cautious early on until you get the timing down. And look, we're not even at the halfway point of this fight yet. Uh, the second half of this fight, Joey Spencer could have him figured out and then maybe start unloading some heavy artillery. But, you know, again, uh, his last fight, he wasn't facing a guy that had any knockout, zero knockout. Right. But the guy could box. He yeah, could box. Was, was but different, but, was but you can, you can go style. after a guy right. like that without worrying too much about getting countered and cracked and dropped. Well, Ponce has fought once in two years, though, too, Joe. I, mean, I understand that, but that doesn't mean he's not strong. Right. Yeah, he's definitely got a punch. You, you always have to worry about a, a guy that knocks out people's power because he can do that in one second. Oh. No end in one second. Oh. Bobbled there a little bit there. Spence got to him there. Yeah, he did. Good right hand by Spencer. And Ponce like. comes back in, trying to fire some straight up shots, earn some respect back, create some space. Joey's getting a little bit more comfortable uh, putting some harder shots together and holding his ground, you see right here. I think he thinks he can beat uh, Ponce to the punch. Uh, with his speed right now, and he's got Ponce backing up. Hard right hand there on the exchange. Final 30 seconds of round number three. Limberth Ponce out of Quad Cities, Moline, Illinois. Again, this is a big moment for him, getting his shot at a young prospect on the way up. Big moment for him taking the fight on Christmas Day. 
Joey Spencer can really step in with that left hook, right hand combination, which is working perfectly for him. He needs to throw it a lot more. Five seconds, gentlemen. Final seconds, round number three. Joey Spencer with some ah! success there. He has out jabbed Ponce 13 to 1. And here was a right hand, I believe, that wobbled Ponce coming through and sent him back. I caught on the. Uh, Caught, wow, caught on the gloves, but then wobbled, even though he blocked it for the most part. That type of power from Joey Spencer. We're back in Newark on Christmas Day in a moment. Five heavyweight fights, Luis Ortiz, Charles Martin. You can scan the QR code on the screen. Lennox is doing it right now. See, Joe, that's how you order room service when you're in, you know, you're at the win or something. What's he ordering right now is what are you better be ordering <laughs> the pay-per-view, Lennox, if you're going to do that. I like Joe earlier said, I, I usually have someone do that to get the menu. Right. But you can scan I, the QR I, code I, on the screen and you can yeah. buy the pay-per-view. I'm not good with that. Right now. Well, you but, know, but hey, do that. Brian, did you notice that, and we've talked about this before, where Spencer really hit the gloves of Ponce, and that rocked him through yeah. the gloves. You, you don't you know? normally see that. You don't usually you usually that, have right? to hit the head. You're causing straight, yes. another man to hit himself no, in, in the head. head. Right. <laughs> exactly. Hard hook there by Spencer. Round number four, Joey Spencer in the white trunks, and you have Limberth Ponce in the white and gold trunks. Sharp hook after the right hand by Spencer. Joe, you ever have a, your own boxer concuss himself? Oh, you mean like hit himself in the eye or something? Yeah. Missing a punch on the speed bag or yes. something like that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it, and there's nothing more embarrassing, and it always hurts more when you hit yourself, right? <laughs> well, Lennox, the, the question, that the follow-up is, did you ever do that? Hit myself? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, come on. No, because I knew it would hurt. Oh, he, what, he's, he's <laughs> invulnerable to, yeah, well, he's perfect? Okay. You're right. <laughs> so just Joe's fighters to, to do that. Okay. Yes. I, I get it. So far here, get a slower pace for Joey Spencer, but uh, he has thrown nearly 120 punches so far through three and a half rounds. So the work rate isn't slow, but the pace itself is not as frenetic as we've seen Spencer before. Yeah, he's taking his time. I think he realizes this is an eight rounder and, uh, you know, he wants to look good throughout the whole eight rounds. It's a good point, Lennox, too, because he's 21. Yeah. Again, as I often point out, I liken this to baseball. He's a guy in his age 21 season. It's a very young guy. There's a long way to go before he even hits his prime, and there's a lot to learn there in the ring. He was a very good amateur fighter, obviously, like he was national level fighter as a kid. Coming out of Michigan was not a hotbed of amateur fighting, and then came up and was a blue chipper pretty much right away, and was able to blow out lesser opposition early in his career. Now it's time to step up and fight more experienced fighters. Yeah, I like it when Joey puts his hands up every so often instead of always having that low left hand. Yeah, I agree like with that, you on that. You know, because, you. you know, it, 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 what it does, it makes you more cautious. When you have your hands up, you feel more confident to go ahead and maybe make some harder moves against the guy. Right? He also didn't have to move his head and work as hard. He just block it because those shots Ponce was throwing weren't so devastating that oh, I've got to get out of the way. Well, the big thing is you're not in the position to throw punches back because you're in the position just really to block punches and you're not really coming back with any punches. Nice jab there by Spencer and another one. You now know, snapping and bouncing that jab off Ponce's head. You know, I always say, like, you know, if you're na naturally with a low left hand on the outside, I always say the closer you get to your opponent, the more the hand should come up. Uh -oh. hey! That's right? me. Yeah, of course it's it right. 101. Yeah. You know, a lot of people always said I always kept my hands down, but they didn't realize as I got closer to the person, I always kept my hands up. That's right. Here's Jason Spencer in the corner with his son. Okay. Yeah, it's happening. It's a process. It's happening. How you feeling, Joey? Great. Good. Hold your eye. For a little bit. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Shook him up with your legs, and you broke his rhythm, and you started hitting him with like four or five jobs in a row. Good job. One more. As we listen in there, and Joey Spencer is there, uh, he did have a, a broken hand coming into his previous fight and hurt his, his, his hand, so you wonder, all right, is there any reticence uh, to throw it? His father, Jason, had told us, that, look, once we got that out of the way, he just wants to see his son, Joe, loosen up and just relax 
He's finding the weight, the conditioning, and he says, hey, last couple of fights, I think we've come in on fire. Head movement is there, defense is there, and very low-key corner, didn't you think? Yeah, it, it, it is a low-key corner, but, you know, sometimes that's better than an excitable, you know, hard oh, yeah. corner. Oh, right oh, hand staggers geez. Ponce. Spencer with the explosion. Moving in now, Ponce firing back, clears his head. That was a right hand from Spencer, so it appears to be all right. And yeah. that, that was the punch that he wasn't throwing in the last fight. He was all left hook, if you remember, Bright, last last fight. Leonard. That's because he had pins in his hand. Yeah, his well, right they were out by then, okay. but he said he wasn't confident in the fact that it was healed completely. He goes, after the fight, I realized I could have thrown it more than it was just me well, psychologically. This hesitant. right hand looks like more of a confident right hand. Yeah, right that, hand. Ex that exploded, no question, Lennox. There, another right hand. Ponce, Ponce able to weather that storm pretty well. Eats a jab again from Spencer. I mean, look, look. At, I mean, you can tell Spencer. Look, he's he's really he's built really well. He looks like a strong guy. He's throwing. He throws with speed. He's got great jump on his legs. In other words, he springs into you fast with that one-two, and that that even puts more. Oh, oh, he's wobbled. He's hurt. Right hand after the hook. Trying to stay on his feet. Down he goes. That's it. See, that it is over. It is that right hand that. again. Well, so it, was the left, it was actually the left, right hand hurt him. Yeah. The left hook really put the final touches on him the, in, the, in the first series. Eric Dolly didn't even count. No, no. He was. That was the explosion that we were talking about. And, and waiting till the second half of the fight, right? Waiting for it. And Joey Spencer once again delivers as he usually does as a professional. Wow, he put both hands together in this fight, which he didn't do in the last fight. They were fast, they were powerful, they were on point. He was really, see, and I told you, this fight was going to tell a big story about Joey Spencer. He's really coming together now. Again, it's a learning experience. What what a great ex uh, uh, night of experience for him here to take away with him. Because I'll say this about Ponce, three of his four losses have been by split decision or majority decision. He normally doesn't get blown out. No. And he just got blown out. And he it was did. that left-right combination. It was there all night from the beginning of the night. It, it really was. And, it, and, you know, it showed up in the last round. Yeah, yeah. it really was. And, but again, we're going to see that replay. Watch this little left hook he hits him with after that one, too. It's what really buckled him. He was buckled, and that really just finished him. Boy, you, you rarely see that where a guy is kind of in suspended animation, yeah. where Ponce was just, you know, taken out of his uh, senses for a moment from those shots by Spencer. All right, nothing really happened there until that right hand. Now that hurt him. Now he's going to hit him with another after, after this series. He's going to hit this is the same punch right there. That's just a closer look. But it's the next series of punches. He's going to come in with that right hand Lennox is talking about. And here you're going to, you're going to see the second knockdown. There's left, that left hook, hook right on the chin. Yeah, that was the hook. And I was his equilibrium about. was gone. Referee's looking at him. He's trying to hold, hold on. He can't. Joey comes back in that with a right hand and, and a left hook, hook yeah. and takes him out. Referee steps in. Boom. Last right hand to Boy, seal wow. the knockout. And here we've seen Joey Spencer, another young prospect. He's 21. He has answered the call in every bout, and he was explosive and spectacular here in New Jersey tonight. Let's go to the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 24 seconds in round number five. Our referee in charge, Eric Dolly, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of knockout and still undefeated, the small town soldier, Joey Spencer. You know, even blue chippers need to improve, but Spencer has done that. You do not want to miss my fight against Caleb Plant. Tune into my fight against David Benavidez on March 25th. Buy it now on Showtime pay per view. Let's take a look at our tale of the tape. What stands out to you? For me, the reach. Col Colbert's reach is, you know, he's got six inches in difference there. Um, of course, the pro experience. Uh, Beltran's got 12 years compared to Colbert's four. Um, at the same time, Colbert's got, got the edge on the age. Uh, you know, father time is catching up to Beltran, and, and we're going to see what these two fighters got tonight. Yeah, and also the age. Uh, you know, 30, 30 year difference, it could be a, a factor in this fight. It's an eight year difference for Beltran and Chris Colbert. But Colbert comes in and he's very flamboyant. He says that, you know, he's going to have something special for the audience. There is Miguel Beltran, who is getting ready. He's actually trained by former world champion Brian Valoria. 
Brian's a very good trainer. Very good trainer. And Beltran 0-3 fighting here in the United States. And we asked him about this being his fourth fight. He goes, look, he goes, I've taken fights in the United States on short notice. But now I'm going to rectify those plans. And he's actually, Beltran is the cousin of former world champion Ray Beltran. And here is his opponent, Chris Colbert, known as Primetime, walking in with a football and a tribute to Deion Sanders. A lot of flesh and pizzazz does Chris Colbert have. I feel like he's getting ready to take the field for the Atlanta Falcons, guys. Look, I mean, it's, it's good to have, to have a showcase like that. He's still young in his career, man, but you can just win the fight because if you lose, if you get beat, everything, this is all for naught. It's all he looks. Col Colbert's having fun. I, 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 I like that. his charisma, I I, you know. I liked I, him when I heard his comment. I, when we talked to him yesterday, I liked his confidence like that. But, you know, you got a lot to do. You got a lot to prove. It, it was a great show from the locker room to here. Now let's see him box. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues here in Bakersfield, California. As we now have 10 rounds, this in the super featherweight division, as it's all being sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. Your three judges scoring this matchup will be Abe Bellardo, Ralph McKnight, and Alejandro Rochin. Your referee in charge when the bell sounds is Marcos Rosales. Introducing Furs, fighting out of the red corner. He comes in wearing the white with the gold, weighing in officially at 132 pounds. His record, 33 wins, 22 of those coming inside the distance against seven losses. Joining us from Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros, aquí está Miguel. Barterito Beltran Jr. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in wearing the red and the white, weighing in officially at already 132 and one half pounds. As a professional, he's undefeated. A dozen victories, four of those coming by way of knockouts. Joining us, from Brooklyn, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the fast rising Chris Primetime Colbert. Unified rules, a part of our co-main event. No three knockdown rule, no standing eight count. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee or the doctor can stop the fight. No decision if an accidental foul stops the fight before four rounds. Chris Colbert says, I'm like Pernell Whitaker. Against Beltran, I'm too fast, I'm too sharp. My boxing IQ is on a different level. He's going to find out. We'll see if his prediction reigns true against Beltran. Well, to co compare yourself to uh, Pete Whitaker, man, well, I hope you live up to that because Pete was special, man. Very, very special. For Miguel Beltran, he spent the first half of his training camp in Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico with his dad, and then he spent the rest of his camp training with Brian Valoria at the Churchill Boxing Club in my new adopted hometown of Santa Monica, California. Yes. So he spent half of his camp down in Mexico and then went to Santa Monica to finish off the camp training under the guidance of former world champion Brian Valoria. And that gym is owned by Peter Berg, the great director Peter Berg. And Mark Wahlberg's also a uh, owner of the gym. A yeah, quality boxing yeah. gym? Yeah, yeah. And with Chris Colbert, though, out of Brooklyn, New York, trains under the guidance of Ariolano Sosa. And Sosa's very busy tonight. He will be in our main event yeah. because he's the lead trainer for Peter Kid Chocolate Quillen, who's up next against Alfredo Angulo. Uh, yeah, no, no. Oh. Uh, but, uh, this is a quality match, a uh, quality card all, all from top to bottom. This fight here, though, Chris Colbert, last time we had him on, he impressed me with his speed, his boxing uh, IQ. 
I, I enjoy watching Chris Colbert. He he, yeah. uh, he he puts on he puts on this charisma. He's got this this shine to him. I, I love the tribute he's got to Deion Sanders tonight. The name uh, Prime Time fits him well. He looks fast. He looks sharp. Yeah, it'd be a hell of a thing if he knocked if he wound up on his ass though. Well, for so we Chris Colbert, this is his fourth fight of 2019. For Colbert, it's his first fight here in California. The last time we saw him was back in June in Las Vegas. He had a unanimous decision victory over Alberto Mercado. That was on the undercard of Jermel Chalo, Jorge Cota, in late June. Second 10-round matchup for Chris Colbert. Nah, Chris Colbert is a sharp fighter. We switched him. You know, he started off as a southpaw. Now he's going orthodox. I like to see him stick with what, it, which is natural, uh, which is natural style, which is a southpaw, I believe. Chris Colbert, a big NFL fan, he says he's friends with Deshaun Jackson. Also watches his New York Jets religiously. Jab followed by the right hand, but back comes Beltran. Nah. Uh, Chris Colbert, you know, he's smart. He's a very sharp fighter. He's very precise with his shots. Yeah, he's just a good-looking fighter at this point. Beltran throwing a right hand. Jab as Colbert looking to establish himself. Oh, there's a right hand. Down goes Beltran, and this one is over. A one-punch knockout. Oh, my goodness. Chris Colbert has put out Miguel Beltran. Whoa! A candidate for knockout of the year, Colbert. Very respectful. And Beltran, they are attending to him, but look at the adulation on from Chris Colbert. Gentlemen. What a knockout. That was something. That was something. Colbert. What a performance, guys. And we are still... The ringside physicians attending to Miguel Beltran, Jr., It looks co will come back and get the official particulars. Chris Colbert, a knockout against Miguel Beltran. Welcome back to PBC Fight Night on FS1. Chris Colbert going and embracing with Miguel Beltran to look after him. He's thankfully okay after that vicious one-punch knockout. A candidate for knockout of the year. And let's take a look and revisit it. The big right hand by the man known as Primetime. Well, you know, it was, you know, he fainted him, but he hit him right near the, right near the temple, right near the right temple. It looked like it was a quick jab with a big right hand and landed right square on the temple. Oh, 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 actually it was closer to the back, the neck, the ear, closer to the ear. Wow. Face wow. first again, the jab with Colbert yeah. placement of the punch. Boom. Yeah, top, yeah, right, 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 you know, behind it. But right in the temple area, but close to the ear. Worst type of place you get hit. And Colbert jumped on the rope celebrating. He goes, that is for my one-year-old son. Well, he's something, this kid, geez, I, I joined him last time, I joined him now. I can't wait to see him again. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 57 seconds of the first round for your winner by knockout and still undefeated, Chris Primetime Coberts. Guys, talk about for another candidate for knockout of the year. He's got the style, the swag, the sizzle, and he's got the pop. The hostility between these two guys is real. Tonight. My objective is putting a beating on Caleb Plant. Knockout artist and two-time title holder David Benavidez <laughs> takes on the smooth technician and former champ Caleb Plant. I need to teach him a life lesson. Sit down, sit down. And no one's backing 
down. I'm gonna beat the living shit out of you. You're not gonna do nothing. David Benavidez versus Caleb Plant tonight, live on pay per view. Yes, indeed. Jose Valenzuela is next. He is only 22 years old. He is a power punching kid. He's got a reach advantage in this fight coming up against Austin DeLay. DeLay is 14 and 2. His two losses coming to high level talent, Chris Colbert and Diego Magdaleno. He is only 26 years old, still entering his prime. It's a bit taller, but Valenzuela is the guy on the way up. Let's go to the ring, get the official introductions with Miguel Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, the action continues here in Minneapolis as Premier Boxing Champions presents our co-main event live on Fox. It is all brought to you by TGB Promotions and Warriors of Boxing. This next bout will be eight rounds in the lightweight division. Our three judges ringside are Scott Erickson, John Mariano, and Tim Taggart Sr. The referee in charge of the action is Charlie Fitch. And now introducing first in the red corner, wearing the blue with the gold trim, he weighed in at 134 and three quarters pounds. With 14 victories, including 10 by knockout, opposite of two defeats, fighting out of Nashville, Tennessee, presenting the fighting pride of the 605, Austin Dulé. And now introducing his opponent in the blue corner wearing the black and blue trunks. He weighed in at 134 and one half pounds. His record stands undefeated, 10 victories with six coming by way of knockout. Finding out of Los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico, presenting the unbeaten Jose Rayo Valenzuela. Good evening, Austin. Good evening, Jose. Gentlemen, you both know the rules. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch close now, come out fighting at the bell. You know, Valenzuela has a distinct style. You'll see it if you haven't seen it before. It's calm but violent. <laughs> he is able to stand in. Uh, he even describes himself as having you know, good eyesight, uh, good eyes in the ring to be able to see what's in, coming in front of him and then firing off vicious shots. Austin DeLay has made a good account of himself against high-level competition. We'll see if he can hang in there tonight. Scheduled for eight, we're underway round number one. Hard counters already from Valenzuela. Yeah, there's no feeling out process here right now. And Valenzuela uh, is taking the initiative. Although DeLay just came out and landed a nice left hand. Uh, Valenzuela is, is, boy, he's, he, he just hurt Dulé to the body. He reacted to it uh, yeah, very strangely. Yeah, he, he's thrown already. He's like oh. 11 punches, Joe. I think like five or six already, but a good counter there by DeLé. Yes. This gets Valenzuela's attention. And that's what but I said. real body work coming yeah, that, from Valenzuela already. Yes, and DeLé, though, again, he's a fast starter, and he did just clip uh, Valenzuela with that, that overhand left. And he buzzed him a little bit. I, I could see it in the eyes of Valenzuela, but he recovered quickly, and he's right back on the attack. Yeah, Valenzuela said too late, doesn't like getting hit to the body. That's why he's going down there so often. He's touching each side to see which, which is the weakest side. And that's smart, especially in the first Ooh. round. Try and get that together. Start to the body. Boy, Valenzuela. He's able to land as well. Yes. One uh, thing to go there, but it's one thing he's, he's able to land so heavily. And look at this, 22 punches landed by Valenzuela already. As good of a boxer as DeLay is, and Joe, he is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you can weather that storm, but you can't get touched by Valenzuela. No, he, he got hurt there. He may be going out. Yep. Smacked already. DeLay Two, is hurt. And down he goes. Three, four, Points to the back five, of his head. Clean, six, but he got hit seven, in the front as well. Eight. Step yeah. to me. Valenzuela okay. was celebrating. Goes. He got up on the ropes. Bucks. He started, you know, turned his back to the fighter, but he's got delay hurt. Yeah, delay got Valenzuela hit. Valenzuela back to work. Yeah, delay is already Ooh. saying he got hit in the back of the head. He kept complaining about that, but he's getting hit with so many shots. I think the, the back of the head shot was the last shot, but he got hit with three punches before that. That's right. Ooh, boy. Oh, that's good it. Good body work, good hard right hand as well. Body shot, and down he goes Four, second time five, in the round. 
six. It's that liver shot. Seven, He's not getting up. Eight. Nine. Oh. Oh, boy. Step to me. <laughs> he got up with one second to spare. Just in time. What? Yeah. That's about as late as it goes. That's a nine and a half count. He's been down twice. 30 seconds left. Yeah. That, Another body no. shot by Valenzuela. No. And a body shot with the right hand. Three. Delay goes down again. Four. And he's pointing Five. to the back of his head. Six. But he went down from the body Seven. Eight. Well, he's getting the mandatory eight count. Charlie Watch. Fitch isn't messing around. He's not taking any guff from Delay. Uh, Three knockdowns in the first round. Delay hurt again. Staggered briefly in the final seconds. We got oh. here. Three knockdowns already. Oh, Excellent. man. Delay able to answer on Valenzuela. But wow, I mean, you don't see that type of copy bonds discrepancy very no. often where it's 40 to 7 and three knockdowns. Wow, what a round. Let, let me tell you, Brian, that was an incredible round. Because as bad as Delay got laid out, here Watch we, this first knockdown right here. Hands. It's coming up. Uh, okay, here's here's Valenzuela. He landed a good right hook, left hand, buzzed him, went down to the body, back to a left uppercut, and chopped that head. Okay, now the last punch, he, it, it, it straight a, a little bit back there. There's another right hook. Here's the second knockdown. Now he's going to... He's going to drop a left hand right on the body. Bam, that's right there. That shock wave hits the liver, and then it, it paralyzes you. That's why it's so hard to get up. And here's the third knockdown. Went right back to that liver shot with that strong left hand. And then, boom, reaches around and throws the right hand there. But DeLay was still complaining about the punch to the head. Yeah, DeLay shouldn't really worry about the, that, the pun getting punched in the back of the head because the referee's not warning, warning the other guy, so forget about it. Concentrating on boxing and hitting the other guy. Oh, here we go. Let, let, let sort. <laughs> Six body punches in the first 45 seconds of the fight and 12 in the first two minutes. So, right. The, the punches to the back of the head are not the most dangerous thing for no. Austin Delay so it, far in this fight. Absolutely, and you got to remember... 41 to 9. I just want to point out the discrepancy again, Joe. I, I still yeah. have the numbers in front of me, but I mean, 41 to 9 in punches landed. That's incredible. 17 body shots landed in the first round. Yeah, no, Valenzuela, he's something else. I mean, you know, look, for the Benavides to take him in and to devote as much time they to, to this kid as they have, this is the reason why. I mean, he, it's obvious he's got it's something very game. special. He's he's almost like Pacquiao-esque. He just throws caution to the wind. Everything he throws is hard, and, he, you know, he takes a great shot as well. But he's balanced too, Joe, you're right. I mean, he's he's able to step up, he's keeping his balance. He was he had a very calm first round, as, as crazy as it seemed for delay. Valenzuela was just barely breaking his sweat, picking his shots. And he continues to do so, touching him to the body. Yeah, he's not going to back up against DeLay. Um, he, he boxed a little bit in his last fight, but there we go. This is going to happen all night long. Stagger. Oh. Again. Out on his feet, and down he goes. Fourth time he's been down, and we're only in the second round. Yeah, if he goes down Seven. again, they may stop this. I'll How tell you, you why. There's, there's, there's still a minute 30 Locked left in, in this round. All right. Yeah, Charlie Fitch. I'm keeping this close eye on this. Yeah. Box. Yeah. Yeah. There, there we go. Yeah. You, you, you have to, because he, he didn't react well to that last knockdown, so you're right. Right. As far as the motor skills, you have to start to worry. Delay has a lot of spunk. He comes back firing, but eats a shot already from the left hand. Delay's a bit frustrated because things are not coming together for him like he wants them to. So you see him knocking his gloves together. That shows that he's, you know, he doesn't like what's happening. He's, he's not being able to throw the punches that he wants to. Things are not working out for him the way he really wants them to work out. This is re this is really a beautiful this is really a beautiful street fight. Is what it is. I mean, it's, uh, these guys are just going at it, throwing caution to the again. wind. Yeah. No question. Valenzuela is pinpoint with that left hand. I mean, he throws such hard shots, and he's able to keep on balance and fire again. Final 35 seconds of this second round. And, and Austin DeLay, I want to throw in. This is a guy who went the distance with Diego Magdaleno and had a very crisp boxing match. That's a world-class guy, former world champion. And that's not all that long ago. No. So this is not no. just some guy coming in who's just going to get beat up. We did not Ooh. expect that. Oh. Yes. But look at DeLay. What, what a, what a, what a, what courage. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's taking some real hellacious shots here. That was low. Wow. And we're through two, and DeLay is...
is able to finish this one on his feet. He's been down four times. Austin DeLay is doing everything he can. And he is sucking in the air right now. He's frustrated, as Lennox had mentioned. He's been down four times. We're going to go back in that second round and look at the one knockdown in that round because Jose Valenzuela has so much power. Yeah, that was a right uppercut, left hand. He wobbled uh, DeLay with it. DeLay didn't hit the ground, stood back up, and uh, Valenzuela just teed off on him again. There he goes down. They see he didn't hit the ground. His gloves didn't touch, so it wasn't a knockdown there. But I got to tell you, Fred DeLay, uh, who's the father and corner man of Austin, you know, he stopped that fight against Chris Colbert when, when DeLay was taking too much punishment. So he's going he's gonna to be looking out for his kid here. If he doesn't see something coming from him, he's going to stop this fight if the referee doesn't. Yeah, and, and Charlie Fitch has got to be pretty close, too. DeLay has a, a oh. lot of heart, uh, but th that, that can be the worst thing for a fighter as well. And Valenzuela has so much power. But look at DeLay coming back off that. I mean, he countered like that right there. He, he's got, I mean, tremendous courage and guts, and he, he doesn't want to lose this fight. He's trying to win it no matter what. I, I got to give him a lot of credit for this comeback this round. Valenzuela. No question. Yeah, Valenzuela has to wow. be concerned when he throws his punches. Oh. You know, he might get hit with a punch. If he doesn't keep his hands up, after the has been able to land several shots. Another combination landed by Valenzuela. Valenzuela is just landing so many hard thudding shots. Oh, as Delay starts that was to a little low, over. real low blow That's by a shot. There. Yeah, that right, right Time. hook to the body. Time, walk it off. Yeah, he doesn't want to walk it off. He realizes right. he's got the his, his opponent hurt. Delay hurt, exactly. so he wants to keep it up. Yep. Oh, look at the. Oh. Delay hurt again, staggered again. Everything Valenzuela throws is with thudding force. That's Down right. he goes again. Fifth time and Charlie Fitch. No, no, not a knockdown. Well, that was because Valenzuela pushed him down. If he would have let him fall on his own accord, he would have called it a knockdown. But Valenzuela pushed oh, down on him. Joe, I thought, Good combination. I another hard shot. Hard shots again by Valenzuela. Wow. I thought he hit him with a body shot, and then he took a knee. He did. Oh, no, he no, he got, he got pushed. He got four in. knockdowns. He, he got pushed down. Right. Yeah. That was behind the back. Already. Oh my God! How many left hands can Delay take like that? It's it's amazing. You think he's going to go out or down, but he actually comes back with his own shots like that right there. He's trying. Man, a good hook. Oh, Final wow. minute. Wow. The third round. Look at the ball. Oh, that, that, that punch just landed. That body shot hurt him. He really reacted. To, Delay reacted trying to stay to on his it. feet. He's still fighting back. Nice sharp jab from Valenzuela. And a left hand gets himself back in position. Uh, this is like good exchanges between these two. This isn't the, uh, the, the, the the round of the year. This is like three rounds of the year right now. The first three rounds. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> From long distance, he hits Delay again with the left hand. Delay in trouble up against the ropes. And Charlie Fitch taking a close look. You better believe he is. Somehow, Delay has a little more fight oh. in him. Oh, look at that. Man. Long left hand from Valenzuela. Can Delay get out of this round? Yes, he can. Watch him, watch him. Yeah. Barely. Austin Delay is showing a lot of heart in this fight. Even though he's been beaten down, knocked down four times, oh. he is still firing back and has been able to land some shots. Look, a lot of guys would just drop from that left hand. Not Jose Valenzuela at this point in his life. And then from there, Valenzuela, Joe Lennox, so much power and so much poise as well. Yeah, these, these punches Multiple are having shots. a big oh. effect on him. And, uh, you know, even in this next round, you know, Wait he's got to be concerned. Doctor. Wait a minute. Doctor, where is the doctor? Charlie Fitch wants the position. Ten off. Ten off. No, no, no! No, Delay did not want that started. Why? He didn't even look at me. He didn't even look at me, son. He's going to stop that, rep. Well, now, why bring him over to the physician? Uh, if you have, either you have the answer, what's the physician going to see? I'll, exactly. I'll tell you what happened. Charlie Fitch walked over to the corner as, as Delay was coming out. 
Delay knew he was uh, going to take him over the doctor. He said, no, no, I'm all right. Don't do it. Fitch took him over there anyway. He was concerned. He wanted to see what the doctor thought. The doctor said, you know what? That's enough punishment. And uh, Delay didn't like it. He trained hard. He's got guts. He's got courage. He would rather go out on a shield like a lot of fighters would rather go out on their shield, Brian. And that, he wasn't allowed to let that happen. But then again, it's a fine line between courage. Well, Joe, can I ask you too, what, do, what yeah. do you hear in the corner as well? Because I was hearing things in the corner as well about, hey, you know, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. And he said, I can't. Yes. So I've just heard a bunch of things there where I wondered, is he, is he able, is he, he's trying, but is he able to have any success in this fight? Well, look, I mean, stranger things have happened, but it, it certainly didn't look good for delay, but he didn't want it to be stopped. No, no, and I told you the dad might stop it. And I don't think he protested too much about it being stopped. Back in Minneapolis, there's Jose Valenzuela and Austin DeLay. Look, any one of us and any of you at home could say Austin DeLay had had enough. I mean, we've got four knockdowns. He's getting drilled, taking body shots at will. What is puzzling, and we'll get into this, is the ringside physician right, not really doing an exam, but just having him walk over and saying that was it. So let's go into round number one, and fellas, take us through here. Balance, well, well great power punching. That, 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 was, that was the first one. Here's the second one. It was top to bottom work by Valenzuela. You know, oh. he'd hit you with the hook high, go back to the body. There's that body shot right there. That hurt him. He never went down, reached over, and hit him with that right hook to the body. But he had gotten hit twice to the body, once to the head, went down. And here we go. Here's the fourth one. Right uppercut, straight left hand. Now, he never hit the ground, never touched it. But so when he got back up from that little buckle, Valenzuela still tagged him again. And here we go, over to the corner. No, no, no! And what? Why? He didn't even look at me. Yeah. That, and, and, that's and, the one puzzling thing, Joe, in that yeah. normally, you, you know, you've been through this millions of times, normally a ringside physician will do an exam of some sort. Again, anybody could have stopped that. I mean, Fitch could have stopped it the, the previous rounds. It but, just looked different. What, Lennox, let me get you involved. What did you hear in the corner in between rounds? Well, well, yeah, he was taking some power punches, but in between, in the corner, I heard, I can't, I can't, and I know the referee was there listening, and the referee kind of walked over, and, and then after the bell rang for them to start again, the referee just brought him over to the dock, and the dock said, hey, you know, that's it. And I think, and I think the, 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 the dock realized that he was uh, getting hit too much, so he wanted to stop it. Right, which again, Lennox is is reasonably obvious. We, we, we saw that, but just usually done in a different way. Charlie Fitch could have stopped it, hearing what he heard in that corner as well. Let's go and get the official call from Miguel Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, after checking with the doctor, referee Charlie Fitch, called a stop to this contest with two seconds into round number four. For your winner by TKO and still undefeated, Jose El Rayo Valenzuela. Don't wait to order my fight against Caleb Plan on Showtime pay-per-view. should be an interesting fight. We go to the tail of the tape. Omar Figueroa, Abel Ramos. Figueroa, the older fighter, he's 31. Ramos is 29. Ramos is the taller fighter at five foot nine. Reach advantage, though, goes to Omar Figueroa. These guys have had their ups and downs. Ramos has fought the very best in the world. Figueroa just one loss so far. But Omar Figueroa at his best is an outstanding fighter, but we expect him to be tested here tonight against the very rugged Abel Ramos. Let's go to the ring for the official introductions and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California, Premier Boxing Champions presents the co-main event of the evening brought to you by TGB Promotions and sponsored by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Don't ignore that check engine light. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today and let them scan your vehicle for free. And brought to you by proper number 12 Irish whiskey, the finest, the tastiest, the smoothest liquid gold in the world. This bout is sanctioned by the WBA, the president, Herberto Jesus Mendoza. And judging at ringside, we have Carla Caiz, Max DeLuca, and Eddie Hernandez Sr. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. 
for a WBA welterweight world title eliminator. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red trunks with silver and black trim, hailing from Casa Grande, Arizona. He weighed in at 146 and one half pounds. His record stands at 26 wins, four losses and two draws, with 20 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the world-ranked welterweight contender, introducing Abel, Abelito Ramos. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, this world title eliminator, wearing purple trunks with black trim, joining us from Westlaco, Texas. He weighed in at 146 and one half pounds. His fine record stands at 28 wins, one loss and one draw with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the world ranked welterweight contender introducing the former lightweight champion of the world, Omar Panterita Figueroa Jr. And our referee in charge now to give instructions, Jerry Cantu. <clears throat> Keep second. Both you guys are real good right here. Gentlemen, you were giving your instructions in the dressing room. I want a good, clean, hard fight. You will obey my commands at all times. Keep the good to a minimum. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. Good luck. Abel Ramos looking like the much bigger man in this fight, but Omar Figueroa can really box Lennox. We had him on a Fox card at Nassau Coliseum on Long Island against Robert Guerrero, and Guerrero came in in terrific shape. He'd been rejuvenated, and Figueroa was just superb that night. Knocked Guerrero down five times, got a stoppage win. Figueroa at his best is an outstanding fighter. Well, absolutely. I mean, I was really surprised when I seen him. And he's got an unusual style, and it works for him for some funny reason he just he's been fighting since he was five years old Lennox he does things again you know like like Floyd Mayweather does you know just basically in his sleep he can yeah. he can box and just box you just things come naturally to him he doesn't have to think about it and he can box orthodox orthodox southpaw it's a weird style yeah, yeah he's already done it Lennox came in the southpaw there mixing moving trying to give Ramos a moving target Ramos you can see a much more conventional probes with the right hand Ramos, very rugged guy. Okay, he's 26, 4, and 2, but his losses uh, include to Jamal James, Regis Progre, had a draw with Maurice Hooker. So he is, it's, Ramos will fight anybody. His fight, uh, those guys are like class, high level championship fighters. Backs up now as Figueroa gets him on the ropes. Figueroa threw some good left hooks there. Powerful. He's coming in towards some powerful shots. Hard right hand there. A lot of those shots blocked. Some of them got through. Figueroa trying to get right in his grill. Immediately press the action. He doesn't want to give Ramos any room. He just wants to start the action straight away. Very aggressive. You're absolutely right, Lennox. You can see Figueroa now going in. Southpaw style. Moving his head. Looking for angles. Constant head movement, trying to weave his way in. Kind of a strange style. Ramos is looking at the style and saying, okay, let me figure this out. Yeah, right, like, what is he doing? Yeah. He's basically going after where he can see where he's open. You know, the body's open a little bit. He may, he, you know, it looks like one side of his face is open, but it's not because he's putting his right hand up there to protect the left side of his face. Right hand there by Ramos, able to land. Figueroa stood right in front of him. Good right hand again by Ramos. Just shot that out like a piston. And Ramos is sturdy. Conventional, sturdy. Nothing spectacular, but can be quite good. And does not stop and does not quit. He had a stoppage win over Bryant Perella with no time remaining in a fight that he was losing wide on the cards. Got two knockdowns in the final 30 seconds, and the fight was stopped with one second or zero seconds left. Stop, 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 stop. Interesting first round. Figueroa tried a lot of things. Reasonably successful, but Ramos got his shots in as well. 
We expected a competitive fight, and we seem to be getting it. That's one round. Okay, good job. Here. Deep breath. Hi, okay. Omar, you're doing good. Hey, this guy, when you make, when you put the jab in front of him, he doesn't do anything. He only does it when you're walking in without working. Sigue le pidiendo el jab. You don't have to hit him. All you have to do is just set it up. When you set up the jab, even just to distract him, he doesn't do anything, okay? And then when you're in there, smother him. Yeah. Hey, he's dropping his right hand. Every time you make a move, baja la derecha. I got it. Ese pinche gancho que le metes ahorita lo lastimaste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So keep looking for it. Hazle una, hazle una finta abajo y luego, boom, arriba el pinche cruzado. That's going to be your key champ. Let's go. Okay? Más agua. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Hey. Apunta ese left hook. Take it down, Mark. Take it down. La boca. And there is the Figueroa family. That is uh, Brandon there, who is in the black. His father there on the far left. Uh, young Brandon Figueroa, also a star in the sport. Outstanding young fighter. Uh, what I like there, Brian Kenny Lennox Lewis here ringside. Sean Porter will join us for the main event. What I like there is Joel Diaz gave him specific things that were working, what wasn't working, and what he wanted to do. Very specific. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's got to throw some left hooks in there and throw some body punches, really specific. Saying, hey, look, you, you're going to get hit when you're not jabbing on your way in. Good jabs there by Abel Ramos. Hand free, hand free inside, hand free inside. Constant head movement by Figueroa trying to work his way in. But he can't just walk in to Abel Ramos. You see that strip, that nice stiff jab? Again, when I say conventional, I, that's not an insult. He, you know, just jab straight out in front of his face, hard right hand that can pop you. <laughs> You've got to respect the man on the way in. Yeah, Ramos, all he has to do is he's throwing one punch, but he should throw combinations. Right hand there by Figueroa on the way in as they trade now in the corner. Ramos eats a hook and then throws his own hook. That landed too. Ramos spins him around, but Figueroa able to get out of danger. What do you make of that style, though, of, of just putting your glove up on the opposite side of your face, Lennox? You know, that's what I said. I, you know, I figured, how would I box a style like that? Basically, just throw combinations. Left, right, hooks, and, and right hooks. Left hooks and right hooks. Figure Body out. punches and mix it really up. You no, know, he, he just, he can't throw when he does that. Like, if he puts his right hand over there on the side of his, the left side of his face, not like he can throw a right hand. And he does it again. And he's got the left hand up on the right side of his face. Keep him up, Abel. Keep him up. Ramos now tries to the body. Halfway through this round number two. Good hook there by Ramos. Hard hook by Figueroa. Main event is next. Andy Ruiz, Chris Ariola. Ramos doing a real smart thing. Pushing. Pushing his opponent, making, giving himself some, some boxing room, some punching room. And Figueroa is still coming in with that weird style. Yeah, I mean, he clearly has done a few different things in training. Uh, again, he's been boxing his whole life. He likes to experiment. He's doing a few different things here, but trying to have a new defensive style. Nice pop right hand there. Quick short right hand, able to land. Ramos lands to the body. Interesting fight. Blocked that shot. Picked it off. So he's picking off shots with his gloves. Like Moving in, constant movement. See, that's the punch I like by Ramos. Seconds, Ramos throws that left hook. He's got to throw that right hook as well. Yeah, threw that right to the seconds, body. The Again, hard to hit Figueroa in the head when he's moving like that, but you can hit him to the body. The <laughs> idiosyncrasies. Now, Chris is getting into it right now. We're just down. We got, uh, what, one more fight before we go on? What, this what, is what it. We got here? This is the semifinal, Joe. This is it. Huh? What's that? That's the whole name. That's the Kome. Okay, yeah. so we're on next. Yeah, yeah. You're up yeah. next. Hey, Joe, we, yeah. we wish you the best. You look sharp. We like your fight outfit. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you, guys. Take care, Joe. Joe, Chris Ariola. good luck, fellas. Joe calling a good part of this card with us before he uh, went over with Chris. Okay, Chris looks focused. Oh, yeah. You know, not expending any ener energy right now. He's really relaxed. Again, we can talk to Joe, and you know, we know we're not going to get uh, any trade secrets in there. And certainly, Chris has to be completely focused. But you're going to have two determined men 
in there. And Andy Ruiz and Chris Ariola, is... that fight is up next. Good thing we told Joe. Hey, Joe, no other fights after this. You're, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> You're up. <laughs> Two minutes left here in round number three. Brandon Figueroa, oh, excuse me, Omar Figueroa. Brandon is here watching his brother. But Omar had said, hey, look, my job is to disrupt his plan. That's my plan. I want to disrupt what he does. I try to feel out what a guy is doing. But right there, Abel Ramos, able to fire off good combination. Look, he's got uppercut with the right hand, hook with the left. Yeah. And he, he's been effective with that. Yeah, Figueroa is not really being effective right now. Ramos is being effective. He's yeah. throwing some great, great punches. Figueroa needs to throw some punches. Yeah, Figueroa at this point is just staying on top of Ramos at close range, and Ramos is pretty good in there. Ramos is nice and tight, economical with his shots. I tell you, you know, Ramos is appreciating it, saying, hey, look, yeah, I'm here for real. Smiled at him a few times. You know, Figueroa, when he's moving on the way in, he's a little harder to hit. When he's standing right in front of him, Lennox, not so hard to hit. No, he's easy to hit right now. He's being very defensive. He's not really putting out on the offense. He needs to throw some good punches, some straight punches. Ramos is having an outstanding round. Look at that hard right hand lands. He's just been very consistent. Had trouble the first two rounds trying to find Figueroa, but he's able to land here in this round. Measured him and hits him with a shot. Creative in his attack. It's a good body shot with a right hook. Pops him with a short right hand just to touch him. And it may look like some of Ramos' shots are getting through, but, you know, Figueroa's defense is, is good. I, I don't know. Body shots, though, are scoring, Lennox. Yeah, Lennox. body shots are scoring, but, you know, he's, he's keeping that right hand up against his left side of his face, so he's not getting a hit on the left side of his face with that style. Again, we're not scoring the fight. Larry Hazard is our unofficial scorer, but I wouldn't be surprised if Ramos had taken that round. Uh, we heard from Joel Diaz, who I thought had excellent instructions in the corner for Omar Figueroa. I think we get more right now from Heidi Andrel. Heidi? Thank you very much, Brian. You know, uh, Joel Diaz I, and I had a very candid conversation yesterday, and he said, Omar Figueroa Jr. has taken 10 years off my life. This guy has, you know, with all of his ups and downs, he said, in fact, coming to California this time to train with him, he brought a scale to the airport. He said, you must weigh in at 155 pounds or less, or I will not train you. Omar weighed in at 153 pounds, exactly. And he so they went and they trained. He's worked really hard for this camp, and he told me, for the first time he doesn't have those injuries but he also was on weight on Wednesday that was the biggest difference in this camp he was able to rest this week eat meals drink water and he feels as though that's going to be the difference in fact in that last round I went over and asked him you know what he told him prior to that round and he said he's he told him to hold back a little uh, and Omar said he wanted to give it let uh, Ramos get his confidence so we'll see what he does here Brian a scale at the airport Lennox how about that? Yeah. And if you weigh, if you're overweight, get back on the plane. Imagine that. Well, the, I know they have scales there. That's a proper place to, to weigh your boxer. You know, you, let me let me weigh your luggage. Now you step <laughs> on the scale. <laughs> now you hop up. <laughs> yeah, wow. I, well, look, Joel Diaz, uh, I guess, has had enough of Figueroa coming in overweight. He did not look good in his last fight. Came off his first pro loss. Now again, that was to your Dennis Ugas, who is a top ten welterweight, but. Figueroa just lost wide on the card. Ramos, good hard right hand again. And Ramos starting to really impose himself on Figueroa in this fight. Yeah, Ramos is throwing some good straight right hands and some good hooks. You know, when I say things like consistent and workmanlike, Lennox, it sounds like it's almost a knock. It's not. He's there. He's going to be fighting his fight. And if Figueroa starts to go on the way and he gets popped with the right hand, maybe he moved with that. Maybe he got shook up. But he's there, and, and he's going to punish Figueroa as he touches him again. Yeah, I think he's, he's catching the vibe of uh, Figueroa right now and catching his rhythm, throwing some good punches. He's figured him out and what punches to throw. Oh, hard right shot there, and body shots from Ramos. They start to trade now. Good hard right hand. I tell you what, you, you were looking at Figueroa. Maybe he was paying, playing possum a little bit on that last shot. Let me tell that's you. still a scoring shot. See, Figueroa's got this style, and uh, I've figured it out now. It's called the TikTok. You know, it's going one side to the other. So he's basically saying, okay, 
you know, let me line you up. Because I know you're going to go from one side and to the other. Yeah, Lennox, you're absolutely right. He's able to hit him with that right hand. He can throw the uppercut with the body shot as well. Good hard right hand, strafing across Figueroa's Figueroa face. Figueroa is hurt right now. Drills him. Figueroa on the ropes. Ramos, short, tight with his punches and throwing hard shots. Ramos is coming, coming with that right hand and it's been successful for him. Figueroa, yeah, a little starch is out of Figueroa now, no question. He lunges forward. Not as cocky as he was early in this fight. Another hard body shot. Abel Ramos, hard shots going from losing rounds to landing, not at will, but frequently, convincingly, consistently. Uppercut lands again from Ramos. Five punch combination from Abel Ramos. Figueroa is getting hit. He needs to make his defense a lot better. Put both hands up. Figueroa is getting broken down, Lennox. I mean, he's taking a good beating in this round. He's still moving forward. Now he throws a good combination. Return right hand. And a right hand from Figueroa as well. They are trading in this round. But Abel Ramos has taken control. Hey, between rounds right now, we have a chance to talk to super middleweight champion Caleb Plant. Caleb, it's Brian Kenny. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Caleb, tell us about your future. How are you? How's your hand? And what are your thoughts about the future, especially with Canelo fighting next week? Yeah, hands feeling good, healing up. Um, wound up having to get a, a small incision made, but nothing too major, and everything's healing up. I'm already in the gym training and working. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to the future and what it brings. When do you think you can fight next? Um, plan is for uh, September so you know hopefully we can get everything worked out and get the fans you know the first undisputed super middleweight of all time and uh, you know everybody be able to see those belts around me so uh, yeah Canelo is fighting Billy Joe Saunders next week you're thinking you and Canelo in the fall you know if everything works out but regardless I'm looking to become the first undisputed super middleweight so whoever I have to fight or whatever I have to do to make that happen that's what I'm looking to do Caleb we look forward to that what do you think of this fight before we let you go how about this man a lot of action a lot of punches being thrown and um, a lot of getting hit too, but you know, it's exciting, so. Hey, give me one thing on the main event then. Ruiz Ariola, what do you think happens? Um, I think that's an exciting fight, a great fight. Um, I feel like uh, Andy's got a lot of juice left in the tank and um, a lot of momentum, you know, with his newfound team. And, uh, you know, he seems motivated and, and wanting to get back on track. So I got uh, Andy tonight. All right, Caleb, we look forward to seeing you again. We hope to see you again soon. Yes, sir. Thank you, Caleb. Right. Caleb Plant, again, super middleweight champion. Canelo Alvarez, who was in the camp with Andy Ruiz. Ruiz turned himself around with Eddie Reynoso and Canelo Alvarez. And Canelo fights next week. If he gets past Billy Joe Saunders, he'll have all of the belts except for Caleb Plants. And then they can unify. That's what Canelo's been saying for months. And you know Caleb Plant wants it. That would be fantastic. Here we've got a fascinating fight. Abel Ramos and Omar Figueroa. Ramos in the red trunks, Figueroa in the purple, and Lennox Lewis, this is really turned around, and you can see the mouse under the left eye of Omar Figueroa now. Oh, absolutely. Ramos has figured him out. He knows what punches to throw, he knows what punches are working for him, and it's that, those looping right hands and the left hooks. Figueroa just looks like he's wilting. And Fig Figueroa is like a clock, tick-tock, tick-tock. You know what, what side he's going to be on. He's going either one side or the other. If he goes one side, you know he's coming back to the other side, so you throw a combination to that side. And Ramos is just consistent. He is waiting for the opening. And you see right there, he can throw that whip right hand to the body and then over the top, right hand as well. Figueroa's just soaking up all these shots. Ramos, body and head attack. Figueroa continues to move forward. Set. It seems like Ramos has gotten back in this fight, started winning these rounds. Figueroa turns to the side there. Let's go to Larry Hazard quickly. Larry, how do you have it so far? After, after four rounds, Brian, I got Ramos ahead, 39-27. Uh, Figueroa, you know, he's got this awkward style, but he's now he's assaulting a lot of punches. Ramos is breaking them down from the body to the head, and right now, you know, if uh, judges is going to uh, judges are going to score fights on who's landing the most punches. 
And right now, Ramos is having a field day. So I have Ramos ahead right now. Larry, thank 39, you. 37. Three rounds to one, Larry. Thank you very much. And that, that's what we're seeing here. Ramos just looks stronger and stronger against Figueroa, who just seems to be, again, just fading in front of us. He's still moving forward, still very game, but he is absorbing punishment consistently from Ramos. We're going to go back to one of the previous rounds, and Lennox, we're going to see if one of these shots did help take the starch out of Figueroa. There's the body shot. No, it doesn't look like it had no effect on that one. But these right hands by uh, Ramos ha has great effect. Good power behind them, sharp punches, straight right hands. Landing flush. Ramos comes off a fight with your Dennis Ugas as well. And we're watching him. Let me just say, you know, Omar seems like he might be protecting his body. When you get hit with one of those shots, sometimes, Lennox, you see, you'll keep your arm tucked in, right? Might be holding it into his ribs. Just doesn't want to get hit with that right hand. No, I mean, you know, that's his awkward style. That's, you know, his defense for that. Ramos again, he made a spirited run at your Dennis Ugas in his last fight. Uh, he lost a dubious split decision, meaning I didn't think the fight was that close. It was competitive, but not close. But Ramos again, he's only 29 years old. I know he's Jesus' uncle, but Lennox, he's only 29. And he seems to be getting better and better with each fight. Oh, yeah. He, oh, he looks a lot better in this fight. I just like the way, again, early on, it looked like Figueroa is faster, he's cagier. But Ramos is just there, consistent, solid, not going anywhere. And you see the hard right hands, which are breaking down Figueroa's body. Popping him in the head, just touching him, keeping him at bay, measuring him. He's got just enough space, he's in the pocket. Wild hook by Figueroa. Figueroa's showing some good power shots right there. Good winging shots. Ramos trying to smother him in the corner. Finally, Jerry Cantu breaks them up. Cantu doing a good job again. Let these guys fight out of the clinches. Exactly. You can, you can stay right there. You can punch out. Both men want to stay in close. Let them fight. Good body shot there by Ramos. Ramos able to get under the hook and fire off a right hand. I like how Ramos gives himself some space. You know, it kind of pushes uh, Figueroa back, so it gives him some pu punching space. How there many, it goes again. How many right uppercuts has he thrown? There's a good right. Ramos throws so many right uppercuts. I mean, he's not Gervonta Davis, like with the uppercut, but yeah. it's just consistent pop. It's just good and solid. Yeah, I think it's a right uppercut, right hook yeah. he's throwing, and like uh, hybrid, very right. successful. Ramos there it goes again. Sturdy. Hard See? right hand, and there's the uppercut. There's the uppercut again, and then with the right hand. He's got two good right hand shots, breaking down Figueroa as he tries to block them. Busting him up. Ramos now, it, a wide discrepancy with punches landed, 141 to 72. So two to one margin for Abel Ramos. We did not figure on that. Yeah. He's got those two separate right hands, Lennox, and it's like a machine. Bang, right there. Yep. And he needs to come back with that left hook. Right uppercut, left hook. His right hand is tight. I mean, he's just going to the body, going to the head, and winning this fight outright. Figueroa tries wing shots, wants to make things happen in the final 30 seconds. Also what Ramos can do, he can throw a double uppercut. There you go, that was a double uppercut too. One to the body and then one to the head. This is a great view right here. We feel like we're in the ring. I don't know if I'd want to be in there with Abel Ramos. Another hard right hand. Abel yeah. Ramos is going after the body where he can see, and that's what he's supposed to do. If you're not hitting him in the head and he's blocking it, hit him to the body. Ramos is so determined. Oh, oh I think the body shot is hurt. Yeah. He's wilting. He's in the corner. Abel Ramos would not stop throwing the right hands, and Figueroa is getting broken up. This might be it. 
Oh, it's been a flood. You can't anymore? Is that it? Rip. It's over. It's over. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. Joel Diaz making the call, and this fight is over. Abel Ramos, too consistent, too strong, outgunned Omar Figueroa. And you're right, he may have some rib bar problems, some body shots, because when Ramos was hitting him to the body, he was protecting that body. So there's got to be a rib problem or a body problem going on, internal problem. Abel Ramos made all that happen. Look, he's been in with the very best. He has not shied away from fighting anyone. Jamal James, Regis Progray, Maurice Hooker. Your Dennis Ugas, he gets in there. But this is a signature win for Abel Ramos. This was a fight Lennox we thought was even up. You see Jesus, is his nephew. We thought this was an even fight. Yeah. Abel Ramos made it not an even fight. No, he figured him. He started to figure him out in the second round. And you could tell because he was placing his shots to the body. And he was placing his uppercuts and right hooks. And they were successful and landing. I just love the way it unfolded. Because if you watch the first round, you might say, hey, Omar Figueroa is the better boxer. He's faster. He's flashier. He's confident. But that man doesn't go anywhere. No, Abel Ramos did a great job tonight. Boxed very well, learned from his mistakes, and he looked like a, a great boxer tonight. And Omar Figueroa will have to go back to the drawing board because he came in with a very specific style, a unique style, Lennox, and it did not work here tonight. There, there's that uppercut. This is now Figueroa against the ropes when he looks so hurt. He looks hurt, especially to the body. He's feeling it. That's where he's feeling it, right there. Again, look, Ramos and, is a machine. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that shot was just coming out, no wasted movement whatsoever. And you see in the corner, Lennox, you saw him spitting up blood, Figueroa. Joel Diaz was there and was looking at Figueroa. Figueroa, it did not look good from the moment he went to his own corner. No. You could see the grimace on his face. He was looking like he wanted to get somewhere fast, and he did. He wanted to get somewhere fast to throw up. There, there is Jesus, again, his nephew. Again, they're in camp together. They love sharing time together, being on diets together. They can encourage each other, and what a terrific night for the Ramos family. Jesus Ramos gets a win over Javier Molina, and Abel Ramos really beating down Omar Figueroa, who had just one professional loss coming into this fight. So bigger and better things now await Abel Ramos. Just when you think it's all about the kid, Uncle Abel is back in business. Absolutely. I think we're ready for the official call. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped at the end of round number six. Our referee in charge, Jerry Cantu, stops the contest upon suggestion of the corner. He is the winner by way of knockout, the winner of the WBA welterweight world title eliminator, Abel, Abelito. That was a workmanlike performance. I know our crew upstairs, they were talking about marvelous Marvin Hagler, who was a hero to the working man. Abel Ramos there showed what hard work and consistency can do. Hey, boxing fans. It's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for El Bandera Roja to reign or for Sweet Hands to snag the W, you can bank on action with DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers can bet $5 to win $150 in bonus bets if your fighter wins on a pre-match Moneyline bet. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet $5 to win $150 in bonus bets if your fighter wins. Action's so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? Cody Crowley. 20-0 with nine knockouts. I thought Crowley opened it up really well. He didn't wait for Jose Cinto Lopez to bring the fight to him. And now Jose Cinto Lopez rocked. He got wobbled. I don't know if he was rocked or he was off balance or a combination of the two. But now he's being driven. Crowley's coming into this fight with such high confidence. And why is that? He's coming in off of the biggest win of his career over Kudratilo Abdukukrov, in which he dominated. Let's be honest in that. Crowley. Going to the body again, and Lopez, there you see, is really trying to unleash, go to the body, and probably is not allowing Lopez to explode like he wants to. Lopez starting off strong here in the third, and Crowley willing to oblige him. Big right hook upstairs for Crowley. Crowley with the right hook, and he drives Lopez back with a straight left. Beautiful right hook there by Crowley. 
And now comes Lopez, though. Look at Lopez go. And Lopez just teeing off, and Collins just smiling, saying, okay, I'll take it a little bit. Lopez did exactly what you said, by down his mouthpiece, and he's unloading. He's got power in his hands, and he certainly has that strength that it, but sometimes your body can't respond. Oh, down goes Lopez. Right there. Right there. And that's a knockdown, I believe. That is a knockdown. That's significant. To see if he can pull a rabbit out of his hat, but right smiling, dancing around the ring, and he is in a huge rhythm, and Lopez right there. Yeah, it almost, it almost seems Lopez is fighting in slow motion right now. He's getting tacked every which way from Cody Crowley. And there, uh, Jose Lopez, that's about the fourth or fifth time his legs have buckled over the pa past few rounds. And still undefeated, Cody the Crippler Crowley. So Cody Crowley victorious. You do not want to miss my fight against Caleb Plant. Tune into my fight against David Benavidez on March 25th. Buy it now on Showtime pay -per -view. And let's take a look at our tail of the tape for this. It is our an all-Mexican lightweight showdown between Jose Valenzuela and Francisco Vargas. I think that sort of ushers his image as to say, hey, guess what? This kid is a budding contender. Right now, he's trying to graduate from being a prospect to a contender. Absolutely. Then, And we've seen prospects in the past not graduate. They've failed on those tests because they just have not developed that type of experience. Oh, big oh shot! Goodness! Down goes Vargas! This one is over! Oh my goodness! Welcome to the big time, Jose Valenzuela! Holy moly! Safe to say, he graduated, right? Oh, he's arrived! He's arrived in grand fashion! Oh my goodness! The best knockout of Valenzuela's career by far. Incredible. Jose El Rayo Valenzuela! Today's the day. Order my fight against Caleb Plan on Showtime Paper from now. Both men. With the first name David, both men, heavy hitters, both men have vowed that they will take out the other inside the distance. And you hear those thuds here at ringside. It is without a doubt. A left hook, down goes, he's almost down, Lemieux in trouble. Benavides is going to close the show. Can he finish off Lemieux? Lemieux in trouble, Harvey Dunn watching the action. And it's over! It's over! It is over! No, it is not! The, the round continues! Benavides looking to finish off the show early. Big shots by Benavides. On left, Lemieux's got punchy power though. A right, shaking up Lemieux. Back comes Lemieux. A right, and down goes Lemieux. And he's in big trouble. is a gutsy fighter. There's a left uppercut. Driving back Lemieux. And Lemieux's hurt again. And look at this hand speed by David Benavides. This is craftsmanship. He's bloody the right hook. But back comes Lemieux. Big right hand. Crushing shot. It buckled Lemieux. And now the corner's coming up. And this one is over. As David Benavides has become a three-time super middleweight champion of the world. As he stops by way of technical knockout, he is still undefeated. Boxing's pride of Phoenix, El Bandera Roja, David Benavides. Today's the day. Order my fight against David Benavides on Showtime Pay Per View right now. that the beef between two fighters is manufactured. That is not the case in this fight, everybody. Caleb Plant and Anthony Durrell know how to push each other's buttons. And they're gonna get closer and closer, and they're gonna start touching each other more and more like that. And like that. Right hand from Durrell. Another right hand lands on Plant. 
Plant's doing the right thing, though. He's mixing up the jab, uh, sometimes to the head, sometimes to the body. Did it both times there, Lax, too. Ate a right hand from Durrell. 20% of camp. Durrell was just about oh, yeah, you can. There's a lot of bad blood between these guys at the press conferences of the play in. Nice Three jab. Two. Combination. Look at Plant. First is. Ooh. Hook on the inside, and then down goes Plant. And Durrell. What Durrell does is he just draws back a little bit and gives himself some room. You're going to get away with a certain amount of that. Good hook. That hook yeah, that hook landed from Plant. Durrell. That, 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 that is flat Ooh. out illegal. Right hand from Durrell. And another one now Plant on the move. The plant really put on some good moves to get away from the rest of the punches. Yeah, he got hit with the first initial. I thought you were going to say he, they went to the mattresses. Like, wait a minute, much of surprise. That's short for the mattresses. Okay? <laughs> That's what I said. I said, we're not in New Jersey. <laughs> what, what, what a look at Lennox. <laughs> Jabs landed 42 to 12 oh in favor of Plant, and Durrell goes down again. And he, Whoa, that's a nice play. Uh, uh, right hand jab, Ooh. and here comes Durrell. Yeah, Three. Oh! oh! One shot! Down shot. goes Durrell! Oh my god! That's it's bad. over! Harvey Doc waves it off. Durrell on his back. Oh Caleb Plant with a one shot knockout from the left hook. That was a. Atrocious knockout. No, no, don't do that. I saw correctly. Plant threw a left hook to the body and then really came upstairs with a hard short left hook. He is the winner by way of knockout, Caleb Plant. Well, that is as emphatic a win as Caleb Plant has had in his career. Hey, boxing fans. It's about to go down, and DraftKings Sportsbook is bringing the heat. Whether you're rooting for El Bandera Roja to reign or for Sweet Hands to snag the W, you can bank on action with DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers can bet $5 to win $150 in bonus bets if your fighter wins on a pre-match Moneyline bet. Just download the app, enter the promo code, and bet $5 to win $150 in bonus bets if your fighter wins. Action's so good, why bet on boxing anywhere else? hostility between these two guys is real. Tonight. My objective is putting a beating on Caleb Plant. Knockout artist and two-time title holder David Benavidez <laughs> takes on the smooth technician and former champ Caleb Plant. I need to teach him a life lesson. And no one's backing down. I'm gonna beat the living out of you. You're not gonna do nothing. David Benavidez versus Caleb Plant. Tonight, live on pay-per-view.